All right, let's see. This is going to work. Stream. I like that. Bit Check one, two. Check one, two. Just checking the monitor level. All right, that one works well. Let's check the other monitor. That one works too. I'm gonna get this going and playing some PUBG for a bit and then drawing art. What's up, so my A? I'm gonna get the stream started. Be playing PUBG for a bit.
What is hook rate? Let's figure out what hook rate is. Let me capture frame rate, allow transparency, so a so like crossfire capture mode. SRGB. Uh, let's figure out what the hook rate is. What is hook rate on OBS? And just how often OBS will try and initiate capture for a game to be displayed on stream. Hook rate is calculated three second windows divided by impressions, basically metric. But it helps to see. Let's just see quickly which ads are grabbing. That's something else. <laughs> Faster hook rate means less delay but higher system load. Discovered an option, a new version of OBS. Capture an option that calls hook rate, which means slow, normal, fast, fast. This was the difference between slow, normal. It has nothing to do with image quality. It deals with how often OBS will try to initiate the capture if it has an, an active capture on a game yet. It's always a small delay between game start and OBS actually displaying the game in its preview. Faster hook rate means less delay but higher system load. Uh, yeah, I think fast is not fine. Capture a game that never reinitialized graphics for map changes, for example, use a slow hook rate. You miss a sec. Uh, okay. I'll do that. Let's just try fastest. I always make my video smaller. Teeny tiny video. Dude, that might help things like uh no actually I'm just talking amongst myself but faster hook rate can also mean less of a flash when alt tabbing the full screen game even better it can even mean the faster the hook rate the better it don't show the game overlays will work All right. Cool. Try fast to see if that is some sort of issue. They need to, we need to like a X app. Stream ability. I can't see anyone in the chat. I'll keep one device up so I can see, like, a device in chat. And get my camera up. Yeah, I think this will... Cool. Maybe even 
angle my camera down a little. Or up. Like, right to there. I'm just gonna go play. I'm gonna play a solo round first. Did not let me equip. I want to make sure Twitch is still No Oh, man. All right, output. Let's see. Zero. Fly. Okay. Hopefully that will work this time. Sucks. Here we do. My live stream.
Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut my stream and redo my stream.
Wait, so.
I know, I know, number three, number four. Hello? Yeah. Hello, hello! Please say number four. What's up? What'd you say, number What did I say? I said, what's up? I said, how are you? I'm fine. Cool, man. Good to hear. Where are we going? <laughs> wow, oh my gosh, there's too many people in here. Yeah, there's a lot of people there. Let's boxing. Boxing. Nigga, fight with me. Boxing. I'm pulling down. I'm falling down. Three, you are right. Three's got some firepower. Thank you, my bro. Number two, number two. Oh, me, number one, one, one. Ah, fail. So we're dead. Oh my jeez. Where are you from, number four? Oh no, I'm dead. This is one dude. Where are you from, number four? Uh, the U.S. U.S. To me, go long. Oh yeah. Oh, I from China. That's cool. Yeah, China. Hey, number four. What's up? What's up, Vanilla Bill of Biscuit? He is coming, number one. The number one is coming. You wouldn't have your mood, then. What's up, Vanilla Biscuit? Is it? <laughs> Not much, just playing some PUBG. Why are you playing PUBG? Sweet. I just woke up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I passed out like seven. Oh, I'll see you now. What's up? So, what are you guys chatting about? Uh, thanks for the res, man. So the res? Hey, 
Oh my god, I just got knocked again. The ground, the ground. Some medicine. Uh I always oh, land in the worst spots in PUBG. Uh, I'm dead. I just died. Yeah, 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 GG's. What's up, Vanilla? Are you guys drawing? Am I drawing? Yeah, it's like uh, drawing NFT art. I see it. Not yet. Towards the end of my stream, I'll be drawing and just chatting on Twitch and here on X. Okay, like when did you start this phase? Um, let me see. It's been about 38 million minutes. Yeah, 40 minutes. You might like the first guy. Yeah, some people jump, jumped in and just sat there, there and cut my mic off. I said what's up to that to them. But otherwise I just kept my mic, mic off. Let me see if I can get some people in here. I'm gonna do a post, share it. I gotta see if I can. Monitor only. No, it's not gonna do anything. Monitor and output. Check. Okay. Yeah, how's your day going, man? Man, like, I've been drawing. <laughs> oh, you're drawing. Like, you're drawing too. Uh, I just shared the room. Nice, thanks, man. What do you? Uh, I've been. Oh, what am I drawing? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, um, Jack. I'm like, I was in NFTs right a while back, like during the the fucking bull run insanity that happened, right? And I tried to like launch a project, and it fucking went in the dog water because some technical contract BS. It was like a really big collection, like two hundred thousand. But it was also very generic, right? What was and it? I wasn't what do you mean by a with it. big connection? I should. What does that mean? Like two hundred thousand pieces. Oh wow! What? Yeah, it was a one man thing, and like, you know, it was too much for me to handle at the time. So I've like scaled down, try to restart. I want to try to relaunch it on Chia with a twenty k collection, and I'm making a game, right? You shoot slugs, <laughs> so I'm drawing slugs. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, these these slugs, right? They all have different abilities, and like they 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 work differently. It's like each slug is a different ammunition type, and they they adapt to different types based on what they eat. So uh, there's a whole lot of law behind it, but I'm pretty much doing that. <laughs> what's what's up? I heard you're making a game, right? Yeah, yeah, UE5 game. So, uh, Unreal Engine 5 game. That'll hello, hello, hello. That will NFTs into the gameplay. Like, benefits, like having okay, a season okay. pass. Okay, okay. Wear me, wear me. premium season pass. Like an unlimited one. And then also... Wear me, wear me, wear me. ...to generate in-game currency with it. So... Like, you know, no, you know you premium know. currency. Yeah. Can you hear? Let me, let me ask you. Right Can you hear these people talking on the Twitch stream? Ah, what? <laughs> okay. I was wondering but, if you could yeah. hear people talking. I can hear a bit of the echo. I don't know that much. I can't understand what they're saying. Oh, no, no. I can hear a bit, but not that much. It's mainly just echo. Trying to see how I can run like a Twitter space while streaming yeah. on X, while streaming on King on Twitch, while em in a emulate uh emulate a phone right, and What's then that? uh emulate a phone with Twitter on your PC with Bluestack yeah. or a program like that, and then like play the audio through the mic interface from the Twitch feed. So then you'll have them talking from one side and you can have two groups communicating. It seems to be working out. I've got my phone device here. And I've got like the earbud in. Yeah. And then I've got a co-host on the PC here. 
about this. Oh, yeah. Project I'm working on, right? The yeah. um, the idea is to make like a UE5 game that's like an MMO style game, so like massive multiplayer online. Uh, the idea is to have like a oh shit, sorry. No, no, you're good. But but the idea is to have like different game modes and all sorts of shit that people can compete with. But the idea is that every game has in-game currency, like premium currency. Uh, the NFT basically allows the player to have like a full pass, a custom ammunition, and also the ability to, with some traits, to generate even premium in-game currency. So there's a lot of cool things that are going down. I don't know if I'll turn the premium currency into a coin yet. I'd have to see how the the popularity of the game is because I don't want to like just post a shit coin. You know what I mean? No doubt. I'm not about that. I'd rather give people benefits they can redeem in game and then allow them to uh, mint NFTs with it. You know what I mean? Like maybe I'll make a premium feature where you can uh, use the premium currency to mint uh, an NFT that would be compatible with the game. Like custom NFTs that people can create or add a creator system or something to the game. There's a lot of windows of opportunity there. If you ever need a beta tester, I'm down. Oh man, the beta testers are the, the owners. <laughs> like legit, you only got to do is mint an NFT when it's out. And you're technically a beta tester already. First rights too. Means you get all the snapshots, all the most broken pieces, all the jank fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get to try <laughs> if you own it. You said you're minting via Chia? Yeah, via yeah, Chia, man. Chia blockchain. I'll have to check that out. I'm more of like an yeah, Ethan Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Sort of BNB maxi, but I haven't looked into Chia yet. You see, Chia is nice, right? Like right now, you have like the opportunity to be a maxi in Chia, right? Like think about it. The whole space, right, is a captive market, which means there's very few gateways to exit liquidity. So right now, you could like join the Chia network, and they pretty much function like Bitcoin with all the benefits of like Ethereum. Each coin is individual, each coin is unique. It's got the flexibility of like Ethereum with none of the, the drawbacks. Like each coin has its own contract, so it's an individual coin. It's not like a, a receipt or linked or tied to any contract that will basically be able to manipulate a group of coins at a time. Obviously, there's probably workarounds as there always is, but like the thing is, it's less likely to be tampered with, if that makes sense. It's just like it's 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 actually just a better market in general because royalties are also respected on it. Like you can ingrain royalties into the tokens, like when you hand them out, which is pretty cool too. Yeah, I'll research so into yeah, I'll research into into it. Is it a proof of stake, or how's their model work? That I'm not sure. Of. Okay, I'm not sure about that, but I do know that they mine. Oh, you can mine it. Yeah, you can mine it. They're mining it right now. So, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah. Maybe my have to do it. GPA could can mine it or something. Yeah, I think it could. Like, just uh, go into the get the Chia wallet, right? And then I think it's like also a browse, a browse. Well, not only a uh, what is it called? It's also a miner. So it's not only a wallet. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty dope, dude. That's the, that's the issue with certain blockchains it takes so much tech to know how to mine it uh, but like most people can't do if people can have like a wallet and like easily like utilize their wallet or have it active active or utilize some of or allocate some of their computer resource to the network via the wallet like because their own um team or people dev that out that would be cool it would make more adoption uh, of the general public earning crypto while you use using it. Yeah, no, I agree. The, the GUI, the top layer, right? So like the, the general user interface is a lot better than what I've seen with other applications because a lot of the time you'll you'll see that you'll be jumping off a third party UI, you know, like it's, it's very like, hey, here's my API, do something with it. And everyone's like, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> 
It's like everyone's just sitting there like vegetables, not really knowing what to do until someone smart enough figures it out, and then by then it's already been capitalized on by all the techies. No doubt. So it's kind of like there's there's no room for like the newcomers. This is lucky because they really do make a UI. They've got a few marketplaces as well, so it's worth looking at. You know, I think people are like really sleeping on it, and I think when the the ball run comes, it's definitely going to get a lot more attention, especially with the gateway opening up. So we're going to see crazy liquidity. I like, bet. Think about this, right? Uh, I'm not like trying to like show this. Like I'm just talking That's about right. the choice why I'm doing that. But like when you take a look at like Chia, right? What's what's also interesting about it? There's very few competitors on the chain. I think there's only like really one dominant brand on Chia right now. It's Chia Friends or something like that. But like, there's only like I think sixty something projects on there. When I checked, fifty, sixty. So it's really early on there, and I would definitely like to capitalize on it. That makes sense. Yeah. Even if you're just like mining it, I was looking into bit tensor. Hey, can I um can I can I ask you if you can help me if you can hear me on this other account real quick? I'm getting so much feedback. I want to try and switch much my mic. Yeah, no, I can hear you. Just um, talk when you're ready. Yeah, I'm just gonna just, let me check something, something out here. Yeah, but Kek, tell me about your project, bro. Can you hear me now? Sure can. All right, that's so much better. Hey, Kek, tell me about your project, bro. Yeah. Um, one second here. Monitor. Oh, there we go. Wait, did that open any? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry for any like noises in the background. South Africa is like not the most civilized country. <laughs> sorry, what was that? I said sorry for any noises like screaming or something here in the background. South Africa is not the most civilized country. Oh man, be safe then. <laughs> no, no, I'm fine. I'm just mean like there's a lot of ruckus always going on here. Yeah? Uh, Fiat, is just ignore it. We're pretty much desensitized at this point. You live near Hashlips? Yeah, no, no, I know. I come from his. Uh, I come from his uh, community. Yeah. Yes, he, he actually onboarded me, bro. He lives in South Africa. Yeah, no, no, he is. He's, he's South African. He just got engaged or married, I think. I think he got married. Yeah, he got married to this chick recently. Oh, he did just get married. That's cool. Oops. No, no, it is. Hey, man, you want to play some PUBG? Uh, like, oh, not right now. <laughs> okay. I do. I don't mind. I'm just like in the mood to chat, you know? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just playing PUBG while we chat. You know, like, I reckon, um, when I've gotten all my art done, like, and I maybe upgrade my rig, I'll hit you up for PUBG. I think that'd be sweet because we are going to be a gaming thing, you know? Yeah, most definitely. And I think I'm thinking, though, like, right. Ideally, what well, what is the average that people go for, like, when releasing an NFT these days in terms of price range? Uh, <laughs> that's subjective, but um, for me, I guess. I'm launching something that's just going to be all free. Yeah, but you're putting creator royalties on it or something. Yeah, yeah, I'll put creator royalties on it. Um, I launched Blue Chip Club already. That was free mint, and it had a lot of... Um, Sean. Saying good morning to my son. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can hear you hundreds. <laughs> All right, cool. Let me check this. Dude, you know, what, you know what I want to do. What's that? I want to try. I want to try to get as many founders on boarded as possible. It's like, we need like a founder kind of club. 
just just founders. That'd be dope. You know, like just a network, just something that can pretty much just send an FU to like a big chunk of the community if it starts pulling some dodgy shit. You know, you know what I mean? Keep the space in check with some stupid stuff. Because like this deflation, like all this this shit where like we be self get hit with like all these random rugs and like all these fucked up scams and these projects. We need a way to alert each other to like make noise and like actually do efficient business and feel make the communities feel safer that we actually have. You know what I mean? Like, I'd really like to make something for founders where they can collaborate, where they can make their moves. You know what I mean? Not like something that's centralized. I just mean like something where you can like say, hey, I've got like this idea. I want to host a space. Maybe I've got problems with my phone. One guy will say, yeah, we can host it all together. You get me? Where you can just bring communities. Yeah, I, um... I could see that. I haven't really. I think there's been like some chats that uh. There's been some people brought me into, but it's like on Twitter, and then no one really. Where was I breaking? Was I breaking apart in some one point? Uh, no, I just, uh, I hit a bit of a silent spot, but I don't know if you're keeping quiet or you're just trying to get something. Yeah, I'm a... I was trying to answer my son. He's talking with me too. Um, yeah, I was brought into, I was listening to what you were saying too, though, but I was brought into chats, like founder chats, but it's like, once you get brought in there, like no one talks in there. <laughs> It's like a, it's like the first couple of days people talk and then they hear and people just post their stuff and leave. <laughs> yeah, well, um, the thing is, it's it's not for that. There's not going to be a posting allowed. I don't think if I have to do something like that, like people are be able to like message each other and that's it. Like as far as posting goes, that's not a shilling site. Like you want to show you collab. It's a collab sent. That's what I want. What's up, Grim Goyles? Hey. Right, Jeff, great ground. Hey. Wait, Grim goes up here. Grim goes is a project that's also building a game. Oh, sweet man! So we all building, building games, yeah. Building a bunch of stuff like that. Stuff like that. What's up? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Grim go. What's Time up? to get up here. Yeah, up. Oh, gee, yeah. Uh, somebody sent me a request, hey. and I came up to say hi to you guys. Yeah, uh, share the space, eh? Huh? <laughs> Don't forget to share the space. Let me do that for you. Let me do that. There you go. Boom. Done. Sweet, man. Like, you're a lifesaver. Cheers. Bro, bro, I'm just, I'm just a fuck. <laughs> I'm just here to help you guys. Oh my. You just saved X curry, yeah. my guy. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do common courtesy. Retweet the room. I got it. I got it. No problem. <laughs> I'm just chilling. Yeah, um, I like Hashless Space because like he kind of does that sort of aspect of um, people can share and stuff what they're working on. But it's interesting what you're talking about too. Graham goes it's great, but I, it's like a vanity pocket. Hey, eh? like have you seen his um, his his uh, server? Right, he used to be really active when we started. Uh, I was there since the beginning, bro. <laughs> like oh, sketch journey, like with um, the uh, the sketchy board apes. I mean, sketchy board, sketchy, uh, sketchy board club. Yeah, that's what I'm rocking now. I don't know why I said board is fucking my head. Room just because yeah, like, yeah, board apes is everywhere. Yeah, well, that's inspired by the board apes, I think. But the thing is, they were writing a book, and it was so much hype till everyone had to put an F. But then everyone's like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> and it just went super dead, bro. Like after a while, and we have a few active members, and we have a community that's active, and we've got so many lurkers, bro. What's yeah, up, annoyed just, pandas? Just like, like, Stan, what's up, annoyed, annoyed pandas? Invite them up here too. Yeah, but like, we wanted that that to be so much more. We wanted to be changing. You know, there were so many fucking passionate members, but then so many flags. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we got a community, but like, it's pocketed. That's why we call it like the pocket community, because it's like 
we got like our pocket fam, we got like active faces, you've probably seen LTO, you've seen a lot of people. And yeah. uh, serendipitous, you know, like <laughs> there's well, a lot of us who are rap kid. A lot of communities have those pocket pocket members, right? A lot of these projects have these pockets, but these loyal five, ten people that are with you all the time, and then there's like everybody scattered around. So I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's a fucking do for do or die philosophy we need to bring back to the space. It's like everyone's yeah. here to get yeah. rich quick. Yeah, it is. I, I I totally agree with you. Like I I barely come in spaces anymore because of that shit. It's because everybody is uh, looking for the next eye candy, right? Yeah, it's a fucking vanity fair, but at the same time, we need it to sell, which is the fuck up. Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you got deadlines, and, like, you got to compromise. Like, do I sell to a bunch of locals, or do I, like, wait for, like, five years till I've got, like, this extremely densely knit, crazy fanatical community? And it's like, where do you buy the compromise? You got to eat, you know, sleep, and you got to drink. You know, you know what I mean? You can't just, like, die <laughs> for the sake of a cause. I think I literally, like, went insane. I think I just like kept smashing my face against the wall in uh, Web3 to the point where like I went insane like just listening to spaces or just listening to the amount of like scams going on in spaces and then like just people like like on spaces like grabbing like $20 million and like people just like throwing all their money at like just because someone has a board ape on their PFP or something and I don't know I think it literally actually, actually like drove me nuts. Um, and like being faded to the max, um, I think I just kind of. I think it's. I think it was actually a good thing, to um. To go nuts, um, not like like clinically insane. I mean nuts, but like you know what I mean. Like just like, just maybe like some depression and like down and outs, and we're we're building, and no one gives an f. And you know what? No one should care really. No one really should care. Oh, um, no, they should. Like, I mean, they should. That, that's the thing. They, they really should because the thing is, people don't care, and that's the fuck up. Hey, I see we got Kishi, uh, Kishi, uh, let's see, Kishi's dot solo. We got a uh, annoying pandas. Do you guys want to come up? Huh. Do you guys want to like come up here and join the, the combo? I think more what I mean, like, people shouldn't care, maybe is yeah, maybe I word that wrongly, but maybe more like, um, I guess we're all stuck in our own mode, and oh, bro, it's it's all like, uh, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> eight people in here, it's <laughs> it's seven. Oh, bots. The bots came in. Are all, uh, bots, bro. Just because yeah. I always, when I do retweet rooms, that's what happens. You follow me through these fucking rooms. Yeah, all the bots came in. Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah, but they don't retweet shit. That's what pisses me off. <laughs> Guys, retweet, come up to the stage. Just, like, join the convo. Put up, like, request. Come up. I know it Pandas is not a, is not a bot, though. I know it Pandas is a, is a sister project of ours. I, I I basically brought it in with my laptop to bring people in. Oh nice! Oh. Yeah, I invited them. I invited them up. They want a vibe. I'm just uh running through the blue zone in PUBG. Yeah, like what I meant with like spaces and why people should care, right? Like think about this: why the fuck are you spending money on some shit you don't care about? Right. That's what I think. That's what I meant. Like I went nuts to the point where like, why are people spending their money on shit they don't care about? Other than they're just trying to make. A cash grab of money. Yeah, like, like, think about this. You represent your brand, right? If you don't give up, how the fuck are you going to lift that thing up? What, are you going to buy a car then not polish it? Not change its tires? Not maintain it? Like, dude, you're literally the face of a brand once you're in an NFT. It's like, why are you investing in sh something that is shit, hoping that it becomes something? Oh, then it's worth representing when someone else has done the work. Like, wow, real fucking mature, real fucking lazy. And, you know, a lot of people will say to me, like, hey, that's actually a very wrong take because, you know, it's not their job. No, you know, you can say one dumb shit fucking thing and then you've ruined the brand. Other people can come in and destroy tons of work. You represent your brand as much as other people who make it. So, like, if you buy into a project, communicate, be part of the community, involve yourself, give it worth, give it value, make it a place people want to be, join in in, like, other things, you know, like, I, I hate when people say, like, oh, not my brand, not my shit. Like that doesn't work. A lot of I don't know. Say that, bro. A lot of people, even people within projects, say that. You got co-founders saying that. Oh, I'm a co-founder. So I'm not a founder. Mm -hmm. Not my project. Not my not my worry. Mm -hmm. People within projects say that shit. I have people saying that within projects saying that shit, bro. You know. That's fucking retarded, right? It's, 
I don't give a shit if it's recorded, honestly. <laughs> right. No, that's, this is good space like that. That's why I'm just kind of hosting this space to just talk about whatever we want to talk about. But that's what really what it is, bro. These it's days. A project, everything falls on you. Like you're the, everything falls on you. You have a team. They fuck up. It's not their fuck up. It's your fuck up, right? Right. Now is it? Now is it? Is it? Are responsible to take it? Yeah, as a founder, we should be taking it as it's our fuck up. But then it's our mistake. Why we still have this fucker around in our project, being a team member, right? Get the fuck out if you think everything is, you know. So. Yeah, but it's more than that. Like, think about this, right? You they don't have to be through official channels. They just got to prove they they're one of you, you know. Then they fucked up your brand. <laughs> like the the thing is like. You represent the face of your community when you wear a badge, you know, you got to like, look at that. It's like a biker club, right? You can't just wear someone's colors and like expect not to act like them and be like them. Like you got to respect the brand. You got to like participate, you know, like that's why I don't own that many NFTs. Like, yeah, one, I'm broke. Like um, a lot of people say, oh, no, I'm not broke or I've got money. I've got this dude. I'm struggling. I'm pushing. I'm trying to build. That's not easy. You know, like ground up. That's not easy. People don't realize hardship, they don't realize that, and you know, they want to make these quick gains, but can I tell you something, Bored Apes didn't just explode. These other things didn't just explode, they sat there, they grinded, they, they met, they communicated, they, they found sponsors, it was slow, it was grueling. It took them, I think, three years before they hit, like, peak popularity. How many projects yet die before two, three months after launch? And people want to talk about three years, and oh, we're going to be the next Bored Ape, or we're going to be this, it's like, yeah. they're bored. There. Yeah, I feel you. I, Graham goes, we've been around for almost two and a half years now. And it's like we're, we're on our second collection and we're still like struggling to actually make sales. You know? This market's weird, bro. It's so weird. It's so fucking weird now. You're not diversifying your advertising enough. You need to get into a more visual space. Humans are visual creatures, my guy. Like, you can fit in many spaces. Think so? Oh, it is. You need to get marketing out on YouTube. You need to like post out your plans, what you're gonna be doing, hosting events, getting people involved, telling them what your plans are, saying like what you want to do, why it's ambitious. You need to start getting more investors in. That's just how it is. You need to get sponsors, my guy. You can work and collaborate with people. You gotta do marketing. Every brand got successful from marketing. From Rolex to fucking Casio, like depending on your model, doesn't matter. You need marketing. I mean, I can tell you now, dude, before today, I didn't know who you were, I didn't see you. Maybe I have, but I've forgotten it. That's clearly a bad sign. You know what I mean? You've got to make yourself, like, known. But, like, I've, I've paid marketing to Twitter marketers before. I'm not talking and... about Twitter marketers. I'm talking about, like, marketing through Twitter itself. With uh, ads. Oh, just, oh. Uh, content or videos. Yeah, pushing ads. I used to, I bought, I explored, I don't know how ads are these days, but I did push some ads. Um, back when Jack Dorsey had Twitter and, um, those were, those ads like really were terrible. I know like you can pay like per a person like, um, like BitBoy, like the guy who's got the controversial, like Ben token crap or whatever from, uh, Ben ETH who was bought from Ben ETH. And, uh, you can pay him like 20 grand and he'll just like stuff your, put your stuff on, um, his YouTube channel. Um, I know there's like because you said like youtube i know there's like people like that you can like market through but i'm oh shit i just died what i mean by marketing, it's the quality of what you're selling the advert what the dream you're selling if, if you have a shitty ad it doesn't matter if you pay 30 grand to put that shitty ad on something it's still a shitty ad you know like coca-cola has like these crazy fun ads i don't know if you who remembers the polar bear coca-cola ad yeah, I do. Of course. Yeah. A lot of people do. Yeah, that's a 2001 like, advert. <laughs> you remember it in what? Uh, 2023, 20, 24? That, you get me. <laughs> so, like, maybe 2006, I don't know. Like, it's a very, very old advert. Now, the thing is, when you market, right, you need to have something that captivates an audience. You need to, like, be relatable, involved. You need to reach an audience, build a following on other platforms, communicate, have ways to involve them. Like, if you can't involve more people, like, remember, when I, when I talk about this pocket club ideology, right, you're trying to be exclusive. But by doing that, like, you're not a brand label yet. You're not 
like even business models they still have ways to onboard new people it's like one model might be releasing only so many a year but you keep releasing every year so it just constantly grows right you're increasing your membership you're increasing ways for people to join if you can't onboard more members you stagnate it's it's just simple as that no business model can function without like being able to bring in capital it's just honestly the truth you need a way to build a currency you need a way to build members to build something around something and if you only have a limited amount of members well guess what you just cut off you just cut off the rope you know ship sailing and you're not on it <laughs> it is what it is so how do you so how do you um let me ask you how, how have you been like testing marketing or have you just been like buying twitter ads kind of thing or how's that been turning out also you have been. Okay, see, this is my plan. I'm gonna start um, once I launch my project. I'm gonna start making content on YouTube, tracking the development, and then making TikToks, right? Because TikTok's pretty hard. Yeah. And then once I've gotten a bit of capital pulled up, I might start doing YouTube ads and maybe Twitter ads. Maybe Twitter is good, but it's not that great, and it's very mixed audience. So I'd probably hit on TikTok because people follow who they want to follow there, and they generally have like their niches. So TikTok ads probably. YouTube ads, mostly visual ads. Uh, I might put a few here, but the thing is, t- Twitter's like being blown to hell and back. So people are pretty resentful of NFTs on you. You know what I mean? So I would probably try TikTok because I'd probably have access to more markets, YouTube, and then pushing out my own content, probably making trailers because a lot of like hype around something is what generates a lot of interest. Making things that like involve the person or like, uh, I guess say enrich them in your law, your quote unquote story, your projects, That's something that allows them to attach to the humanity of your project uh, takes away that idea of like, oh, buy a seller. It's like, it's more human. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think for me, I've taken that similar approach to like the ads really on Twitter, at least from what I tested them, kind of like what you were saying, don't really work, but um. Yeah, YouTube's an interesting outlet. What do you, have you heard of the that BitBoy guy, or what do you think of like things like that, like paying someone like BitBoy like twenty grand to like make a video about your project? That's like, is that do you think that's like cash grab, or do you think that's like legitimate stuff? My guy, um, I don't know how to put this. Think about this, right? If if you're making the video and he's just cutting it in, right? Unless he's producing that video for you, why the fuck are you paying I think, twenty grand? <laughs> right i think i think he i think you can give him like media content and he'll like review it i think he mainly he does like crypto tokens or something but then also like a lot of crypto tokens he promotes people pay him for they just like rug or they fail or they disappear or something like that yeah tell me something everything that he's posted like you just said they rug or they fail right i don't know about all of them but i think like i've heard like you know he's promoted projects and then deleted the video when it like went to trash and people call him a scammer because of it Think about that. Like, you okay? I'm not trying to like hate on him, right? He might have very good intent, but like, here's the thing: if he's doing that and he's posting these videos and he's now associated with that, the minute you go up, you've already tarnished your reputation. Because, like, it's if he owns one of your NFTs, great. He sees it as that, and he's got a following, and they can join in, and that's great. But if you, for instance, go and go through him, that says more about you than it does about him. And the problem is, he's got an association of dealing with ruggers and failures. So now the problem is that's going to lean back on you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. So, so that's not a good thing to do, my guy. Like, I wouldn't do that. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I think the best thing to do is make marketing material, get content creators out there, you know, like get people to make you good content and then post that up and then have your community posted on their channels like have them make youtube channels the ones that are like part of your marketing team have them post it up spam it that way share the links religiously on twitter like every day for like a week wait a bit like recycle old ads you know what i mean but make good ads because the more people see it the better and then once you got good content and good ads and people are like getting giving you good feedback on it that's when you start marketing those ads because once you have good feedback, you know it's good. Kremko, is you're building? I thought you're. I know you're building like a show series and like media series. But are you doing a game? Yeah, we're doing a game at the end of the. Uh, we're going halfway through our mental. We have a game. Yep, we have a. Yeah, it's like a somewhat of like a Pokemon kind of game that we're doing. How's how's that going in production, or is it 
Sucks balls, bro. <laughs> it's it's what? It sucks. It's dead. I'm dead honest. Um, I'm a very I'm a very dead honest person in this place. So bear with my language, guys. That's fine. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's better. It's better that way. Yeah, it's not as easy as you think. The game production. If you have a good developer doing a game, it's good. But I have a good developer. But again, every it comes to the point that every time I we we do the game building, I want it this way. We we're doing it this way. We're doing like detail wise. It's like they these developers feel like they have the right to do whatever the fuck they want. And it's like, no, I didn't ask for that. I want this. You know, like there's always, I'm having that issue right now with building the game. But it's long. It's a long process. It's a long process. I thought it would have been done already. At least having a trailer out or something. And uh, it's like I don't know if I have to hire somebody else to do it or or something. But yeah, we're having difficulty doing this game. And I'm I'm trying my best to like make my community happy and not feel like we're rugging them in the sense of the game wise. So like I'm trying to figure out a way to like compromise and like doing things to like make sure that our you main utility of this collection is is there, you know? But the game process sucks, bro. How about you? <laughs> no, I, I uh I can understand what you're saying. Um yeah, it might be a considerable thing to uh fire and rehire. Um but then you gotta think of so much money involved, right? Um, yeah. Deposits and this and that. like I'm losing right. money. There's something uh, uh, you start a game, right? It's called minimal viable product MVP. You need to make something that is simple, right? Yeah. And then expand on it progressively. Because what you're asking for is like the perfect project, and that's great. But the thing is, you, you're sacrificing audience interaction. Make something that's fun, easy to get to, and then build upon it. Start with a feature and then update and notify people about new features and that sort of stuff oh, before we carry on with the talk guys if you're in the room please share come up on stage join the conversation you know we'd love to have you up here we want some feedback and opinions you know we're just three dudes in the space that just talk <laughs> talk about uh shit and our opinions so just join in <laughs> um for the game aspect i think there's a, there's a lot of projects that have games right for this game i'm trying to figure out like the, the, you know how we used to play Pokemon on the Game Boy? Like old school kind of shit? Oh, yeah, yeah. I figured the pixelated way would have been the easiest way, but it looks like it's like so complicated with movement and and, and direction and stuff like that. So I, I, I wanted to do that. Like make it simple. That, for me, that's as simple as you could get. You know, with the, all you got to do is a space bar and move up, down, right, left, you know, and enter <laughs> to grab something. That's for me the simplest thing. It looks like now these people, these developers, want to make things complicated. They wanted to be, like he came up with the one of the developers came up with a sample. I'm like, I saw what I asked for. You guys remember playing uh, Mario on uh, Nintendo 64? Yeah, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like, Side was 3D, 2D, and like jumping on those fucking mountains and that shit. Yeah. Like, he brought that to me. I'm like, but this is too much. I, if I bring this to my community, they're gonna be like, what the fuck is this? You know? Is it even? Like, is it compatible with the NFT or? Exactly. And yes and no. It looks like shit, bro. It looks like shit. It looks like it's like Roblox and uh -huh. Mario all at the same time. <laughs> it doesn't look good. <laughs> so what's your team like? Let me hear about your team. My team. Oh boy, my team right now we're arguing on our Discord. Imagine that. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, not not like that. I just mean like, <laughs> what are they comprised of? What are your members? Because like, understand this as a game developer myself, right? Yeah. An indie game dev. Okay. I've had the unique opportunity of like looking at game development from every facet now normally in a game development team you have like art sections you have like development sections you have like rigging sections animation sections you have various sections to delegate work and to like draw a mind map of what you're trying to achieve and giving everyone a simple goal which unifies the entire team everyone's got their goal they don't think further they think like sheep that's as far as it goes you don't give them that far that much free creative freedom if you're paying them, you expect a certain thing. I don't know if you're paying them. Maybe that's why they think they think they have the liberty. And maybe that's why where you might be going wrong. So, like, I just want to understand the composition of your team. So, so how, how we work it on our team, we have myself as the founder. And I do mostly the animations for, like, a, we have, like, a little cartoon on uh, on YouTube and stuff. Like you said, you need more content. We're doing that. But it's not that easy to make animations, right? Uh, you should, you, you know, right? You do them. So, um so um, I do that, and then we have a team of sales and then marketing and stuff like that on, in our team. But it's how we 
I think my problem is that the payment structure is that we're being paid during milestones. Uh, like we all sign, they all have NDAs, they all have contracts, they all have all that stuff. But we have to reach, we have to reach a certain amount of mints to get cash out to actually get paid. Now, that's I think that's where my problem is. I think I th I thought that would have been encouraging them to go out there more, to make sales, to make go get those mints to do that. I thought. That for me, that structure was more of um, an attack for them to go do the work for it. You know, you're working for something. But when there's no mints or no nothing, and they're not doing anything about it, they're just expecting a paycheck. That's where it, 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 I'm starting to look at what's happening right now. You know? Yeah, my guy. You know what? Like, I, I think the thing is like, like I said, MVP, right? Minimal viable product and in a minimal time frame. So it's like you want it to work out, right? Yeah. So course. you you got to delegate the work in a very specific way, and you got to give people very specific objectives. You can't give leeway or lenience. You have to set structures and goals. You have to set incentive targets. Uh, basically, say like, hey, um, I'm paying you this much, right? If you get this many members to onboard in this much time, I will give you this bonus, etc. You say to people, hey, I'll do this, I'll do that. You, you get what I'm saying? You need to give incentive, like. It, it's great like people don't get me wrong it is great but the problem is you need incentive it's like if i have a business and i say this is like how much i'm paying my employees i tell my employee okay you do this much but then you also get a bonus for referrals if i told them they get a bonus for referrals they're like oh sweet fucking extra money people are motivated by money dude like you want to pay them more maybe restructure payment you want to work things out you want to like get more out of it restructure the way you work like just like i don't put it you need to have structure when it comes to games you can't just be going willy-nilly otherwise they'll just be building a, a very very clumped up mess and on top of that it's also just gonna look like shit play like shit and it's not gonna be entertaining for anyone <laughs> so you, you need to get like structure in place like you need to get an, a goal a vision because you can't just be running around with tv static if you get where i'm coming from no no I do get what you're coming from. I do what you're coming from. I'm just, we're just, I don't know what to do anymore. One day, one day at a time. <laughs> That's how I'm doing it at this point. I'm not here to like, or I'm not here to just try to stop because I'm building other stuff on the other side. But like, it's I am doing the best I can with my team, make them happy, and but at the same time, like whatever. I'm just doing what I have to do. Like, I, I just everybody has a responsibility. Everybody has a job to do. We all have tasks. It is. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is I, don't, I don't know if everyone's done this, but you should like really follow everyone in the room, you know, like we're all really thankful for you guys being here. Uh, Graham, right? I'm like actually looking to join a lot of communities, try to network more. Like, yeah. um, I, this for a while. I recently got back and, uh, you know, I'm willing to help like anyone. If, if they need help, I'm willing to help. Like, if you need like someone in your community, like, to just pop in and just check and like look at everything like i'm by no means a professional but i know what i'm doing when i'm doing it <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense no yeah do you work like a regular day job on top of web3 yeah of course man. I'm, uh, i work in construction yeah i work from four in the morning to two thirty in the afternoon and then when you get back home you're fucking burned right right you're tired do you feel like doing anything in web3 nah you just want to sit on that couch and put your feet up and pass the fuck out you know, so it's like, um, that's why I, I, I think I rely too much on my team, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Thanks, Smash T, for the follow on Twitch. Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely tiring. Uh, I don't, I, didn't, I haven't quit my day job. I, oh, man, I'm driving sideways in a vehicle. I haven't quit my day job either. Um, anything like that. Because I can't. So the time that I get to be we here. Have, right? We have yeah. to pay the bills at home and also pay the fucking bills in web3 at the end of the day so basically everything i've started doing in web3 i just do it for free i just give it away i give the mint away for free um i tried doing smash tea i get home from work and then flip nfts then sleep for two hours and go back to work all right no doubt smash tea thanks for, thanks thanks for the input on uh twitch someone's talking with me on twitch um i'm not sure that is but yeah, I'm gonna die. Graham, can I give you like some uh, advice with that? My right, you're, you're working. 
working at like a full time job, right? And yeah. uh, okay, when you run an NFT, right? Tell me something like if a chicken runs without its head, it's gonna do nothing but bleed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get me. You can have a great team, but if they've got sh- if they've got like terrible leadership right now, it's like it's not gonna work out. Like I'm not saying like you're terrible. I'm saying the lack of leadership is terrible. So it's it's not to say that you're the problem. It's to say like when you're in a working environment, like I'm sure you, you've seen your boss, like he's eyeballing you. If you got a boss, um, you know, like if you're the boss, you're eyeballing them. <laughs> The thing is, you always got someone on your shoulder, but like in Web3, you have like that luxury, you know, you're just sitting on the, the chair or the PC, you're just sitting there, you know, like digging your nose, you're just like doing nothing. And it, the thing is, you can't really watch them, right? <laughs> you can't really ask them, hey, are you doing this? You just got to take their word for it. That's great. But that's why you need to like use tools to like resource and delegate. Like you get uh, these these boards, these pinup boards where you can like list tasks that need to be done, why they need to be done, when they need to be done. You, you can like structure your team, you can give them like incentive. And on top of that, I really think it's appropriate to like maybe get um, a second a second hand, like someone who's uh, your second in command that basically will lead the team with your vision and objective in mind. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I do have a second in command, but that second in command is really starting to uh, talk like he's the first in command. That's my problem. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm the type of guy that I, I walk away from confrontation. I just I, I don't I don't like it. I just fucking I don't stand up for myself. That's my problem, right? Uh, I like shooting the bullets, but when it's time like when it comes to like coming like, oh, but this this you don't do this you don't do that. I just like oh I don't want to hear it, so I walk away kind of thing. Yeah, uh, can I be honest with you, bro? You, you got a you got a stone ball. Like I'm not even gonna lie, you gotta walk in there with balls of stone. <laughs> like legit, you got you own your project, right? You are the project leader. You I was about to say, yeah, I was about to say like if this other guy's in the way, like what happens if you're to just uh, cut him out? Like what happens then if you're to be like, yo, you know, you're not working out as co-founder? On, on the sales and do everything on myself. Like yeah. when I'm not of the, like again, like I just finished telling you, last thing was I go to work, I come home. I got to work on the sales of the project. I got to do all that stuff. Well, at the end of the day, it was his responsibility. It's his task. I do a lot of the back end stuff, right? So I'm doing all the back end stuff and the discords and the websites and the smart contracts, making sure nobody gets fucked or all that stuff. That's me. I do that on the back end. So all I need is somebody in the front end. I'm barely using this Gremglow's account. I rarely use this account. It's the sales guy that does it. But it's come to the point that I've been watching the way he moves. And yeah, it's just, it's just we're we're getting sales, but not not what I'm expecting. Like next month, we're dropping. I, I we decided as a team that we're gonna drop the price, right, for the holidays, just for the holidays. Okay. Yeah. And that's where I want to see my performance. I want to see what the hell happens there. You get it? Because I don't like, for example, I'm I'm in a space here with you guys because I'm I like the conversation. I'm not here to sell you my NFT. I'm not here to do anything. But if you're not if you have the chance to go into another space to make that sale, right? Why wouldn't you, right? Right. Why wouldn't you? Why are you not waste? Why are you wasting your time on other spaces, of, especially a music space that doesn't rely on your shit? Like you have no music. You, you're an NFT project with a bunch of utility. Why are you in a music space wasting your fucking time? Try and then the excuse is, well, I'm trying to meet new people. I, I look at me what I just did. I came to this space and I met two new people. Three. You know what I mean? Uh, Blue chips I know you for a while. But I mean, I came to yeah, this, no. not trying to sell me my NFT. I'm trying to sell you me as a human being, making a friend. That's what's more valuable for me. Because at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? But if you're going to go into a space and just listen to music and think that you're, just your PFP is going to make that sale, mm. that's just a fucking, that doesn't work, you know? Hey, Graham, I give you a full my guy. Thank you, bud. <laughs> but that, see, that's what I mean. That doesn't, that doesn't work for me, right? They go in there and go, oh, I like that track. It was fire. What does that mean? It's, it's waste <laughs> for me. It's wasting time. Go into these hey. smaller spaces. Get educated. Try to sell. If you can't, like, read the room. Try to see if you could do it. If you can't do it, you can't do it. If you could, you could. But don't waste your fucking time. That's what yeah, I but do. Dude, like, that's the thing. Bring that energy. You feel that energy, right? That, that, that little bit of anger in you, right? Oh, I'm fuming right now. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you feel that, but you got that energy now. Like, take that energy and apply it to building. 
No, no, like host a space, like legit. Just say Grim Gobbler's mint party, bro. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Like I'll fucking come in there and coach with you, my guy. Like like legit. Like you need to the thing is you say like, oh what's what's fire, what's this, what's that? No, that helps. Believe it or not, it helps. Get yourself a theme song, do stuff, catchphrase, you know, like we got all that, bro. <laughs> do it then. What are you waiting for? Do we it. Got, we got all that. It's for me it's the time wasting. I'm not here like for example, I'm here now because I'm just chilling, but I mean if it was me going to another place, I'd be a fucking savage trying to sell you my NFT, right? <laughs> sell me your NFT. NFT. <laughs> but it's true. But the sell NFT, me your NFT, my guy. Sell me it. Tell I'm me what sell you my NFT, bro. It's it's NFT. Like, I'm not here. You just finished telling me you're broke. Why the hell am I going to sell some NFT to somebody who's broke? You know? Well, I said my bank's broke. I never said I don't have crypto. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, though. Ooh. Now you got me interested, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, like say it, tell, talk to everyone like you're a potential customer, my guy. <laughs> like just say the two minute pitch. People will uh, listen off to this page. That's the thing. That's what's the the problem I have is I'm not good at my two minute pitch. I'm you not see, that, that's that's the other guys that's supposed to do it, but the other guys in other spaces wasting fucking time. My guy, how can I just fire him? I don't know. Just be like, dude, you're not working out. Especially if he's getting paid, you're paying him like a paycheck to like fucking sit in spaces. Oh, yeah, I'd get rid of him. I'm, I'm like cold like that, so I, I maybe you formed a friendship with him and it's like personal, but. That's the problem I have. That's the problem I have. We, 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 um, we're, we're, working, him. we were working on another project together. Like we weren't founders or any of that. We were just working on another project that runs. And we're like, well, we love Web3 so much. Let's continue this. So we built this project together, you know? Now, I, I built it to the point that it was my idea, my, 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 uh, utility everything was my idea then he was just the guy that's gonna be the mouthpiece for it right but the mouthpiece is not doing his mouthpiece <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not good here at selling I, I would tell you join the discord and and i talk to you in discord on twitter spaces i can't do it i don't know what it is i'm not a good sales guy on that that's why we have sales people we have three guys doing sales on on the team you know two my them, guy like yeah Picture the audience is like all naked, my guy. I don't know. Like, oh, that legit. shit doesn't no, work for me, bro. That shit yeah, it does. <laughs> Pretend oh. you're talking to like a, like a house for like the mentally disabled. You know, like we're all just sitting here drooling, like like half brain dead, three brain cells. Yeah, like, dude, just, is, just try it. Sell it, I my guy. I like, because I just came into this room and being knowledgeable and blue chips and vanilla. You guys know what the fuck you're talking about, so I'm kind of a little bit of intimidated. So mentally retarded, dude, naked. Dude, dude I am mentally happen. retarded. I am mentally retarded. Okay, like literally in the most clinical sense, I have some issues. Like, uh, no, it doesn't you seem would like sound it, like, like a genius to me, bro. Stop it. Come okay, on. listen to this. Listen to this, right? So I've got uh, brain damage, right? Actually, at the well, I think it's brain damage, brain deterioration. It's mega. I forget, but like that's a problem. I forget. Mm -hmm. So I fumble over my shit all the time, but. You know, like the back of my brain, right? It's deteriorating. So basically, the connections aren't that great. It's like faulty wiring in a old dingy motel approaches. I haven't got like the greatest fucking memory with things. So I'm gonna be very honest with you. Pitch. There's no excuse. Like you know, the thing is, you are you. You've got the confidence to fucking speak. Well. I am not impressive. Uh, Kek is not that impressive. We're all just people. At the end of the day, it's like. I walk in every day thinking everyone is going to think like, hey, I'm a fucking idiot. Mm -hmm. and you know, I am. I am 100% a fucking idiot. Everyone here is a fucking idiot. You know, everyone's got the Dunning-Kruger effect on them. Saying like, hey, I know about this much and I know that much when you only know so much. But the thing is, if you've got a vision, you've got an idea, you've got more ways to tap, but you only learn by trying. So like I said, try. Get over that fear, my guy, because it's not real. It's in your head. So what exactly do you want me to do, guys? <laughs> what do you want me to do? You want me to pitch you the project, tell you what it yes. is? Yes, because people in the space are going to listen after this. Give it a pitch. Give it a two-minute spin. Okay. Well, it's not a two-minute spin, bro. I can't tell you that. Because there's so much going on in this project that I, I, I sometimes, as a founder, uh, with Condense the marketing it. team. Eh? Condense it. Remember mm -hmm. something, right? Okay. I'm trying so, to tell you something. My name my name's Pinky. I'm the founder of Grim Growth, right? We, uh, we basically started from another project that's rugged, and we just we did another project completely called the Grim Growth, combining the gargoyles and the, and the gremlin together. You're laughing at me. See? 
I'll lose so basically, that. basically how it is is we, we put this together and we sold out our first collection of 333 NFTs with utilities of a paid vacation. We let somebody go on a paid vacation. Uh, we gave away so much like iPads, I, MacBooks. We give away a lot of stuff. Cause, and uh, like you were talking about sponsorship. Well, we are actually sponsored. We're sponsored by Funko Pop. Funko Pop reached, um, saw one of our tweets and our, our Instagram posts and reached out to us on, the, on email. Which scared the living shit out of me, I'll be honest with you. Because a corporation like them reaching out, I got scared. And uh, what we, they were asking was they wanted to help us sell the project and give giveaways. So what they do is they ship us uh, Funko Pops to give away to the community, like people like you, you know? Yes. Uh, so what happens now is we sold out this 333 collection. And we, for me, for me was the, the, the high of selling the product, right? Was so cool. Once we sold out. You know, once you sell out, you have two options to do. I never want to do this again, or I want to do it all over again, right? You want to do it all over again. I did. I want to do it all over again, bro. So I'm there on my iPad because I draw. That's all I do is I draw. So I'm drawing uh, new versions of the of the, um, of the, the Grim Goyles uh, from baby to teenagers to, to uh, beasts, which are like adults, we call them, and elders, right? So we yeah. basically we basically have four generations of boy girl because a lot of projects don't have characters. We have seven, right? We have seven characters in our in our in our project, which I think is too much. But I mean, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we built community on Discord and we were doing Twitter Spaces, Instagram, uh, YouTube videos, and uh, we built a community of of castles. So when you join our Discord, you're forced to pick a castle which is like a, a cult, like a group that you want to be a part of. So Castle 1, Castle 2, and Castle 3. So you have all these different factions? All these different factions in our ca in our Discord. So basically, a lot of this, the times you go into the Twitter spaces and we do a Grim Girl space, I'm a part of Castle 2, fuck you, Castle 1, fuck you, Castle 2, you know? And then in, in our Discord, we're in each other's chat. We have all these private chats. Like the community is fighting against each other, throwing bombs at each other, you know, like, Stuff like that. It's just fun community engagement in the Discord. So that's how we built the, um, the community-based ones, right? Then we went to V2. Now, V2 is selection number two. Uh, my egotistical fucking prick of an ass that I am. Uh, <laughs> from 333, we went to 6,888, um, which is cool. There's some one-of-ones in there. There's the Pixel, there's the pixel uh, NFTs, which gives you access to our game. So what I like about it is... A lot of these NFTs that we did, our developer, um, each NFT that has a pixelated Grimgoyle is basically a token, a token for the play, a playable character in our game that's going to be coming out. So it's it's really that's what I that really intrigued me the most about the game that we're building is because a lot of the, the pixelated the characters are actual characters in our in our game development and storyline of our game that's going to be coming out in the next fall. So it really you see like. Uh, I'm gonna just say this like off the bat, like I suck. Great pitch. No, 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 great pitch. Here's how you improve it. Right? Yeah, I thought it was good. I suck, yeah. bro. What are you well, talking about? <laughs> I mean, we can we can still suck and be good though at the same time. All right, thank you. Okay, someone's gonna say we. Uh, there's always gonna be one person to be like that sucks, and there's always gonna be like one person to be like I like that. I, I get confused in my pitch. Sorry, go, okay, my daughter's calling me. Vanilla, go ahead. I like it's kind of like a lot of people will say it sucks, but not why. So it's not it's not bad like the content's good but the 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 presentation isn't the best like when you take care of it like remember this you when you start off the conversation oh we come from a project that rugged <laughs> not not the best way to start so you can say like hey we we had a project we had a failed attempt we're looking to revive it in the future and uh, We'll carry on with that at a later stage, but for the time being, we managed to successfully launch uh, Graham Goblins, which is this community where we have factions, and we we just get along and we have fun. But I'm here to talk about the this current like reboot that we've done now because now we've already succeeded, so we wanted to launch a second collection. You know, like just jumping past hurdles, right? Because you want to explain the main project, but you want to tell them, hey, we have an active community. Hey, we're happy. You know, like, hey, this is what we're doing. You get me? But not too much. Let them find that out. Like I said, people have very short attention spans. Yeah. Then you want to deliver the lines to the project. 
you see what I'm saying? If they ask you after, oh, what are Grim Goblins about? Oh, well, there's this group, and we, we have factions, we have storylines, we have all these fun little characters. You know, like, they ask you about the characters, then you divulge. But don't over-inform, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I see, I, see, I see too much, because I'm trying to cover everything, and a lot of it gets confusing. That's why sometimes I tell, I prefer the sales guy to go up there and say say a little bit of what's what's going on, you know? I didn't even tell you. I didn't even tell you we have an animated cartoon show on the, on on YouTube. We have yeah, like bring that up. Like you know? just bring up all the things you've done, but like flash flash through like a list. Like say, oh, we have like this community. We have characters. We have animations uh, that we put up on YouTube. We we have this collection that we've minted out, and now we're, we're starting our second collection. You know, like we're, we're such a fun community that a bunch of rascals, you know, assholes throwing bombs at each other in the Discord. And now we're yeah. launching the second uh, project. Teddy Slip. You're welcome to come up here, Teddy Slip. <laughs> and we want to see, like, this uh, this project, like, blow up, you know? Like, we want, to, we want the people who join to have as much enthusiasm as us. We want to give them a, a blanket into our community. So that, that's what you need to do, my guy. You feel me? You don't want to, like, overthrow them with, like, stuff. Like, you want to be able to, like, pitch the, the general basis of why you're there, your objective purpose in that moment. And that's what you're there for. That's why it's a two-minute pitch. You condense it. Because people only have, like, 30-second attention spans. Yeah. you got to grab that much. Yeah. Yep. I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> how's family life, man? How's, how's the family doing? Like, help out. Uh, I'd, like, love to take a look at it at some time. How was, uh, how was your Thanksgivings and stuff? And we could have a chit-chat. I would love to have one. 100%. 100%. Blue chips. I feel like I'm always interrupting you, bro. Oh no, I was I was just asking how's y'all's like regular life going? Like, how was your holiday, Thanksgiving? If you celebrate or anything like that? Who me? Yeah, anyone, I guess. I'm a Canadian, so I, I already <coughs> celebrate Thanksgiving in October. Oh, in October. Yeah, we have Thanksgiving in October. October thirteenth. Oh. oh, nice. Okay, I didn't realize that. We already had that turkey. We already had that weekend of hangover. You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt. <laughs> but um, yeah, but uh, yeah, family's good. Daughter's daughter's calling my name. You know, I have a, n a newborn coming. So that's another thing. I got another baby, another baby boy coming. Right, I have a girl and a boy coming. Oh, there you go, man! Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And and, and by the way, Blue Chip, follow me back. You know, I like to. Have am I not following you? <laughs> oh, I'm only following. Uh, uh, am I following you on my personal? I only follow the projects I'm building on with the actual. I'm actually only talking here because I'm getting feedback on my phone from my other device. Oh shit! Well, I like, but, uh, I like I like to like work with both of you, you know. So point me, oh, cause you you follow eight people. Got you, got you. I know what you're doing. Those are the, that? those How are the, that so that's the yeah. I just do whatever I want to do, but um, nothing personal. But my personal account oh, here, you. uh, follow my personal account. Am I following you, Graham Goals, on my personal keck? Yeah, I'll follow you back there. Um, not Blue Chip Club. I just put the eight projects. One that was acquired. Um, Mel, Mom, I'd Like to Mint, that was featured in the Rolling Stones some time ago, and I acquired that, um, and to continue the artwork and the comic lore on it, that minted out the 6969 collection. So I kind of just put the projects that I'm actually building upon, or, or that I acquired as following, so when people, you know, click on oh, who they follow on, that's the actual projects that Blue Chip Club is uh, the parent of. Shit. But how do you find, how do you find, um, your friend's spaces and stuff for probably with the with your personal account um to be honest i don't have friends yeah i don't have time for friends so much <laughs> um yeah we can be friends here people who show up here um i'm a big like gamer and um yeah so i just what do you play right now i'm playing PUBG on twitch and i'm actually live streaming here on my personal account keck um that's actually my name in life that's actually my real name Okay. Um, which is weird because I get these like, I don't know, I want to go into that crap, but um, these people That's are amazing like, name. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> That's just it. It's like I don't know what the, I don't know like what I'm doing anymore. I'm just like living my life, surviving, taking care of family, and um, not really talking about what I'm building. Um, I think like, I think I got, like I said, I think I kind of like lost my mind a little bit like in web 3 like it kind of drove me crazy in some weird way
I'm almost there, go? man. I'm almost there. You wanna go in another rabbit hole? What's the rabbit hole? I'm almost there. The rabbit hole is this. How about this, guys? How about how about we make a plan, right? How about we start hoisting spaces together, right? Like, I'm I'm always free whenever you guys want to host spaces. Like, fucking pull me up. <laughs> I'll, I'll 100% join in with you guys and, like, just shoot shots. We can talk. We can throw points, you know, talk about, like, the space in general. But we can just talk about the projects. Like, Kek, I'm pretty sure you make amazing work. Is that something you made for your, your PFP? Uh, yeah, yeah, I made that. Yeah. Bro, that is actually, I... Actually, I, um... I, it's like doesn't even look anything really much like it used to look but it was actually i i don't really i'm not too much into ai but i made that with ai and then i heavily edited it afterwards okay well that, that's pretty dope um and then i made a bunch of gifs and stuff out of it what project are you making like what is your project give me your two minute pitch i want to hear it yeah blue chip club is an 888 um genesis journey collection the 800 blue chips 88 gold chips and it took several months to mint out it was a free mint after um the uh for the people who jumped in early i spent about nine months networking just with like different projects and DAOs and stuff like that that got mint spots and they the ones who got ones who showed up minted and after 88 hours flipped to public mint at 0.0088 eth per each mint and that went on for about a bit and then the community kind of wanted to um want us to mint out and reveal so they said uh you know airdrop them um like the equal amount of mints that they put into one each extra and then flip back to a free mint so we did that it's even then it still took like several months to kind of a um, couple months to mint out minted out and revealed and now um i'm not going to talk too much because there's a lot of that's building and so mainly my focus on building and delivering and just kind of monetization of while i'm showing up to talk lightly about it um so like right now again like i'm just sitting here playing PUBG, talking with y'all uh, before i go to work today and after my day job i'll probably be streaming and talking again but inherently um people who have a gold chip if they list at 0 0.088 eth for each one they earn daily uh, 8888 yatoshis daily and you can learn more about that by going to https yatoshi.com and you can mine yatoshi passively on your own and you can flip your yatoshi into yeet coin if you want and basically the Yatoshi is every time you earn, every time you mine or earn um, with your blue chips or just mining with BNB passively, you, if you, once you uh, mine or earn a certain amount of Yatoshi, you earn one of the NFT characters that's part of the lore of the Proof of Yeet Genesis. And that's also part of Blue Chip Club Genesis. So Blue Chip Club Genesis um, and Blue Chip Club owns and operates uh, Yeet Coin and Proof of Yeet, which is going to have comic books rolling out and like a, just a media and story lore. And there is a video on YouTube about it, but um, that's like listed on the uh, Proof of Yeet uh, website and the yeetcoin.net website that people can learn more about. Um, yeah, I guess otherwise the the so now that we've minted out 800 blue chips and 88 gold chips people know what they have and my job right now is heavily been artboarding so i'm all into anime and manga and i've been creating characters that are going to reveal so it's basically like we had a pre-reveal that had no no one knew what was blue chip no one knew was, no uh, no one knew what was a gold chip now that those have revealed those are going to reveal once more into the actual um blue chip club characters that are gonna so they're so gonna a double reveal yeah so they're gonna actually be characters and they're also gonna be in the comic lore that and a very clever way to like shift the project direction like i'm, I'm actually impressed blue chip it mainly um mainly i don't even like i don't go to shill spaces i don't really go any spaces anymore i just kind of build and someday you know, people will be like, find this here and there on marketplaces and they'll actually <clears throat> see the game that, you know, again, like, I don't talk about it because one, I don't want, one, I've been ripped off here and there 
from talking a little bit. So I stopped talking. Um, and then to, yeah, I hear your ideas, they take them and they do them for themselves, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I get that a lot too. um, so I stopped talking. You made it up. Fuck off. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the game is, uh, the game part is, um, like you were talking about, you're building something on Unreal Engine 5. I'm building something Royale based. And so just my passion of what I love in gaming and via Unreal Engine 5 and that these characters characters are going to like kind of pour into with their metadatas and to be honest like um that game's not going to be shipped until like four years from now to be honest three or four years so that's why i'm just like concentrating on the art concentrating on community growth and the game building is um just will be there when it's delivered and uh otherwise i don't talk about the game really much at all i don't even talk about the name of it i don't talk about anything um yeah, like, Jack, can I just be very honest with you, my guy? Sure, mate. You know, you always, you okay, so you know when you're in a competitive environment, right, a lot of people will tell you to keep quiet, and yeah, some things you should, right, agreed. But at the same time, it, it's like, um, you have to still get your word out there, you know, like, when it comes to, when it comes down to it, like, marketing is great for um, reviving interest in a project and maintaining interest in a project and drawing awareness to a project. Uh, like I said, MVP, right? Like minimal viable product. You know, you want to get something out. You're not like any uh, some massive game studio. Or you're a club. Right. And when it comes down to it, you need to market, my guy. You know, even if it's trailers, promotional materials, you need to like maybe hire a few, um, maybe not animators, but like just like get, get it like this, like get models made like on Fiverr, right? Like get the rough designs out. It can prototype it. It's not really like a big deal. Just pay them like, I don't know, I don't know how much they'll charge, but it's five bucks, so you'd probably find a dude for five bucks. Bro, I'm a starving yeah. artist, man. I literally like have no money. Yeah, yeah, no, I get you, but like, <laughs> to be honest with you, <laughs> I, I actually the the mint proceeds from Blue Chip Club, uh, we invested back into independent one of our artists like myself, and uh, bought their artworks. We put it into a metaverse building, Blue Chip Club uh, loft and metaverse building. We have a, a museum of art, so um, that's that's one other thing is like. Um, is we are kind of vesting into um my daughter just awake is pissed off at her sister um so if you hear like tantrums in the background it's all good if you get yourself like a, like just a promotional trailer to hype the game you're immediately going to get so much interest from like the gaming community you know it <laughs> especially if you got like this little trailer you fucking get storeboard assets you structure it you make it look good you got everything there suddenly boom interest are like oh wow this could be a game you know when people have something tangible like it's a lot more I, effective i did make a trailer yeah there's a there's a trailer on um the proof of yeet or yeet coin I on reddit in the gaming sections i have a reddit i do have we do have a reddit community so yeah i make the post over there um yeah you, you just try to get it out in like the bigger platforms too but to be honest yeah, like you know there's mean, like, there's not like there's no game there's no game like no part of the game engine actually started yet it's all like focused on the actual like the the story the backstory um the characters so basically my focus right now that's why i'm saying like i'm not talking about the game and the only reason i'm saying that is because um i love to just deliver the game and then just kind of get the players who actually have the nfts and also um have it open access to basically a base character like when you play fortnite you have a base character so the game is always going to be it's obviously once like there's engine building into it it's going to have a base character that's just um you know just vanilla so um that's my take on like where how to ship this um out but right now it's again like we're so early um that it's just me doing art and those art pfps after the art is done it's then um Building and building these characters on Unreal Engine Five. So you need to refinance. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think you need to refinance. What do you mean refinance? Like, you need to you need to like get more funds, bro. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, this this like, thing called um the Bit Bitcoin Lab startup. They um. Fuck you, bro. This guy's shooting at me. Um. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear gunshots oh, in the hey. background. I see Teddy's in there. Sorry, man. He's just say, like, hey, Teddy Slope, what's up? This guy drove past me in a buggy and started shooting at me. Um, 
I'm playing PUBG right now. But no, so yeah, I was brought into Bitcoin Startup Labs and they have VC firms. They have like, you know, the million dollars, 100,000, you know, people want to put like all that money into you. And I read their contract. They want me to sign the contract. They still want me to sign the contract right now and uh, port some of these NFTs over into the Bitcoin chain. And But the thing is like, they're going to take percentage of like all the tokenization. Um, I don't know when I say refinance, my guy. They, they'll give me like... Launch a follow-up collection. Dude. Oh, so, yeah, so, so that's what's also happening right now, um, is that, um, so at the, towards the end of the stream, you'll see me drawing art, like, on the, on the Twitch, or like, on the, if you go to my, uh, Keck profile, I'm just like, I've got it live streaming on the video on X as well, and towards the end of, uh, so you got it, like, the pipe works, like, the follow-up collection for Yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing a fucking person who's circling back around to shoot at me. Hold on. Yeah, the same thing, like, then, like 100%. But like uh, the thing is, this time around, like you need to like focus on actual MVP. Like I said, minimal viable product. You need so, to get something. Yeah. So there. I have 20k characters rolling out. Um, that I've been working on the art for about two months now. So every time towards the end of the stream, you'll see me drawing the art and stuff. Um, and then after I ship that collection on ETH, um, they will be 20k collection. And I'm not going to say the name of it because I don't want, because again, like I'm not talking about what even the collection name is going to be. Um, but the art are part of the characters that will go into the game. But those 20k characters, uh, once they, once we mint out and reveal, um, each mint is going to be basically like uh, 0.001 ETH. So like it's, actually I was going to put it at 0.00088 ETH. So stupid cheap. Um, and 10, 20k would amount to, I don't know, I have to do the math, maybe about like 30, 40 ETH or something. So that actually would be the kind of like refinance you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, that, and that's, a, that's all right. If like, while well, that's like, that's on top of like me doing the art of, um, the artboarding, the art for these 888, uh, Blue Chip Club Genesis characters to actually reveal, um, uh, finally once more as well. Yeah, I think like a lot of um, collections, you make like one honest mistake, like charity is great, right? But like when you're making a project, like everyone's trying to make it as attractive as possible, right? And they're like, how can I give back to like everyone? But like the thing is you don't realize, like I'm not talking, when I say myself, like I'm not talking about like, hey, me as an individual, I'm saying me as a project because I'm the face of my project. Like you're the face of your project. Graham is the face of his project, you know, like, when, when it comes down to it, like, people are like, hey, we should get back to charity. Great. Let's starve ourselves. Like, we should uh, <laughs> invest in these communities. That, that's great. Like, I'm going to, like, starve myself. It's like, join a community based on, like, collections. Like, for instance, if you want to work with a founder, like, and you like that founder, give them one of your NFT. Like, I know it seems like you're baiting them or, like, dropping shit in their wallet, but no, like, legit, if you guys connect, if you guys connect, like, share an NFT with each other. Like when I launch Kek, you're getting an NFT, Graham, you're getting an NFT. The, the reason I'm saying this is because I want you guys in my community. I want people who I can talk to. I want people who I can relate to a thread. So the thing is, I'm not going to be giving it out to everyone. Obviously, I've got like a reserve amount that I can give for like logistic reasons. But legit, you don't want to like stretch your, your bandwidth, you know, like I'm starting with a small budget, but I want to like work up to it. I need the budget to like perform, to give people, to deliver. And after that, once revenue is generating in, that's when I can start making more absurd promises. That's when I can actually start doing more absurd things for the community. You know, until then, like, I really think it's it's pretty selfish to give away. Like, a lot of people might say, well, it's self-centered to hold on to it. But yeah, well, what's the point of, like, putting holes in your ship so that you can make sure others float? It's like, it's not good. You know, like, you got to work together and collaborate for the sake of, like, giving out information to each other so like, you guys can communicate and work together. But at the same time, it's like, you don't have to be selfish, but you don't have to be overgiving, you know, like you don't have to like, bleed yourself dry. And people want to look good for the face of public. But tell me something, if you give away to charity and you say like, oh, I'm going to be a project or I'm going to do this, I'm going to invest in these projects. And like, they're absurdly expensive. Th that just doesn't make sense. Like from a logistics standpoint, you know what I mean? Like people have to watch their budgets when they start because a lot of first projects, they make that mistake. Oh yeah, bro, I made no money in my first in the first collection, zero. Nothing. Kaka, zero. 
Well, I really wanted to support, like when we when we uh, invested back into independent artistry, um, it was actually to build our, like put our Metaverse Museum out there. So we put our Metaverse Museum, that's on On Cyber. So Blue Chip Club has its On Cyber Metaverse Museum. We have our own loft as well um, that holders can go to and stuff. Um, but the museum is public open. And so I am definitely like, basically Blue Chip Club, I think it's like just something that can want to have its characters people just want to collect because they're trades because they're nft collectors because they're nft flippers they don't care about what the nft looks like they just they just care about the trades are rare and they invest into it but also um if they're like that but also that the proceeds of like royalties can go towards um <clears throat> can go towards um basically investing back into independent artistry to put in the museum and whether we choose to you know sell that artwork resell it in the future um whatnot you know that's kind of one prospect of like as a business model of what blue chip club is doing is kind of being like an art kind of like a, a nifties or a um a sotheby's like that to be buying and selling artwork uh as a art dealer um basically but for right now so we are filling the metaverse with like a lot of our metaverse museum with a lot of different artworks um, from around the world, from different artists. So I kind of want this, like the world to do that. But yeah, you're right about that's why, like you know, the 20k collection is a paid for mint, and you know, whenever it mints out and mints out, it's super cheap, so that the funds can be there. Um, so basically, it alleviates my work uh, towards um, just yeah, like basically, if um, I know some local game studios, and I've. Uh, if I like, you know, contract them to do certain parts of works into the engine, then um, over the years, so it's for like, like you're saying, shipping an MVP, then that's kind of where I would, you know, invest funds into. Can I just be very honest with you? I, I'd say it, it's more efficient to get yourself uh, an animator and rigger and to get yourself a programmer and then outsource um, companies and game development for asset production. In terms of like coding, you don't want to deal with like a spaghetti mass guy, like because like everyone codes differently. If you know your code, you know your code. Right. So like, like my honest opinion is like when I talk about like financing and that, like I'm not talking from like oh you know like I'm a mogul or some shit like that. No, I'm just thinking logically here, right? Uh, when you start projects, you need to have funding. When you don't have funding, you you can't really last. Uh, I think the one thing that people need to actually start doing is like budgeting correctly because everyone's trying to give back to their community and it's like they're giving it back wrong. Like people are like, oh, short term, short term, how do I keep the interest? But the problem is like you need something long term. People want to say a blue chip, blue chip that. I mean, like, you know, the culture direction, the, the industry. But when it comes down to it, blue chip is 10 years. Space hasn't been alive that long. You know, like the NFT space hasn't been there. No one's a blue chip yet. You know, when 10 year mark comes, fine. I want to see like a blue chip come up great when it comes down to it you need to like actually say hey this is the project we're building this is what it will give you like i'm in my project right i'm, I'm not trying to show i'm just giving an example oh show the way man i want to have a, a creative program right so like we're going to launch the game it's going to be a competitive game people are going to be able to compete uh the nice thing is it gives people opportunities to create premium currency in game with some of the trades uh we might turn that into a coin at a later stage and we might turn uh, some of the uh, abilities to mint assets so like you might be able to mint assets from gameplay or rewards so you could turn limited time skins into like very permanent very uh, real assets on the blockchain with in limited supply based on time frames and like the ability to earn them the the cool thing about this is also we're giving creators the ability to actually make custom content and put it on there obviously it has to go through like approval quality checks and things like that but we want to give people back no are we making astounding promises of like now time frames no but at the same time we want to be structured we want to be public and say this is the snapshot we're on this is where we're at this is what we're using the money on like you, you know what i mean like i'm going to start off as a single developer i'm going to be like hey okay shit is not working uh i need to pull on pull on another guy you guys know this now great okay cool moving on someone says like hey yeah but like uh i thought you were everything i'm like no i'm, I'm a generalist i can do some things but i'm not specialized i want a more quality driven project i want to give people something that can reward them long term like in 10 years i want to stand here and say my project went from this to this to this to that 
felt like went this to down to up to down up to down i wanted to just keep growing and i want people to benefit along the way but i can only do that by garnering resources delegating those resources generating resources and then distributing resources yeah that totally makes sense yeah i'm I'm more of like a i build alone kind of deal i just i do like the rigging i do the buildings sorry what even elon even elon has underlings my guy <laughs> yeah so like if like there's 40 eth there like yeah i invest money to where it needs to go to build faster um and to deliver and into like a budgeted way most definitely um i i've i've have like again like i don't quit my day job but um you know like my my family like runs their own corporation i work for my family's corporation um which is in the rigging and theatrical industry um i was like i was i was um like in the entertainment industry i used to be a theatrical rigger for like performing artists and stuff um i'm kind of retired from that and i just do like carpentry work and stuff um carpentry art on the side and things like that when i can but mainly my time is wrapped up into again like working my day job in the company coming back home taking care of family um you know and then going back to work streaming and basically there's kind of like hosting new space i do a blockchain tech and finance video i read the news every day except for like the weekends basically um of what's going on in blockchain crypto and like nft marketplaces i post that on youtube i put it on the feed i move on to my de- next task during the day so i kind of like carp pentama uh, carp carp uh what is it um I like section my my task out uh, daily so it's like one task is done next task yeah so it's like i have like you know box box tasks like this is done that's that's next task you know, like next task that's task done next task and it's like day after day like the same thing over and over again um as far as like hiring like a second like when when it comes to like building an unreal engine 5 um after these artworks and the characters are done you know porting them over into our working uh, the artworks into like 3d char- characters like yeah most definitely um best into a, si- a second like person who works uh yeah i just downloaded the the new patch um that has a lot of updates and so i'm actually pretty bullish on it um dude it's gonna be sick i'm not gonna lie like people you know like guys i just want to like say something out here right i just want to uh, quickly greet the audience like if you guys mind saying hi like i don't care if you do it all together just like start yeah. speaking just say hi yeah, there's a bunch uh, of people like, up here to brought up, so. Yeah. So, uh, Teddy, what's up, my guy? Like, yeah. Yo, 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 I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm doing okay, man. Uh, what's good with you, man? It's been a minute. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's all good. You know, we're all just up here chilling, talking. <laughs> AJ, what's up, man? You good? Uh, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm just uh looking for a decent space. I saw you guys in here, so I popped in to say hello. Oh, you like the combo? You like what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. You guys are making some interesting points. Um, what it takes to have a project, and what you need to know, which strategies you need to have. Budgeting oh, is definitely part of it. Um, I feel like a lot of people overall, not just founders of NFT projects, uh, they have a great idea, a great concept of how they want to execute it, but they never actually look at how much it's going to cost. Like they never actually go and do the research on what it takes to get things done. And then once they're in the thick of it, then they realize how much things cost and, you know, it kind of, uh, slows down productivity because now they realize they have to pay for it or you know unexpected payments and then all of a sudden you know unfortunately the investors end up paying for it either they either they don't get their content as as a promise let's say there was like a deadline that things had to get done or let's say for instance um there's no deadline but expectations are things are going to be done when they said they were going to be done or roundabout let's say for instance this month there's something coming up and then it doesn't happen this month. You put it off for next month, okay. And the next month doesn't happen. And you keep putting it off until the point where the expectations for the people that you want to buy your project are going to be a lot lower 
and they might have been initially invested, but now they're not. So now they're not as much because you've been putting off what you've been telling them this whole time. Because you were prepared. Projects over ledger. Uh, I think like that. I think projects like over leverage themselves. Like they, they like to put down a lot of money in the wrong places, especially in the beginning, and that causes a lot of problems. You know. Like I think that's yeah. one of the biggest problems. Definitely, but I agree. Man. Definitely, I agree. Uh, I'd say like bud budgeting is huge. Different. Budgeting is huge, though. I've actually had a bunch of people like approach me like here and there to buy with Jip Club just because of the name and because of the tag on OpenSea and all that crap, and um, do whatever they want with it. But I haven't sold it. Like the money raiser isn't really talking to me like that. You know, like I'm gonna be honest, man. Uh, Kek, you need the money, right? And like when it when it comes down to it, like I'd actually consider that if they give you a good fair price, like start up the project with funding again. I mean, you sold a successful project; it's minted out. And it's presumably going to be in good hands with someone with actual money. They just really like the contract. The problem is you have the naming placement. Right, that's what they want. Something better. What people yeah, want, like, they want the name. Yeah, but but dude, like that's what I'm saying. Like you get you get something good out of it, right? Because you're eventually going to release these, these characters. Like I mean, there, there's a lot of things like. You know, like you could start a new trend, and you know, like as much as you want to like hang on to like it, but you, if you don't have the funds to like repair your ship, well, you can start building a new ship. But the thing is, if you you have the context, well, you haven't lost it. You're still part of your community. You own some of your assets. You you know what I mean? Like you're still part there. Like maybe you let go of the reins, but you can start fresh on this new thing you're working on and actually over leverage into that. Yeah, it'd be like, like a. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, take all my art and just drop it into a different one and whatever someone wants to do with blue chip club they can do whatever they want with it yeah well, you'd have to offer me like a, a a good number on that one though yeah well like dude if they offer you like even 20 ETH, bro if you can do so much for like a launch yeah you know what i mean like if they offer you like a decent amount for your collection yinkos 25 thanks for the follow on twitch it's time i'll bring yeah no, and I like, dude, like, legit, I'd actually consider it. Like, a lot of people might say, oh, you're flunking on your project. No, 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 no. It's like... Yeah, I sold out. Like, a, a lot of people, like, no, you sold out. The thing is, you want to go on new ventures. The problem is, you have to move on. You haven't lost the community. You haven't lost the aspect. You're still there for the ride. Maybe it takes a different uh, direction. Maybe you eventually leave. But if you still participate in the community, it means you try to be part of the community. You still love them. But at the same time, you have to make decisions to help them. Like, you could maybe say, like, all the members of Blue Chip Club, you're welcome to receive an NFT, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. From the new collection, you know, when we drop, we're going to be a 20k collection. 888 mints of each one of you can get one, and uh, yeah, you'll still be part of both projects. Still have the same leadership in another project. Just different owner. New vision. Yeah, it's a different owner. Got a new vision. Like, dude, there's nothing wrong with that. The thing is, if you're sinking a dead ship further into the water, you're just killing its. Uh, it's value, you know, like PayPal, for instance. I think Musk sold PayPal and got it back. I'm not sure how they worked out, but um, I didn't yeah, know you. Always come you back I think he just sold it. I don't think they ever acquired it. I don't know. How, I'm not sure. They sold it for like five million. Then he invested into Tesla and almost like and almost like completely tanked, and they just scraped by and made it. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. saying. Like sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Like I mean, that's how you move up. You know, you. You sometimes let go of some of the things you love and you make new things that you love and that's how we move on. It's it's not like hateful. It's not that you hate the project. It's not like you hate anyone. It's just like maybe you don't have the capacity to lead Blue Chip into the Blue Chip direction. Maybe you've moved on to a new direction. You know what I mean? And that's fine. Like, oh, as long as you can get a good offer. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I definitely have to... Eh, eh, 28... Selling, selling Blue Chip Club for like 80000 to like $100,000 um, wouldn't be of interest to me because I know what I'm building. And uh, again, like that's why I'm, that's why we're putting out 20K that over time passively, like part of the, the lore characters, that would lead it to me to be like, yeah, I just put my nose down, I work my day job, I yeah, build what I build, and four years from now, Let's do the latter difference, you know, four or five years. Yeah, but you're selling the name, not the project. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can sell the club, but the direction changes, right? Yeah, the actual, my, my actual building, my contents would go with me. Just someone would be buying that name and those, the current NFTs on that marketplace. That, yeah, what they look like, you know? 
that that's what I'm saying. Like if that's how you structure the the payment, the deal, etc., and you uh, set it up, it's agreed upon, you sell it. You know, you're not leaving your project. You're reinvigorating it under a new label. Okay, you know what I mean? It's a new market. There's a new bull coming. It's perfect time to re-advertise, refinance, and sort yourself out. Yeah, I mean, the offers I've gotten it haven't been anything like interesting to me. But if, like, I mean, I don't know. No one's really approached me, being like, "Uh, hey, it was like." 40, 80, 100 ETH, if you want to buy your name out just for the name, then, um, you know, I'd have to see what contracts look like at that time. Obviously, they get their website and stuff like all that matter, but website domain and all that jazz. Contract uh, ownership. Let me just quickly say hello to Intricate. Hey, Intricate, what's up? Yeah, I actually want to say to that, to it's time. And I actually want to circle back around with JC also, because I know Graham Goyle's founder is up here, and JC, co founder of Graham Goyle's, is up here. Um, so they seem like they got some things in their way of their building and I know we can, we've been given some constructive feedback with them. I, I think I like, I appreciate this space cause we're given just constructive feedback to each other. And that's kind of why I'm hosting spaces these days. Not to really, sh we can chill, but I think like shill spaces, like people are like, yeah, we're sitting in shill spaces to sell our NFTs. Um, but that might've been like a a good productive part of time, but I think at a certain point it becomes a waste of time because then yeah, th because then things aren't getting things aren't getting shipped or built. Spending too much time trying to sell something, one's buying. I I hundred percent agree with you. I couldn't agree more. Uh, we're in different oh. times than what it was before, and I feel like some people are still dwelling on the past and what worked for other people will work for us. And I think that's that's the wrong way of thinking about it. You have to move with the times. These smaller spaces used to be very helpful but um they're not not so much not because of the content more about the direction that people are taking in the spaces like people are sticking to what they know and when you come in and you know you want to talk about what you got going on they're kind of already putting their shields up because they've been burnt too many times so now it doesn't even matter if it's a big space or small space at this point it's everyone sticking to what they know and they're not looking to hear what people are trying to sell them unless they're going out their own way to look up to look up and do their own research on a project but they're not looking for someone to sell them something yeah i think i go ahead no you're not cutting cut me off right. at all you know like i think i know how to reinvigorate the model like if if we bring back like shelling spaces right like like let's just say we all congregate and we try to make like a more concentrated shilling space something like a two minute pitch sort of thing like everyone comes up gives a two minute pitch yeah, but instead of like just trying to like sell the project like they mustn't like be overbearing like you hit the buzzer like once it's gone right like two minutes is gone your, your time's up people got to be prepared people got to be ready and then like what happens afterwards you give uh questions interest you you ask them about their project you look in ways in which you can improve their project by giving them feedback on how they're delegating how they're handling it and like we're doing here right just getting to know the people, getting to understand them. And we ask them because the, the more clueless they are, the, the more obvious like the pitfalls in the project become. So it's like, you're less likely to fall into it. I think a lot of the times when people come and pitch that project, it's like, hey, no, this is great. But like, what are you gonna do? Like, aren't you over promising? Aren't you overreaching? What are your plans? Can you explain this to us? And the minute they're like, hey, well, I don't have to explain myself to you. That's like your first red flag because they're trying to like explain themselves to you. And then they're saying they don't have to. Mm. You see where I'm coming from. Like, if you can just talk about certain things, help each other, and build each other up like that, and talk, I think yeah. it's going to be a lot better for the space. I yeah, I agree with that. Um, I think certain spaces stopped inviting me to spaces because maybe I sounded like I don't know, maybe egotistical or something. But like, maybe I was just feeling a little salty. Like some people ripped some ideas from me, and so I stopped talking. <laughs> so I was like, so it's kind of like what you're saying. Like I was talking, but then I was like, but I don't need to talk. And then it's like, you're like, wait, why well, don't you need to talk? And it's like um so i get what you're saying too i can understand that <clears throat> that's why i say like i think like this space has kind of like driven me insane a little bit um where certain one space will be like well you gotta like pitch like this another space will be like why are you pitching like that and you gotta pitch like this and then like i'm like i don't know which way to pitch <laughs> like pitch nowhere you, you know like i found that the two minute pitch never fails you know like a lot of people will say elevator uh, pitch yeah elevator pitch is cool dude there's freaking polar bears on the candy and pubg that's what's up <laughs> I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta step here and just say something real quick about the, the two minute pitch thing 
it can fail and the reason why it can fail is because if you holy have, shit is chasing if me if you have if you have something that that if you have a project that um that has so much holy going shit. On with it there's, there's not enough time to, to give it out what i would suggest and this might be a good idea for a good space actually to rotate not to give everybody a two minute slot, but to rotate to to go to go back to those projects and then have them do another two minutes. So you break up the you break it up into intervals. So this way people aren't um, going to be all um, you know um, ADHD about it. They're gonna they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna hear what they have to say. Okay, cool. Move on to the next one. Hear what they have to say. Kind of like kind of like speed dating in a way. Like they get they get their they get their rush, the two minute rush of a conversation, and you go to the next one. But then you circle back. Oh, they have that as well. Okay, I didn't know they had that. You know what I mean? Because some of these projects, like ours, for instance, has a lot going on. So if I were to pitch the project in two minutes, I'm leaving out more than half of what we have to offer. But then if I know that after maybe 10, 20 minutes, they're gonna circle back and give me another two minutes then, you know, that might pique the interest of the people that are listening. Oh, that's Grimgoes. They came back again. They're, they're giving another two minutes. I don't think anyone's doing that. I don't think anyone's circling back after two minutes to just no, go on to the no. next project. Okay, can I be honest with you? Like, I, that's what I meant. Like, um, so you, you see, like, the problem is two-minute pitches never fail. The people fail. You know, like, I, I hate to be rude, but, like, when it comes down to it, think about it, my guy. If you've got your points consoli consolidated with as little padding as possible... And you summarize it in the most basic sense. You're capturing the attention of the audience immediately. When you have like 50 different things, well, that just sounds like you're over leveraged. That already makes it an unattractive deal because now you have to like focus on 50 different things. I'm a person. I'm trying to invest. I've got other things I'm investing in. How am I going to leverage my time to your time? You know, you have to consolidate your points. Like you have to like remove the padding, the fluff. If there's parts that are more interesting, that'll catch the individual speaker. They'll be able to highlight you in and say, Hey, can you tell me more about this? Or can you tell me more about that? But like, if you've got a poor elevator pitch, my guy, then you're not gonna be getting past the, the running game. That's just how it is. Yeah. So just to piggyback off that, you're right, but you're also kind of wrong in the same sense that that was the other way of doing things. Like last year, and the year before that, the two-minute pitch uh, uh, wasn't actually effective for sales. It was a smaller spaces that actually allowed you to make more sales than the two-minute pitch spaces. The two-minute pitch spaces were big spaces. You were able to fit about 50 to 100 projects in the space to do a two-minute pitch. But a lot of people didn't get sales from that. Where the sales came from was actually the, the, the giveaways, the giveaways where if you had minted something from someone that they would give you something for it. When I remember how, how it was going, this is my perspective. I might be wrong about this, but when I was out there in those two-minute pitch spaces, I didn't see anyone actually get sales from a two-minute pitch. It was really about yep. it was really about um, awareness of their project and respect from their peers when they pitched it in those spaces. But sales never came without actually giving something to get it. Where sales okay. came from was from the smaller spaces, getting to know the smaller the smaller communities, getting to know the legions in the space, if you will, and connecting on that level. That's where a lot of sales came from. Um, okay, but let's look at yeah. it like this. I agree with you, right? I agree with you. So that is a working mechanism, right? But there's a lot of mechanisms in the machine. I gotta take a call for a brief moment, but I'm listening also. Someone's calling me. You guys also sound super low. I don't know why that is for me. Okay, so, so uh, the one thing you want, you want to like keep in mind, right? When you have an elevator pitch, what's the purpose of an ele elevator pitch? It's to consolidate your thoughts, right? So let's just say I walk into a space and it's not an elevator pitch. I give my elevator pitch, right? So now I've listed all the points, the talking points in my project, because a lot of people ramble. I ramble when I don't have a pitch. Everyone rambles. You know, you're like, you don't know where to start. There's so many angles. So if you have an elevator pitch, you've rehearsed this shit. Like, it is down. You will be able to, like, go into any space and say, da 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 and then go like da 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 like you've got all your points right so you can expand upon those points in a very orderly concise manner and people will understand it more clearly your information will be more digestible you've prepared them for what is to come do you get what i'm saying like it's yes you have these other smaller spaces yes you have that but you know what your project's about because you've got it down to two minutes 
Oh, that's yeah, what I'm that's, saying. But that's, that's what I'm saying. It can't just end with the elevator pitch. That's the, what I'm saying. No, you can't end the conversation that. with just the two minute elevator pitch. Because what's going to no, end up happening that. is, as we know in spaces, for anyone that's in Web 3 or I would say more so Web 2, footage more Web 2 than Web 3, but if anyone that's in the space knows that not everyone is paying attention 100% of the time, right now, at this very moment, I can guarantee you that we're all doing more than one thing at the same time. No one's sitting here at a desk and just talking. More than likely, we're either doing dishes, in the bathroom, about the shower, <laughs> talking about myself, <laughs> or we're working on our projects, or we're looking at other spaces. No one is sitting here just talking, and I, I can I can almost vouch for everyone in the space right now, right? Well, that being agree. said, if you're doing a two-minute pitch about your, you're an elevator pitch for your project in a, in a room full of people doing the exact same things that I'm mentioning to you, there's a chance it's more than likely a chance that they're not going to even listen, pay attention to you, not even give you the full attention that, that is deserved. And if that's the case, that's why you need to circle back. Because there's been plenty of times I've done elevator pitches, and then I've been in a space where we had like designated like ten minute slots or whatever, and people have said, "Oh, I knew that about your project, but I didn't know that about your project." Even though they knew the very um, foundation part within that pitch, they didn't know about what entailed with that because they didn't take the time to hear about it they didn't want to go further with it they just heard it and they just went, went past the map so that's why the circle is back is important and you don't do another two minutes but i could be wrong i could be wrong okay so if you ever seen shark tank right like where you try to sell a business to someone for like shares and all that kind of stuff then like they pretty much do the elevator pitch right so the the thing is the elevator pitch like i said is not a um it's not a staple it, it is a fundamental so like it's good to have an elevator pitch that you can consolidate your thoughts like i said people come into spaces and they ramble uh, i'll get to uh, real judy in a second uh just hold on <laughs> you're right there uh so yeah like i agree with you right i 100 percent agree with you there's layers right there's layers to this like it's more than one but you need to have like your social tools for selling in place like even you're like trying to sell me a product if i have to read an instruction manual to do it like everyone's got short attention spans right even if you've got like seven different elevator pitches and you give seven different elevator pitches in seven different chats seven uh, seven different chats not about seven different pictures but at least now you have different pictures that you can rely on to start talking and generating like interest and it's more concise do you see where i'm coming from you have more clarity, more control over what you say. Exactly, exactly. You you, you have to have, you have to have little little uh, explanations about what you're trying to come across, than just trying to bobble it up into one. That's that's yeah. all I'm saying. It, it, but but I'm I, but I want to stress this part the most important. I don't want no one to be confused with what I'm saying. You can't just have one elevator pitch space that's what i'm directing it towards not, not what you're saying about elevator pitches yes from the elevator pitches but you can't have an elevator an elevator pitch space a two-minute space where just projects talk about the elevator pitch it doesn't work for sales if you're looking for sales if you're looking for let's say for instance um awareness sure it will work but are you going to generate sales from those i don't think so potentially Potentially. Like, dude, it's awareness. Like, when it comes down to it, right? If you want to sell your project, people need to know. If they need to know, they need to have information. If you're all over the place, it doesn't seem like you know what you're talking about. It doesn't seem they know what they're reading. Like, I do agree with you, like, 100%. Elevated pitches are not the most financially uh, viable option for making sales, but they are one of the most financially viable tools for selling yourself. Like, if you come in there and say, I'm a project founder, I'm a project XAB, and this is what they do, and yada, yada, yada and you ramble and ramble and ramble and you, you talk about fluff on the top it, it's just very confusing people just don't know what they're buying they're, they're very weird weirded out they're like oh is this guy professional he just seems a bit clueless it's it's like i, I agree with you a hundred percent that they cannot fundamentally make sales of elevator pitches but they can be used in, as an intermediate tool like if i was to host an elevator pitch i would have like a whole room come up right and then we got like a room let's just say uh two co-hosts a host and like 10 speakers or it's 13 people in the audience i think i think that's what twitter allows and i would say okay give me your pitch you pass a two-minute mark i hit a buzzer you're only allowed to talk about the topics that you've listed 
so you better know what you want to talk about because if you start adding extra fluff i'm going to start cutting down and not to be rude but just so that people aren't like getting hit with absurd amounts they want to carry on the tangent you don't want to carry on on like some little funny journey you want to stay on topic you want to keep it going so that your project has interest you've given points expand on those points delve into those points and then after five minutes great next guy and then we circle back and then once everyone's gotten enough out you know we can touch on the extra stuff in the second round of going around and afterwards drop the stage next group that's how i'd handle it but the, the thing is you can't just go and add fluff and all this and all that because it's not, not, not going to be important it's not going to help people it's just going to confuse them because you know you've said one thing about one thing and then one thing about the other how do they link how do they work you can never really get to all the intricacies in these things so you need to be able to consolidate your information but i do agree with you jay jay do you mind like just giving judy a sec like, i just want to say can hi to her real quick I yeah agree. what's up do you think also like actually yeah Judy, what's that i'll just leave it at that i, I had something to throw in there you know, go, go ahead go ahead oh, i was just gonna say like the question out there maybe there's no one right yeah. way to do anything but everything is just um equally as uh effective every time i talk someone starts shooting over my head um <laughs> no <laughs> It's so, so much, every time I talk, someone's trying to assassinate me and kill me um, in PUBG. But nah, I think there's like, my question is like, do you think maybe there's just no wrong or right way to go about it other than, um, you know, showing up? At least just maybe just showing up is a, a way to go about it. You know, whether it's a pitch space, whether it's, a, you know, we're just hanging out here space uh, with our projects um or just showing up on our discord you know maybe someone's having a bad day and they're like they're a holder in our project and we're just like saying what's up to them and like talk with them and um <clears throat> and apart from like you know putting like the work in like the building work um do you think like my question is like there's no real wrong or right answer one way to do anything in this I feel like place objectively speaking or fluff speaking because like I, you know I, I don't want to be the guy that hates on anyone like i love everyone in web3 right we're all just people and we're all just humans, right? But like at the end of the day, when we have these relationships with people, right? It's 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 a it's a difference. You want to humanize yourself to the audience. You need to make your pitch as relatable as possible. Maybe add humor to it, add this to that. You know, as a founder, you don't really get an off day. Like I know right. like everyone's like, Hey, like I'm human, I have an off day. Great. Why does my why does my investor care? You know, yeah. like, I, like if I talk to one person in private because I've gotten close to them in the community, I so like, hey man, I'm having an off day and they talk me out of it and get me out of my funk, great. You know, fucking community support, wonderful. But when you go into the, the ideal mindset of like wanting to sell yourself as a person, you need to sell yourself as like this monolith that people can like fall back on. You know, like it's, it's a scary thing. Like that itself is terrifying for every founder. But you got to have that positivity. You are the face of your brand more so than any other member will ever be. You represent it. You know, if you're down, if you're gloomy, your club seems gloomy. You know, like, oh, yeah, we're not that great. <laughs> you get what I mean? Yeah, no. you got to have, like, a sort of kick to you. And, like, it's, it's hard, you know. I force that shit. I am depressed, my guy. <laughs> I am depressed. But the thing is, you got to like actually push that shit out of you. You got to like make it happen. It's yeah, like, it takes oh, take some vitamins, do some push ups, get over yourself, kind of thing. Yeah, like confidence is faked, my guy. Like everyone who walks up with like just fucking bravado, I'm telling you now, they're crying in their mother's basement. This is crypto. <laughs> like we're all fucking depressed. Like, <laughs> like shit. Like people need to like stand. You know, like you go, at some point you got to say to yourself, "Hey, I got to stand. I got to like speak." And I, I agree to people like, yes, you have off days, but then why are you going on a space in an off day? Just have an off day. You know, if you want to go into that space, slap yourself awake, have a cup of coffee, you know, good morning, good morning, walk in and just say like, hey, hey, hey how's everyone? You know, like you, you can't just go in there and say, I'm glum. My club is glum. Everything is shit. Buy us now on nft marketplace unless that's what your marketing strategy is you know like we're the depressed sods <laughs> you know like come buy our nft be depressed with us we all just mope about how bored we are in our mom's basements like <laughs> it, it, yes there's different marketing strategies for different marketing groups there is a right way there is a wrong way it's based on what you do it's based on what you're trying to achieve 
people want to say there isn't a right way, but it's more like, oh, do I want to put in that effort? You know, if I'm having an off day, should I do this? No, I shouldn't. If I'm not capable of doing it, I should not. If I should get a face, I should get someone to do this for me. If I don't have the energy for this, I have to make up what I'm lacking. You know, everyone needs something to cling to when you're marketing. The thing is, marketing is marketing. It's not feeling. You know, um, it's enthusiasm. It's it's draw. It's drive. It's it's alluring people to buy what you're selling. If if you can't even sound like you want to buy into your own dream, how do you expect others to buy into it? You know, if you come in with an elevated pitch and you're like super happy, super jovial, talking about how amazing the community is, just like you were just having a laugh or whatever, people are already like you got them on the hook. You know, like now's your time. Then you start expanding later after you've listed your points. You know, you get that extra two minutes. Like if you finish in a minute, you still got that extra time to expand on some stuff. But like I said, like it's, there is a right way. There is a wrong way. And the thing is people forget this. They come unprepared. They come unprofessional. They come depressed. They come sad. Like I'm depressed. I am fucking clinically depressed, unmedicated as well. And I still make an effort. Everyone makes an effort. There is a right way to do things. Like whether people like to hear that, it's just what it is. Like, I'm just going to say it like, you know, like a lot of people, they want to say, oh, I don't, I can't this or that. No, they can. It's just, you're going to bleed. <laughs> you want to be a creator, you're going to bleed. It's not an easy journey. But if you have a good support structure, a good community, and you build it back off the morals of that, your community is what will uplift you. Like take Daniel, that dude, you have no idea what that dude went through when he started Sketchy Apes. Man was going through anarchy in his server. Do you know that, that that man had so much shit, like you don't understand. Like I was there, I was talking to him. I saw the stress that guy was under. Like, guys, it happens. <laughs> but you need to keep a smiling face. When have you heard Daniel just walking like, oh no, I'm down, I don't want to have space. Have you ever heard that from Daniel? Hash lips, you know hash lips. Who knows hash lips here? Do you guys know Hashlips? One of the guys is responsible for like making a lot of the contracts that people are using on Web3 right now, or Ethereum. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just on a call right now. Oh, no worries, no worries. I'll take this call. Real Judy, I saw you had your hand up earlier. What did you want to say? Hey, buddy, how y'all doing? I just thought I'd get up here and show you how uh, these sketchy people fluff. I've been fluffing for years, you know, but uh, how y'all been doing? Now I've been hearing y'all talk, and I like what you're saying. Sound like you, uh, you, you like what I'm out here doing, but like I told them, nobody in here is worried about selling yourself but like i told them if you can't sell yourself how can you sell anything else people when you come in you gotta make an impact you gotta let them know what you're there for and i'll tell you real quick what i'm here for i'm here to show the world that uh twitter reel is gonna be the best thing in the world because we're here to teach the children because the children is our future, or that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help the kids, because we've got to teach them NFTs, what the future's going to bring, the digital, because if we don't, they're going to be standing here holding the bag saying, well, what, what do I do? I, I, I didn't graduate, and I don't know how I'm going to make it, and, well, I guess I'll just sell drugs and hang out and play games. But the games is going to be good games. What we're doing in Twitterville will live on forever because we're making things that are good. We're repairing what's bad and passing on. You got to take the old with the new. You pass on the good things from the past. And let old people, then you got the young ones. Let them young ones teach you. But you got to teach. And if they're not being taught at home, they're not going to know what to do. And if we don't save the children and educate them on 
take them and save the metaverse. That's my baby. I don't know a thing about that metaverse. I can't even make that chick walk. She walks <laughs> off buildings into cars, but I know what she needs, what she can learn. You know, that's what we need to do because the metaverse, they can go in there and fly planes and do whatever they want to, but they're going to be right at home by their parents, safe, not out there doing weird stuff. But I'm glad you had to get up here and fluff a little bit, and I'm going to get up because y'all talking good talk. Okay? Well, I, I really appreciate that, Judy. Um, you know, like, the one thing I will say is, like, Judy, you had a very strong start there. You know, like, guys, also remember, when you when you make a pitch, right, start with the cause, Judy and, her, Judy and the children of the future, you know? She she came up here and she said, She's she wants the kids to know she's worried about them because there's not many opportunities, a lot of education issues. You know, she stated quite a lot of problems there, and she's she wants to make make it known that she wants people to be informed. A good way to deliver a cause. So, like when you come down to it and you make a pitch, right? Like I said, you're trying to sell yourself, and she's right. When you can't sell yourself, how do you expect to sell something else? If I'm not sold on you, I can't trust you to sell me something. <laughs> like that's just what it is we personalize brands you know like businesses that go out of their way to like overly personalize themselves to you so that you are familiar with them so the thing is when you do sell yourself you have to remember one thing you have to come in with a happy smile and objective a mission you have to show that you're a man on a mission and you're going somewhere or a woman on a mission and that you're going somewhere the thing is when you sell something you need to say hey this is me this is what i'm doing then you need to say how you're doing it and that's great. But the thing is, if you've got a lot of ways in which you're doing it, you can simplify it and say, we have various ways we're doing this, all of which you can find on this side. But this is what we're trying to do. This is why we're trying to do it. You don't need to fluff every detail. You can say, you can generalize as much as possible so that you can just get it all out. Like I could say that I'm making a game project. There's going to be community rewards that might lead to blockchain development and tokens but there are going to be community rewarding features in my project. There, there are various ways I can simplify and condense. We've, speech is most efficient when less is said. That's what people need to remember. So when you have enough interest, people will ask. If you say enough, you can condense enough just to peak interest and people will ask. Or even if you're just using it to walk in on a stitch and introduce what you're doing, the two minute elevator pitch never fails. It will give you a gateway to speak, give you a gateway to look efficient, to look good at what you're doing. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Real Judy no, no, no. put their go hand ahead. up as well. But who was just who was just talking before? Intricate or Real Judy? Real Judy was talking before. Oh, hey, I appreciate you being up here and for your words you're putting in. I had a, I had a call coming, so I was talking with some family members. Um, so I had to tend to that. But I'm back here. And I did hear actually what you were saying vanilla before because you were relating to uh, Daniel's project. And I, I was just going to say this, jump in, that um, like I know you said kind of like he was doing like some sort of book and like um, with the characters. And I remember that time too. And I still have my sketchy ape 100. Um, and, to, and to be honest, like um, I never shared it to him because I guess that doesn't really matter so much. Um, but I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't participate for like anything other than for the book or anything like that. Um, and, and I wasn't even actually interested to circle around ground to figure out what was going on with it other than like, you know, I appreciate, because I, I, um, am more into his code base and his Git repositories. But otherwise when he did the collection, I bought the NFT. Like I searched down the owner of it. Like I really like trolled the owner to like sell me the NFT, um, sketchy ape 100. And, and then they weren't attached to it like I was. And I was only attached to it, one, for his artwork and that alone and for the traits in it because it, I resonated with it to who, for me. And so um, I acquired it. I still have it. won't be selling it. And anything else that's going on, I guess it's, I just never really thought about it. Um, so I guess everyone has their own reason. Um, but that was mine, at least with, with Daniel's project. Yeah, but I think you can also say that you bought the art because it's Daniel. Because a lot um, of people will say that they I, buy I, the odd because it's just the odd, but I, I bought it because yeah, I bought it because it was because I 
because I had met him and met his code repositories and his in his media bases. But yeah, I mean, you're right. Like if I hadn't have met him, if I hadn't found out any of his media resources, um, I would have never bought it because I would have never known about it. But I think if I had seen it just randomly sitting somewhere, like, and I hadn't found him, I didn't know him, I probably would have still have bought it because at that time I was, you know, just acquiring certain NFTs that I resonated with um, personally, not through, not through, not through into a blue chip club, uh, but just me personally into my own wallet. Yeah, and that was, that was one of them. So I can't actually really, I guess I can't really say if I like, if, if, uh, you know, I didn't know him, would I bought it or not because that didn't happen. But at yeah, the end of the funny. day, I, I think I, I think I would have, you know, subjectively bought it. But that's a bias, that's a biased opinion. Because yeah. Right. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like I, I, I get where you're coming from, but like bias is bias. It's like you, you do unintentionally attach to a brand. Like if you buy a Azuki, it's because it's Azuki. You've attached to that brand. Uh, you personalized it in a way that makes you attracted to it. You need to market yourself or your brand. Either your brand is the face of its face, or you're the face of your brand, depending on what goes. But like every, even in, in the community, the head on show, he's the face of the brand. It just is what it is. And, you know, yeah. he sells the stuff. He makes this stuff happen and that's why people follow him i mean even even yeah. me being right here is like you know well actually i'm not i'm talking through blue chip club because my personal account my device is given like echo feedback but me talking here me hosting this space is just to hang out but at the same time like um if you look at my pin post on keck like i am building an nft collection that's personal um that's personal over there but it does tie into like characters and so it's like my work when I'm not on stream is just like drawing art, like nonstop, um, basically in between, you know, real life and obligations and work. So, and that's, 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 that's for me is like, I guess, passive, I guess a passive way to be able to someday quit my day job and just work solely in, in web three. So it's like me, me streaming like PUBG right now. No, whether someone cares or not, whether it's streaming on X, whether it's streaming on Twitch, um, whether someone drops me some Twitch bits, whether someone tips some ETH into a wallet and they, cause they're, they're going to be rewarded in a token. Um, you know, it's all like kind of monetization to me. It's all like basically what you're saying, marketing. Um, so if I'm here, I'm here talking with you because I want to, but I'm also here basically like passively marketing, I guess you could say, you could say it that way. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, Judy, we'll get you now. Jay, what, what are your thoughts on all this, my guy? Maybe he's taking that shower right now. He's doing those dishes. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, but Judy, carry on. Tell us, and tell us your feedback. What do you think? Yeah, you're 100% right. Because that's what I've been trying to tell time down there. Uh, I'm everywhere, but you in a group, in a community, you got somebody that's good at talking, you got somebody that's good at writing, you got somebody that's good at drawing pictures. But when you put all of that together, you got a package that you can't stop. That's what I'm here for. I've got five great grandsons. They're two years old. I've been in this, uh, I started over there in TikTok, my grandkids. I've got 14 grandkids, and I've seen it's a cesspool for the kids. And if we don't teach them, but I'm taking them to YouTube. I've never went over there and blowed up YouTube, but now I'm over there blowing up YouTube with Jelly Roll and making a good impact. But people, I am my brand. I'm Judy Bell, ML Judy Bell. So that's what I'm out here doing. And if you like it, you like it. But you can't force somebody to do something. But like you said, when everybody works together, but I am the voice, I am the go out there and tell them how good, hey, they just doing so much shit over there, you know, that's good for the, the world. But I'm selling all of Twitter or X or 
from one end where Scurf is at to up there and where we're going to Mars. All I want to do, if he wants to have coffee on Mars, I want to have the first Starbucks right next door. And it's going to happen. So uh, that's the positive, the outgoing. You, you live what you, you know what I mean? You having a bad day, you don't tell nobody. You go in, but everybody, you make a deposit or a withdrawal in that person's life for days. You come in and say, oh, my God, I got this thing I got to sell, y'all. That ain't worth a piss. Then that's just taking away from your day, and you're going to have a sticky day. But if you have somebody comes in and says, oh, my God, I can't make that girl walk. So oh, I'm gonna have to get to that metaverse because that chick just walks off and goes in the water and uh, y'all or to pay extra to get me just to watch me get her in line. Then that enthusiasm that oh my god yeah I'm gonna have to go in there and see what in the hell that old hippie's doing. You see what I mean, Burn? Yeah, Judy, uh, you know, like, the one thing I'd like to say to some people as well is, like, you know, you are your brand. Like, even if, well, not even your brand, you are you, but you market yourself and then all your brands succeed because of it. It's when you become more marketable, everything you do becomes more marketable. And the thing is, introducing yourself, your character, that's great. But being known for being objective, being known for certain qualities also is a very redeemable feature, especially when you're, you're trying to um, garner interest in a project. So I would I would actually fully agree that you need to market yourself and it's it's really it's really nice that you are doing this. And I think that everyone should actually participate more in smaller spaces to networking, to build bigger spaces, to work together towards making bigger spaces. Because a lot of these spaces that um we're competing with, you know, these hundred plus, seven hundred plus spaces, like you'll see them coming up like before a bull run. Do you think they're botted? Do you think they're botted? Like they're not even real? No, they're not, just... they're not botted. They, they, they're organized, bro. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, think about this. If you have 100 members in a space that are just sitting there, right? Like, you just plan with your crew, hey, we're going to get 100 of the best to just sit in there. Not come up, just sit there. Don't you think, like, like 500 other dickheads are just going to pop into the chat? Of course they are. They, they've orchestrated this shit. This, this is how they do it. So the thing is, it's like, tactics you know like if we all get there we're there for the actual content obviously but i mean if we're there and they're there you know what i mean more people come the thing is the bigger the space the more it attracts so if you have 700 plus people in the space and everyone's uh, sending shares out everyone's interacting of course it's just going to keep exponentially growing but like i know there's a cap for spaces i think it's like a thousand i'm not sure no way there's been more than people on spaces I'm not sure. I think I've heard I like, think, but, I think I've seen like 10k people on like a Elon Musk space. <laughs> okay, maybe there's 10k spaces. I might be wrong with the cap. But like, the thing is, you know what I mean. When yeah, we enter yeah. a space, you've got like 100 people, like they're already there from the get go. If you see a space start, there's 100 people that just started, you're going to go peak your interest. You know, like you're already curious about that. Um, so, like, yeah. That's why I'm kind of like, like that's why I'm kind of like hosting spaces um once more because at the end of the day like some of these spaces are just like atrocious to listen to um and if we can actually be real people or like some of these other spaces uh it doesn't sound like real people i mean it sounds like they have some certain like i mean it's fine like you can monetize yourself as a public figure uh, kind of like we're doing right here we could talk about our projects and be kind people amongst each other but some of these spaces are like degrading people they're talking like they're talking to, like shit about like anything to like steer people away from it and for whatever reason like they like they might be um you know saying like the ones with the mutant apes and then i think it's like i think it's um like those ones recently i was in one of those i got fucking used as a sacrificial lamb you what tell me tell me about that let me know about that what's that about so this was so fucking dirty right so, uh, like, they were talking about one-sided LPs, right? I just wanted to say, hey, because I cannot respect for some of these guys, you know? One-sided LP? Space. Like liquidity pools? 
LP? Yeah, like I, I didn't, I wasn't like in it. Like, you know, I didn't know that. And he had to explain the, like, the concept, like what it was, but then I simplified it. And he's like, I'm like, is that what it is? And he's like, yes. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm showing like I can grasp a, a subject. I'm not trying to be vain. I'm not trying to be this. But before that, he's going to say, oh, look, he's going to ramble on, try to ask, you know, try to talk some random shit about what it is. But is it the pontification I'm, space? Is that what you're talking about directly? Yeah, yeah I would yeah, never even, I would never even bring myself up to his space. But yeah, let, let me hear so it's, the, the funny I, thing is, yeah. I came up there and I got used as a sacrificial lamb, essentially. Like, oh, look, this guy, you know, he's, he's the generic stereotype. Look at this guy. I'm not bothered. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm upset. But, like, I'm not bothered. Like, the thing is that pisses me off is that I went up there with an open mind and they shut down the conversation. Because I show that, yes, I'm reasonable, that I will quickly adapt if you give me the relevant information and that I'll understand. And I'm not going to spout some random shit. Right? Yeah, those are, like, grade school bullies on the playground um to be honest like they just like they don't they don't give a shit about themselves they don't care um they don't care you could have like the best idea and like that since like toast and sliced bread and, and the fork and they will be like that's stupid um or like you have you have no understanding of anything in web3 or you don't know what you're doing or you're gonna fail um i think they do it just to because shit talking sells um so the more they can shit talk the more they can be like mean and aggressive to people there's like that sickness of mind and heart that people for whatever reason are like gravitating towards um to listen to and yeah. so when they so like the, the entertainment is the shit talking so that's why i was like i would never go into that space because you become the entertainment for them to shit talk um for for people to keep engaging with their listenership yeah. Um, like, to be honest, I just wanted to say, like, hey, I appreciate some of the tweets you've made. Like, they've been helpful. And maybe I'm wrong about some of the things, but, like, that's just kind of what I gather listening to some. Guys. But I don't know. Maybe. I'll, I'll be honest. They're, they're smart guys. They know what they're talking about with things. But the problem is they, they like making sacrificial lambs out of the people that come up. You know, like, holier than thou, I know more kind of things. But they know quite a bit. But, like, the problem is it's like the Dunning-Kruger effect. You know, they think they've reached the, the precipice, right? And they go and shut you down shut you out make accusations make assumptions of your character before you even get up there so when you get up there they're really not there with an open mind and i get it they're tired they're in the space they've done this for so long and they, they just they're heartful probably like tired just angry yeah just but, waiting for them to get wait. bored of be doing this at all in this space it's yeah. weird too because like i've hosted spaces i'll be yeah. sitting in host space and they'll literally put Keck in their title or something like a beneath guy or those and it's because like what are they they because they want me to because why like what hugh hefner's like uh x or like us uh, or the um widow like follows me nft you know famous people follow me and shit in my personal account like why do they want me to go up there shit um and it's like i'm not going to go up there either way they can try and lure me in there because they want to do what they did to you and it's just not going to work so i think that frustrates them it gets worse right so basically i said to them uh they asked me like uh, would you buy blast and what i was gonna say was i said like well i'm making a ue5 game so i'm a game developer right like that's what i was gonna say so this is not my forte this is not my special specialization so no i probably would not buy blast like i'm mentioning that i'm making something not that i'm trying to show just what i do right and um just for context because of like without context I, like i feel like it's just off and they're like immediately like oh he's trying to show his project watch it now he's going to tell us where to buy his nft and da 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 and like you know i was just like very over it because i just came there for productive conversation and i really wasn't trying to sell anything so when they actually said like oh he's going to sell his nft oh he's going to do that i was just like uh that's just a bit rough because yeah? like i can say that i'm doing something this is what i'm doing currently this is what i am not that i'm trying to market it or sell it i didn't even have a title for my project of that name i wasn't even trying to show it so at that point in time it was just like daylight slaughter you know what i mean it's just like really unhinged yeah and that's that's um that's part of their yeah that's part of their entertainment is uh they're gonna they're gonna basically say like any any person building anything uh and, and if it's not a crypto punk if it's not a basie um then you're 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 token gated like you're you're and, and they might they might have that like oh you're gonna buy like 
blast because they're all collectively buying buying blast and then what they're doing is they're selling on each other each other's bags uh, so they're just like here's this token blast and like buy it and then like they're going to sell on each other <laughs> it's going to tank back down in value and some people are going to get locked in that token um well, so well, so they, it's like they're, they're i don't know it, right? it oh they're just oh they're dissing it well i mean i've heard also other things are like some maybe not just that pontification space but other spaces you know are kind of doing that they're like taking people up there shit talking people for the, the 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 prospect of shit talking people and then for the entertainment part of it uh, to fill the space and then they're also like have a token out there like oh yeah we all got this token and like they're filling each other's bags and the listeners are then filling each other's bags and then they're selling on the listeners and the listeners are getting locked in on the token so and then they're and then they're just like the listeners are down like a hundred percent after they sold everything on, on the listeners so i mean there's that's going on as well so there is a value of hosting these spaces. Um, it's just you also have to be careful hosting these spaces because they will report your space and they'll also um, get you like, you know, shadow ban, like your space like canceled, like shut down, even may possibly the, the account ban. So there's all sorts of like nasty stuff going on right now in those regards. And it is just, it is just like that. It's about like, you know, token, they're token gating the whole system right now. Yeah, um, so. Like, I'm not going to go to the whole shadow ban conspiracy and all that. Like, if there's proof, there's proof, great. But where it comes down to it, if I'm going to, like, make my way up, because I will, you know, I will, I'll just keep building. Do what you like. Yeah. You know, come to wherever I am. You can, like, track my IP. I've got a bat now. We'll fucking fight. As far as it comes down to, I'm a six foot four giant. I'm not afraid of shit. People can come at me. I'm South African. I'm a different breed and a Viking. So, motherfucker, try me. I'm not trying to make threats. Just saying, like, I'm not afraid of shit. People can do what they like. You know, when I make my way, I'm going to make my way. I've got a voice. I'm going to use it. When I reach my my point, my precipice, my peak, people are going to know this. And, you know, the one thing I really hope they know is that I have a grudge. I do have a grudge. So, when it comes down to it, if they can like, oh, you know, I always knew you were gonna succeed, and like, I'm gonna look at them and be like, you're a joke. Yeah, you just Don't talk yeah. To me. <laughs> this guy, you see this guy? This is the guy that called me an ass, like made an ass of me on stage. I'm literally gonna call him and say, you're, you're not, you're great for coming. Like, I love when my haters just show up to my concerts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, you guys are the biggest fanboys. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to like associate with them. Even if they're part of my club, I'll tell them straight, like you're excommunicated. You own the asset. That's it. You lose privilege. <laughs> you made that talk. You will suffer the consequence. Yeah. That's, like, that's, that's just, uh, yeah. There's not much, there's not much else to say about those people other than that. They're, they're there to, um, they, it's almost like they don't, it's almost like, they don't even actually believe in NFTs. They don't actually believe in anything being built in NFTs. They don't believe in any kind of like crypto. There may be some shit coin they don't think can make some money off of and they're going to dump it. They don't care about it, um, possibly. But it, it's actually like they don't believe in the, the the what we're doing. Like They don't believe in like they're almost here just to to shit talk the system, to shit talk the system for fun. So they're here because they have the following. They're here because they can get the listenership and maybe it might be possible that they actually are, you know, somewhat botting their spaces that my speculation is and like, that's just opinionated is that they're kind of sort of botting some of the spaces, you know, paying the money into some bot services to bot the space, to bump it up a little bit. And then people start to pour in the space and listen, more people come in and listen. And then they, and then eventually they keep coming back and it might even be people like you or I that are building that keep going to their space, like upset, <laughs> and, and they, oh, but they just keep they just keep listening. So my my uh my thing is like, stop listening. Don't listen to it. Keep your nose down. Keep building, doing you, and s stay out of those spaces. I don't I don't go in them. I don't go up to them. Um, and I'd rather be faded and just deliver, um, like that. So. You know, I like feedback, right? I'll go to these spaces, I guess. And I'm just... not going to be angry. I'm not even bitter. Like, that's what people don't understand. Like, I hold a silent grudge. Like, it's out of principle. It's not out of anger. Yeah. Like, when it comes down yeah. to it, it's like, you, you know, you show your, your flaky or 
that you're like super this, super that, and your opinions change, great. But if you make an ass of someone to do that, to change your opinion or to base your opinion on, that's that's really just disgraceful. When when I actually think about it, like when, when how do I put it? Like when I make something and I bold something and it becomes something, who's going to tell me what to do? Me. Right. And you know, like if you've told me what to do, how to act, how to behave, in a very disgusting manner, I might add, um, because it's just out of ego. Well, then I hope you fall off your peak. I'll fucking kick you off it. I don't give a shit. You step on my turf when I'm actually become something. It's like you've signed your own warrant. Like that's just a, you can come to my space. You can come there, but you shut up and listen because clearly you're following me, not the other way around. If I've gone to that point, fine. I'm not there to, uh, to hurt anyone, to be anything else. I'm just there to talk. Like the thing is if people want to talk, give me feedback, give me information. I'm going to listen to them. You know, I'm going to take what I need and extract that's useful. Obviously, not everything is useful. Like I said, I go to these spaces to hear what they'll say. You know, like a person may not be valid to you, but their opinion might. Like they might have some good points. They're worth listening to. You know, if you don't listen to your enemy, you'll never know where your weaknesses lie. That's the thing. You need to know where your weaknesses lie. So if they're shitting on the space, great. Let them do it. Let them filter out all the problems so that you don't have to find them yourself and you can fix them yourself. Simple as that. Let other people do the hard work for you. Work work, uh, work smarter, not harder. Why go through the extra effort of trying to discover the weaknesses of a space when there's like hundreds of people bitching about it? Do you, do you get where I'm coming from? Oh, yeah, totally. No, yeah, you're right. Um, and that's just it. You are right. And uh, I think I, like I said, like I think for me, um, like listening to it or or returning back to spaces I've been faded from or something like that. Um, and, um, I think it started to just play on my mental health where I was like, you know, I'm just going to go outside, you know, stand next to some trees, watch, watch my children play around and, and, yeah, and go to work gross. and yeah. And just, and just focus on, because at the end, because at the end, of the, at the end of the day, if I keep going back to those spaces, then it's like, if you add up, like how many, how much time oh. did you listen you know, and then you add it up, you know, if you set a timer, like, all right, how much time am I paying attention to this? And, and because I'm maybe I feel a little salty or upset about it, like emotionally affected, and I got to cut my emotion out of it. So what I can help towards cutting my emotion out of this is like, set a timer, how much time did I spend listening to the to the shit talkers? And hey, maybe more, if not more than a, a second quickly. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah. The, oh, also, uh, Real Judy, you got your... Yeah, what's up, Real Judy? Yeah, I just wanted to tell you, y'all are 100% right. Because the thing that is important is playing with them kids, touching them that sky, put your feet in some grass. That, at the end of the day, that's what my space is. Well, that's really what I do. Everybody that comes around me, I want them to kick back, take their shoes off, listen to me ramble, talk shit, whatever I'm doing, bull corning with everybody in the space. But it's a positive thing that we're saying. And then when they, they sit there and relax, a lot of them go to sleep because I, I got that World War One voice and the worlds won't listen to it because I'm a dying breed. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to not round them up when they come to your space. And then they're all pissed off and everybody that at home, they're snapping at them. No, you want to have them cool, calm, collective, and take the day away from them. All that road rage. That way when they get up and they your space is over, they're like, oh, my God, I feel so much better. And then you have a good time with your family. That's why I like to do mine in the afternoons. And uh, But I don't do a whole lot of spaces because I do space jumping. I think I can make a better impact and help more people if I go into each space. And like you said, y'all are voicing your opinion. I'm a voice in mine. I tell them every day, opinions are like assholes. But if you don't want the God's honest truth, 
<laughs> Baby, just do you a favor and don't ask me my opinion. But that's what we need to do. And it's working. I go into, but like the other guy said, when I first got here, I was bubbling over. You know, we're going to do this and the NFTs and Web3 and teaching the kids and old people. That's what we need to do. But everything, a lot of them, I threw out their ideals of what I was going to accomplish. They took my ideal and just ran with it. And, you know, and then they didn't, they don't know who I am, you know. You, but them people, karma will get them, so don't worry about them. All you got to do is know your self-worth. God don't make junk. Get out there, get the bull by the horns. If he throws you off, get back up on him. Teach that bull who in the hell you are, and uh, you ain't going to go away, and you ain't going to shut up, so he might as well just calm down, let you ride him for a little bit. Eight seconds, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I actually I agree with you on that. Like The thing is, people forget something. Guys, when you go into a space, just remember something. People make you angry fun. People redeem themselves, great. A lot of people won't, right? A lot of people won't redeem themselves in your eyes, and that's fine. You don't have to show emotion and anger towards them. Like, the thing is, what's the saying? Save the feelings for those who care. It's the most literal sense. Don't waste your emotion on people who are just not going to respect you. If you, someone respects you and they betray you, that's different. You know, that that's personal. But if it's not personal, it's not personal. Uh, a lot of the times, you're going to walk into spaces where some people are just going to make an ass of you, and that's great. Don't get angry about it like i know we want to so badly but remember if you can show control you can show that you're respectable if you show that you're respectable you will gain traction if you gain traction you will grow if you grow you'll become big and one day that person who's stagnating with whatever they're doing or at some point you overtake them they're going to come to you you know they're going to come to your doorstep when they come to their door your doorstep you can shut the door in their face and that is the most satisfying revenge it always is well, and something so that, that, my bad, I want to pop in here real quick. We also got to recognize what type of market we're in. Like, I'd say X is one of the most cutthroat in Twitter back in the day. Either way, it's still genuinely the same fucking people here. It's one of the most cutthroat marketing industries that I've ever experienced. But that's why I enjoy it. Why? Because, I mean, like, you know, it actually is, like, the realest of real connections that you can make. But, you know... I'll be honest, like, you look at some of these bigger fucking things, you're right, bro, like, like, the reason I say it's cutthroat is because there's people fucking, you know, moving the fucking trends in the space, and when you got the same fucking developer, you got the same fucking influencers pushing this shit, that's their fucking job day in, day out, they've already done made bags doing it, and they're gonna make more doing it, and, like, unless, you know, somebody's out here to call them on their bullshit, you know, fucking shit ain't gonna change, and why, I, you know, we, you kind of gotta use some of the fucking shit that they use to fucking get on their level, but, you know, just making sure you're doing it right. I'm annoyed. I think the one thing people also have to remember is when you become rich, remember you were poor. Just remember you were poor. Like, the one thing I hate is um, a braggart. And I can tell you now, it's the most distasteful shit I've ever seen. Like, I say this now, and maybe people will call me back on my space one day when I when I maybe become successful or something. I'll say, remember what you said. And, you know, like, I'm going to say, oh, man, you're right. <laughs> I fucked up. Like, if I did that wrong, I, I need to mellow down. Like, you know, like, we're people. We we started off with nothing. We we grew. And, you know, some people, they, they walk in with money. They walk in with this. They walk in with these assets. Sometimes they, they have culturally... I would say luxurious lifestyles, whether or not they realize it or not. Like, take something very simple, convenience. Not everyone has convenience in the countries they're in. Not everyone has these opportunities where they're from. You need to remember the fact that you hustle to get where you are. Like, a lot of these people, they're like, they use their hustle as a reason to be entitled when that's not fair. Everyone's hustling at that point. And, you know, they could say, well, life's not fair. Well, great. But when they say that your reaction to them is not fair, like when you're big, well, isn't that warranted? You know, like you're, as long as you're nice to the little guys, right? Who cares? Like the thing is, they do you dirty. You don't need their connections. You don't need bad business. You don't need bad blood. Like you said, weaponize what they use against you against them. 
it's it's just the fact that you need to find people to grow with you know if they become the most unliked group yeah they'll have a lot of haters but they won't have a lot of people that love them if you become the most loved person in space you'll have a lot of people love you just as simple as that you know like even your haters will hate you you'll have the haters and the, the people who love you so that's just it is what it is the more likable you are the more marketable you are the better you're gonna do so, well, this is one of the problems we face too, man. You was talking about how you basically ran up on a space and just because motherfuckers wouldn't let you speak on some stupid shit, like you, you're one of the more, more very well reasoned people in the space. When I, you know, come to talk to you and that type of shit, you you hold the conversation really fucking well, and like really like you could have been a part of like you know that high level of intellect there if they weren't such dicks. Mm, I wouldn't say I have the same experience. I would say that sometimes... just just speaking you have reasonability and you understand shit and i I just listened to your conversation that's where i you know like they're fucking Mm -hmm. stupid i know who they are though so fuck them (laughs) i get you but here's the one thing right so when it comes down to it they've got their own demons they're dealing with their own shit they're probably taking their own people around them i don't know that's that's what they do I do things differently, and the thing is, I may not be at that point, and, you know, like, yes, I, I do complain about it now, and, you know, because I don't like that kind of treatment, just in general in the space, I get it, we're not all here for fluff and love, but at the same time, you know, we're, we are all humans. Um, now, obviously, the space isn't about fluff and love, you know, it's about selling stuff, but at the same time, you as a person are building networking connections, you know, you're not just selling to people, you're selling yourself, your marketing abilities, your project, your ideals, your vision, and it's ironic, because this is the only ecosystem that exists, I think, where businesses are trying to sell to businesses in person 24-7, like, this is like the world's biggest startup, this is the the new um, Kickstarter. (laughs) Every Kickstarter, you know, like, except you're trying to kickstart yourself to other Kickstarters, and <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing, but I, I wouldn't say that, that that's a problem, I'd say that that's a very interesting concept, and in practice, it's quite chaotic, but I, I think we, we can really work around it if we just consolidate each other, you know, like, we, we don't have to become, like, the centralized body, but if you follow a movement or you follow an ethos, that's all the generalization you need you know as long as you're like okay this is what we do this is how we do it this is what we wear this is how we we play it this is what you do and then you grow and when other people adopt your brand they start showing up in these spaces that are toxic your influence is already irritating them so (laughs) you have all the fun of just laughing at the absurdity of the situation you don't need to be angry you just need to build well, and as an individual, you obviously have your own, you know, choice of, you know, cho- choosing your values and morals that you want to stand behind. But like a lot of the, you know, successful people in like from Web2 and whatnot, I'd say don't have a common set of values that, you know, fucking either way. You get what I'm saying? Because like when it comes to like pushing marketing, all right, they're just willing to pay it off to fucking basically have someone else do it. And it completely detaches you from the customer. So, like, that mindset that's being brought in here, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, those people will eventually be pushed out. Like, that's not anything we got to worry about. But, yeah, reason will come to the table. I, I think there's as many people as there are like you as there are people that aren't like you. And I think the problem is we just all spread out. When it comes down to it, if we just kind of narrow the, the path a bit and, like, set trends, even the fake people will want to adopt it because they don't want to become obsolete. So it will just increase the amount of people who want to be like that, who want to do it like that. So if we just get a narrative started, like a way to actually do it, it'll be better. Like I said, a, a DAO for founders would be great. I might even consider that soon. Um, mm-hmm. you know, the thing is uh, just having a collective where people can like congregate and gather just to communicate and kind of move and shift. Like if I say I'm hosting a space, we need to blow this up. This is going to be a month. This is going to be a big project. This is what we want to do. And we're all like, not like a Ponzi scheme. We're just like a corporation. We're like, yeah, no, we're going to fucking do this. We're going to be there. We're going to like blow up the space. Suddenly you've got a thousand people in off the bat and others can't even compete. You just all showing up like <laughs> rock stars. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, that'd be cool. I would ask the one thing for Vanilla, at least go check out my pin tweet, see if that interests you, because I might have something, maybe, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but, nah, like, look, I've done been fucking, you know, building, you know, a couple larger communities with some other founders and whatnot, 
that are actually like decent. And then, you know, I have the other side of people that just, you know, maybe, you know, inexperienced with their lack of, you know, ability, but, um, like, bro, like we can make movements. I promise that. So what are your ideas for like a founder DAO? Like, is it something like, you know, the, we as founders hold a certain token, whether it be a, um, like an NFT or something that, that, uh, gives us votes in a, in a, Votable smart contract, like a DAO contract. I'd say yeah. Definitely. Then I can I can build those things. A, a free yeah, NFT, yeah. I think. A free yeah. NFT for founders, but it's not. Um, so it's not sold. It's airdrop to wallets, and it's given based on selection. Like if you see someone you feel is eligible, and you've had enough time with them, then another member can go inspect them, see what they're like, and then we add them. And we slowly incorporate members who are of value of substance to the community till it's only members who are actually valid, willing to participate, want to be there. It's not rushed. It's not trying to put it in there. You know, it's like building a wave. Like you're slowly building the boulder to like edge into the pond, you know? It's like everyone's like, oh, we can make ripples. Like, great. What if we make a fucking tsunami? It's, it's like if you build a little sandball and you move that sandball and you just keep moving and it's like wet mud, eventually you get like this hard rock, you leave it to dry, you know, you've gotten all your members, you're planning, you drop it in the pond, what are they going to do to stop a wave? They can only throw stones. What are uh, they going to do? You're right. Um, I see, oh, oh, sorry, I wanted to hop in. Yeah, uh, go for I it. See, yeah. Don't get me wrong, I like... I, I the problem I have with like you know connecting DAOs with like coins like that unless you're just making like voting processes just for like that coin type of stuff, it, it becomes very diluted, in the sense of how long can you retain an individual or is there someone gonna get a trick you know go start it and you know, that's what I was about to say it. like if people jump in the jump in this but, thing and they all get a token and then you know and then they go well I think I can do it better and then like another person goes I can go do it better and then like your your whole founder DAO like goes into like seven different directions and then it's like no right, one's there right, and your original no founder DAO because that. it's like in 10 different directions let me know what are your thoughts about that you can have an unlimited supply well, well, okay, yeah. so, so what, yeah. what does everyone think about this right. that makes sense what if it based supply. off of something like that what if it was based off of you know trading strategy you either have accumulators or you got fucking jeeps all right like don't get me wrong we still accept like everyone in the fucking community but at the same time clearly identifying those individuals so you know it's like you you know so you don't get these fucking promoters out here and shit like that they're gonna swap to a new fucking coin every fucking every other day type of shit like people that can actually learn well, to build together you see that's why you have like um a DAO and you have a token because you can excommunicate specific tokens you can literally like you know what we used to say was like really fucked up like when you own a token right and then someone goes and blacklists an image or something doesn't mean dodgy to it you as a DAO can have an application that basically votes whether or not you agree with a member's actions like if there's an action that's punishable you can have a DAO app and then collectively you can exile that person for acting out like that and acting in a very inappropriate way because it is a DAO it's a decentralized organization so again, having a token means you get to gatekeep who is actually the face of these uh, of this brand, who's actually leading it, and who's actually doing it, and why. And then you just have a trust a trustworthy founder. That's just what it is. I think that can be a thing. Yeah. I'm I like it and whatnot. I just the concept of if it's like you know it is decentralized and whatnot. However, it's distributed it is definitely a point of concept whether it's through somebody holding nft you know that i i just have the trouble of like connecting any government like governments to a style token to like lps or anything like that if it has that connectability i try to stay away from it in the sense of that i like another asset underlying to uh well like the nft style to try to you know one of one these individuals out a lot more well we'll put it this way if, if you have um, a president of an organization right he's just a figurehead right that doesn't matter and the thing is if you have a DAO, you can vote him off too the thing is he has to just take his grace and you make a legal contract to it that binds him to the project and his duties simple as that then he's bound by it and if he fucks up he has to leave he has to leave he has to pass an ownership to the next person he has to transfer ownership of the contract to the next person I mean, you can also do like burn from a dress where you just if they don't pass it they just you just burn their token and remit it to the good actor or something yeah but um it's not that yeah. Could be an NFT, could be a crypto. 
It would be very interesting to see, though. Well, I'm annoyed, and let's go fucking annoy others. I talk to. I mean, or we could just keep drawing up the spaces like these, or to, to each other's spaces, and uh, just yeah, and just support each other as human beings without all the contract work, and then we could keep building on our own projects. But um, I think like uh, isn't that kind of like what POAPs are for? About I don't really know what POAPs. I think it's just just proof of attendance shit. Never mind. You know what? I'll tell you what. Right. I'll do a I'll do a project right in three months. Uh, I'll make it on on the Chia network, right? Uh, each token is own, each one has their own contract, everyone's in control of their own contracts, and, and yeah, well, I'll, I'll make an NFT, and I'll just keep minting new collections so that I can hand them out as people show validation, right? Like, they can do it. I'll keep an off-hands approach so I'm not, like, governing it in, like, some sort of way. And then, yeah, we, we all just go to group discussions, we chat, and we figure out, and we move. And if you guys want to be part of it, you can be part of it. Like, I'm not going to act shit. I'm not going to be a powerhouse. You guys can quote me in my words. You can hold this against me if I ever do. And I'll, yeah, I'll shape up. But yeah, no, I'll stand up to it. And I don't want to be a part of this. I don't want to be a part of a community that's just suffering. You know, because of like some figureheads that are just sitting there and like sucking the liquidity out of the market. That's just all it comes down to. I think that also, I, I totally agree, but then we also got to look at how we can integrate in these, like, integrate this into, like, fluid mobile applications and whatnot to actually, you know, gain adoptability. That's long-term. That's not, not a short-term issue. You just get a thousand members, you already won the race. Yeah. Yeah. The same time. I don't know. Like, if you get a thousand members who are actually active and willing to participate and show, like, on the dime, they can be in the space, they'll just drop, you know, they'll say, like, hey, guys, got to go, sorry, next space starting, made a promise, got an obligation, they just show up. Well, boom, guess what happens? Suddenly, you guys are the hottest shit on the market. Right, you but then, remember, like, that target audience and whatnot would generally have, you know, would, would probably have some access to computers and whatnot if you're going to find some people that can, you know, stay active like that, meaning... You, you you see where the target I, I'm just looking at target market, you know, too. I I think target market is relevant when you're actually aiming this at specific individuals. Because the thing is you're trying to create a network of very strong, powerful individuals to help keep the space in check so that it doesn't go rampant. Like it's it's not so much uh everyone can join or everyone wants to govern as much as it is a shadow organization for the sake of the betterment of web three basically targeting narcissistic individuals and not like allowing them to grab hold. It's, it's maybe may, maybe a, a more of a, a place that we can bring people into a safe space into Web3 without like compromising them. You, you know what I mean? Bringing them, giving them to us how to build, making successes out of projects and actually doing things in the space. I mean, as a collective organization, if you're a shadow organization and essentially you make, I don't know, a thousand successful projects because you have a thousand successful leaders who are all in the space, and you're all congregating, listening to each other, and your points, complaints, and you're working together to build it, you show governance, and you show like a sense of democracy in, in what you're doing, people will really agree with that, I think. And then later, you can turn it into a fully-fledged DAO, where autonomously people can just join with their wallets and get tokens, you know what I mean? A gauge I mean, token voting system. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of like a certain aspect of, well, what i am doing with blue chip club like there is like through morales like dial contract that's prepped and ready um it's just there has to be enough like right now we're at like 36 percent holders and like you know look at the turnout rate to this space that has a blue chip club on it like none of the holders are here like even people in the discord like they're not here on space um and they need to be here and so um and, and so i i Discord, look, as much as I love Discord, it's great to go get fucking, you know, web links and whatnot and secure it like that for, like, you know, to clear directory. But, like, bro, Discord feels dead, bro. I mean, like, if it's dead, yeah. It, it's, like, the team when, like, it's for, like, gamers. Team. It's it's really, like, Discord for, like, gamers. Um, I, I think, like, growing, like, a 
like how like how you're working on a game vanilla and how i'm working on a game like i think if we just hang out as human beings over the years while we're working on our games and, and like you know then then like and some person over here jumps in the person over there jumps in and um that's probably like the the true difference of like how we can succeed at like something like um keeping a safe space or like retaining like market share of web of like web3 and participants um but just by like showing up to spaces like these and like when you're delivering your game you know i'm gonna throw that link over to my community and like when i deliver stuff like maybe you'll share it to your community and maybe there'll be like several other projects like grand goals up here and they'll share each other's links out and stuff like that over time um i think that's like the safest bet of how we can succeed uh long term in here but yeah yeah, yeah discord is pretty dead uh to be honest like even like crypto twitter is uh yeah, crypto twitter is not dead nft twitter is not dead um it's just heavily token gated um that's the that's the sad part and it's token gated like by the again like i'm just circling back around like repeating myself at this point it's token gated t- token gated by the people that you went up to space for and they just basically like yeah like you said like use you as a sacrificial lamb for their entertainment can i ask y'all a question yeah oh yeah of course anytime oh, I, I i like what y'all are saying i want to throw a idea and see if it sticks y'all tell me if i think i'm wasting my time but when i was over at TikTok, uh i take trash i take a piece of paper a piece of material and i turn it into a work of art i make my own alcohol ink don't buy nothing except just the board i put it on but anyway i take pride in what i do there well now i'm 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 wanting to expand and the first place I want to start, Times gave me a Discord as server thing, and I don't. What I'm gonna do is I want to have the first Nino gift shop. I'm gonna get stuff, and if you can pay me in crypto, you can pay me in money on PayPal, whatever. I'm putting all my videos over there. You can go hang out my server when bullshit. I'm going to hang out there all day. But I can bring all. I can bring YouTube. I can bring TikTok. I can bring Instagram and Facebook. Tell my people if they want to see me. I got a place where I'm sitting there shooting the shit, having a good time. But then also, it'll make me a little money now because what I'm doing with time and, and Web3 and NFTs, uh, that's for all mankind, but that's for generational wealth. But I live on disability. Do y'all think that'd be a good idea? I'd make my Judy Bell stuff and that would liven up the Discord. I didn't know it's there, but I'm good at that. I can bring it back to life. <laughs> I mean, there there are ways. Yeah, there's tools. Um, I think directly through Discord, but also like bots, certain bots. I don't know of the bots, but I know Discord itself has, um, you know, a way to monetize by um, doing Discord subscriptions. Like, um, and you can sell like digital's. So you can sell like digital art um, just as a download. So if someone buys a digital art through your Discord, and they can download it. What I'm thinking is physical. Oh, maybe. Right, so maybe if someone verifies that they you bought that digital, you can mail it to them. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, you're in a space all night, drinking, shooting the shit, you know, and your wife's like, oh, you never spend no time with me. Well, you could come to my little shop and, and buy her something real pretty, a picture, or all the stuff I make, and then I'd mail it to her, and then she'd be all happy. Oh, baby, you bought me something while you was hanging out in that NFT. Like, it's all about me. But the reason I'm here is because Scarf said I could take that art and build my grandkids, uh, my generations for you, generations to come, an empire. So I finally decided that, and then, hey, I'm going to take, they wanted me to take them and teach them my talk. I didn't know I had old folk talk. It's World War One. Back then, they didn't grow you up to get a reputation. They grow you up to have a character to stand for something. 
It's right, right, wrong, wrong. So I'm here, and I want all of Twitter and X, whatever it is now, I want to show that they can be in the history book. This is where it's all starting the digital. You're going to a flying car, hell, give me one. But I want to prove to the world that you, this is my stand, that you don't have to be book smart. You don't have to be tech savvy. But as long as you got a good heart, God in your heart or whoever you pray to, and a fire in your soul, they can't stop you. Judy? Two words. Two words. I appreciate your words like that. Most definitely. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. If you're having fun with it, then that's what matters most. I really think if you you love something, you should you should go for it. If if it's something that you want to do, and you feel you can monetize it through crypto as a means of payment, I don't think exclude uh, fiscal payment like money, like real world money or cash. But I, I am saying that it is definitely a more accessible means of making online sales in the crypto market if that's what you'd like to do there are plenty of people that who and individuals who accept crypto for payment in irl so go for it if you like well, it you like this, it well this is just something to bring in a little extra money because i live on 800 a month but my project is all of y'all y'all win y'all succeed then i've done my job because I feel like this ain't my project, I mean my journey, but I'm the mouthpiece. But we're going to be in the history book because Web3 and we teach the young, the young's going to go, they're going to break the old cycles, they're going to break, you, you learn what you see. And if we put that example in there to them and they like what they see and they learn it, they want more of it, then everybody wins. And it ain't money. We're talking about all mankind working together like they are right here at Twitter to make a better world. We're making a better ozone. We're teaching the net. That's what it is. We're teaching people one by one. And we don't have to teach them, but if they see it, they grasp to it, then they'll want to do it. And I think in the end, we'll all be winners because it's turning into a movement. Love, positivity, we don't really need presidents and government. If we, the people, stick together as one and take the country in crypto, I think that I believe in what y'all are doing. I don't understand it, but I understand that it needs a little old soul. And you take a little bit of the old and you put what y'all are doing, there ain't no stopping it. It will, you you just don't know. There won't be no stopping it. It's yeah. going to be awesome. I do, I do agree about one thing. Um, it's about momentum. You know, we, you know a, lot, a lot of us hear things and it slips our minds and carry on. But we don't like to revisit topics because, you know, that takes effort. Um, unfortunately, the newer generation, we're not that keen on effort a lot of the time. It, it's just an unfortunate truth, short attention spans, byproduct of such. But I do feel like there needs to be a um, more more focus. There needs to be more dedication towards projects and uh, representing them, even if you're not buying into them, showing up for the camaraderie building the space opportunity for others to see it and uh, give them a chance even if you aren't willing to the the thing is when we're when we're collectively a space we, we kind of have a duty to congregate even if it's not like consolidating or becoming like one unit because obviously that's not the point of crypto but like again crypto's only job is to decentralize assets not people it's meant to bring people closer together it's meant to be a tool to actually let people peer-to-peer so when it comes down to it, a bunch of peers working together for the benefit of the space is just ultimately good. Because even in a bear market, you can create a pocket ecosystem that is thriving. It just depends on what you're willing to put in, what you're willing to bring together. So when it comes down to it, I think that even in a bear market turning into a bull market soon, now is the best time. You know, like We need builders to like congregate. We need people to get together. I mean, this is a small space. I reckon you should share it with your friends. 
well when they're when it's done when it's recorded because a lot of talks that i had here that may be very worthwhile to give maybe give some people ideas great they should capitalize on them i mean people should go forward and say like hey let's make a founders DAO. hey let's let's go do this let's let's go make organizations that we can validate that we can authenticate let's, let's make a trustless system where we have trust you know like just as a byproduct let's, let's make a system where we can get together where we have loyalty let's vet the people we bring in let's check them you know like let, let's see that this person is legit like I, I agree that like we shouldn't discriminate right but there are cases where discrimination is necessary like we need to discriminate what is a what is a good representative what isn't you know not everyone can lead not everyone can entertain not everyone can do this like yes people can learn to but until they learn to that doesn't mean they're capable to fulfill that role we need people to get together with purpose we need that purpose to drive the community we need the community to work together you know if if you can convince one person of your project great but if a thousand people can convince a thousand people of your project it's even better that that starts a spark yeah you, you get where i'm coming from we need to congregate having a, a massive space would just be incredible so we need to get people together we need to get people to active i don't care if they're like a bunch of discord space who are just doing that on a casual day and that's what they do you know they I don't care like if you can commit you can commit if you can put in your effort that way you can commit it's about coming together you know the people that can give their time give it you know because you'll get it back uh, people aren't going to forget the kindness you do for them they'll include you especially if you're the reason they succeed you know the thing is you push up one person they pull you up he pushes you up you pull him up a lot of the, what, what's happened is um, we, we're taking these steps in life and now we'll push someone up a step and then we, we reach out our hand and they just slap it away and laugh and then they realize they can't get up to the next step so they pull you up temporarily just to shove you down so they can get up the next step that that's what they're doing the whole time and they need more and more people every time to do it whereas if you were actually a successful project you your your brand itself would speak for you you know you would be able to create these projects and everyone would just jump in because they'd be like oh it's apple you know like oh it's uh, it's this these these guys never fail I mean, after you looked up, look, look at like the Yuga Labs things where gas went completely through the roof um, with the um, other side means money's there. It's not gone. It's just they have corporations. They have like this, this, this background, this backing that, that put, that's what needs to be done. We need to create our own backing. We don't have the back end. We have the front end. We're trying to sell the front end, but with no back end. So if we build the back end, we won't ever have to worry about a market because we'll have enthusiasts. We'll have people who value what we have. We'll have people who value the objective goal because they know in the end they profit because you make something that is successful that actually generates income, that actually fuels the space. And I think that's what needs to be done. I've seen, um, I've seen a lot of uh, projects and this, I, I, f I find this interesting that uh, I'm building a game that I've invested into. Uh, what one is um, like a like a kind of like a battle royale, like a TDM team deathmatch mode type map uh, called the Mosh Pit from Collider Craftworks, and we minted their NFTs at 0.5 ETH, right? Um, now like their floor is like 0.04 ETH, um, and they raised two million dollars. But what I notice is like um, as a gamer, the thing that's frustrating for me is I've collected a lot of their gear. And now that, and I've stuck with them from the beginning and I minted, uh, I bought, I bought some more ciphers now that then they rolled out their visual wallet, then they rolled out their, you know, I can pair the gear off and on and from their other gear contract. And then they, uh, they, they rolled out the mosh pit, you know, we can play in the game. So, you know, we can play in the mosh pit map and they're working on, um, you know, a multiplayer mode now it's in the Epic game store as well now. And I actually gave them an idea. I said, well, hey, like, why don't you go put it in Epic Game Store? Go reach out to someone like Epic to uh, get it in because they have Gala Grit and stuff that going in there that are NFT-based games. And they said, yeah, actually, you know, we have, we have some funding uh, from Epic, uh, sponsorship funding, because they, they built the skins for Mortal Kombat 3 and stuff. Uh, I think they're out of, out of Argentina. But so they're still building what they're building. But what I find my point is what I find interesting is that um, I've, I've bought 
their gear, but some gear you just can't get your hands on it um, because DAOs themselves, like Journey, I mean, you know, kind of speaking of Journey, has actually like uh, from the early times like bought or like minted a, a chunk of ciphers and just like just like basically just like threw them in a wallet and set it, forget it. And they got all the gear drops, um, but then like they're not doing anything with the gear. There's no way to buy the gear from them. And so a lot of the gear us gamers want to collect, we can't even collect because they're in the hands of like a centralized uh, DAO that's not even selling it. And it actually even like kind of like had people in their community like tank, tank the floor um, down way past down the mint because it didn't it didn't hold up above 0.5 ETH, and so a lot of people who participated they were minting because they want to make the they want to make profits off the mint not because they want to play the game or even care about the project at all that's what i find interesting a lot uh, out of a lot of projects um that to say to a lot of projects launching is to kind of look out for like you know um that what's what what does the team have resource wise to build uh what do they need resource wise to build and and what's almost like what's their what's their mint cost because i see a lot of other like gaming studios releasing mints for free uh because they want to stay away from that nostalgia because i tell you what like cypher got kind of like a bad rap like no one really shows up there in the discord i mean pe we kind of do here and there but um it doesn't mean that they're not successful it doesn't mean that they're not still succeeding it just means that they got kind of like a bad rap that they raised $2 million, uh, their mint was expensive, and that the people who like kept selling down the mint um, to a 0.04 ETH, people are like, why is it not like a basey, you know? And so I think that's what like people are buying an NFT, like they they think like they're buying an NFT to have it become a basey. Um, and when it doesn't become a basey, they're like, that's a that's a scam or they're a rug pull or, or anything. When actually the team is still building, um, and they're utilizing that two million dollars on a on a studio and a team that costs like a million, you know, a business quarter just to operate. And anyways, um, can I just like touch on those real quick? It's actually just something I found really funny. Um, when you actually look at a, a project, right, and they're building and they're becoming something, why would you want them to be a base? Like, like I, I get that. Like, you want to sell it, you want to flip it. That's great, but why are you investing in something you assume will become a valuable asset and that's the only reason you're doing it like you should say that the project well, has value yeah and, and that's like, i get it like that that's get what, where you're coming from but like the well, asset shouldn't have value the project should have value and how right you integrate right and that's and that's like, why i think that's what needs to i think that is being making certain i think there are certain games being built and like people like us who are building like to to be like, all right, if I'm going to put a mint out there, like, I don't know, like 0 0.0088 ETH, and then, you know, you're a character, you can jump in there, and, you know, if you look at, if you look at Fortnite, you know, to buy my, buy my uh, kids a skin in Fortnite is going to be like, you know, $2, you know, up to $14, maybe $20 at most um, to collect something, even though it's not on chain or anything. Uh, if they, if they, if our, if something, you know, uh, gets spilt on the Xbox, well, I mean, that's, that's, you know, you can, you know, log into your account somewhere else, but if, if, uh, you know, so that all's not lost, but those are central servers that are cloud-based. Uh, they're not on chain, you know, even, yeah, so it's like, that's another thing to solve is like, does, does the NFT have to really matter or is it just another form of innovation in a, in a sort of like digital renaissance that we're in, um, okay. that, My perspective that, on that, yeah, like basically, I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, I guess it's sh it, it, i think people like us and games that are coming in here to build um are helping change the aspect of like everything has to be a, a basey where you where you go play you know uh swimming up you know flying around a monkey's butthole for a key like because you have a because you have a three hundred thousand dollar nft um i think that's changing and it's changing for the better i don't want people to like look at me and then just go say like why isn't this uh, a basey? I want people to say, why isn't it goosey a basey? Like, why, why aren't basies goosies? Like, <laughs> like that, that's what I want. Like, when when you look at this sort of stuff, guys, like, you have to take this into consideration. You don't want to be the brand. You want to be better than the brand. It's not like you want to hate the brand. You want to compete with it. 
and what I mean with that is that you shouldn't try to compare projects. Like they're not the same. They they find their value, their liquidity in different ways. Some in what they give out, some in the long term. Like Basie is a brand. You have to understand they've had a three year leap to establish themselves. They have connections. They've made me media marketing. They had the first come first serve privilege. They're they're all old guys in the space. Not irrelevant, but they're just powerhouses, right? And that just is what it is. And the thing is. That's there's nothing wrong with that. There's good people, you know, like clubs are made up of different groups and they've reached a point where they're above. That's just what it is. How do you achieve that? You work towards it, you stay with it. Remember, a blue chip project does not exist yet. There's no 10 year project yet. There's no project with millions of stock. I mean, most of Basie's price was pretty much just inflated uh, egotism. It was marketing. It's just like, hey, this is us. We've been here. We've been there. We've been that. We're valuable for those. Look at celebrity holds us. A celebrity holds that. What happens if Eminem picks up a Guzzi? Oh, boom! Price goes up. It's 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 fickle. It's inf it's inflated. You you you're waiting for an opportunistic and unrealistic goal. If I have a sustainable project that that basically has value based on its community, like a community member was willing to pay five hundred thousand for a piece because of the functionality it brings to whatever I've made or the unique opportunity it provides, I'd say that's arguably better. Because now it's not only because a celebrity owns it, it's because that thing does this and everyone loves that thing and wants that thing. So make something that's desirable to everyone that can get gotten a value, not as desirable because someone who they can never be attains something. Don't wait on an overinflated project to like hope that it's going to become this this crazy thing. Like, you, you need to think reasonably, you need to think realistically. Games hold traction, they hold communities. Look at World of Warcraft, right? How old is that right now? Yeah, right. World of Warcraft. They can sell their items. Going like what, what, two decades like or something? Options? Um, you, can, you, you know, it's not... Um, I stopped playing World of Warcraft many years ago. But, I mean, there was an aspect where the, the, the currency used... To, to buy stuff and like items or whatever in world of warcraft was being sold outside of world of warcraft i mean the the blizzard whatever world of warcraft uh heavily frowned upon that but it doesn't mean that it wasn't still being done um so people made a lot of money off of doing that stuff you know <laughs> um you know selling that kind of stuff and or just selling accounts you know they would just grind rank up account and sell their account to someone um, that's still being done so i think it's kind of like the same like nfts are that it's just kind of rolled up into like you know into a into the blockchain i guess yeah like an encouraged uh, an encouraged legis legis legislative version of it like one that's like okay cool we like you trading our shit do it right you know, like trade the items amongst each other we're not trying to create a closed ecosystem but then you yeah, get but I that think... that's what i was sharing earlier like journey club they hold a lot of these assets from uh Clyder craftworks and it's like they won't sell them like they're not doing it like it's like what are they waiting for they're waiting for something to like, like the helmet that i'm trying to buy from them that i've been trying to buy that's sitting in their wall doing absolutely nothing they want to sell for like over a thousand dollars someday because they you know it's like it's like that helmet i you know it's, and it, it's going to be sold to someone who's like probably like a whale with a bunch of eth because then they're going to go sell it for like you know two thousand dollars and then the person who actually wants to like have it as a skin just to collect it to use it in the game because that's what they love to do isn't going to be able to access it and i think that's a a problem that's going to need to be solved in nfts that i'm actually here to kind of do as well as to like build yes yeah, to build many cheap units and like roll out just a lot of cheap gear that people can use i mean let's, let's face it you're yeah a game, you're a game developer right you create incentive reason to play people have to play to earn it once they've earned it they can mint it so that means you've got to do the extra work to get to it so these things come out in limited things you create a bidding market people go for it they start draining the pool of liquidity. You use li the liquidity against them. Once all these rare items are gone and like everyone's like spent their money and they're like really pissed, you give the little guys a shot within the secondary release out of the bat. This is the simple you... thing. There's many ways to screw over people. Like yeah. you want to do things, like right. that, you just get it right back up and well, you drain their wallets and use it to help give back to others. You my... can maybe do a giveaway at that point for your smaller community in the bids with maybe similar or same items and similar functionality. I, th I feel screwed over by uh, Call of Duty Warzone because they launched Warzone 2.0. Literally, like none of our skins from uh, the OG Warzone map um, is porting over to Warzone 2.0. And the thing is, like no one's playing, no one's playing Warzone. Like I sat there for like an hour trying to match in the Warzone map, 
and everyone's on Warzone 2.0, and uh, the money I spent on skins, uh, I, they're like stuck in Warzone in Warzone 1.0. So I mean, that's that to me is a cash grab. Uh, that to me is another thing to fix in gaming, which NFTs can fix. Uh, which is another reason why it's like you know why I would show up here to build uh, in Web3 a game in Web3 that's battle royale basis because it it's to stick it to the, and I'm not saying like you know I want to go shit talk wars war, uh, Call of Duty and with the revenge plan it, well I mean but the thing is like <laughs> I I love playing Warzone so it's like I want to build I almost like I don't want to shit on Warzone I'll never shit talk to them publicly um, I'll never say like you know that they, you know they did me wrong or anything like that but a lot of people thought they did do them wrong at the end of the day like i don't care about the skins I, i'm there to play the game but i did love have fun collecting the skins you know the ghost and and the different um you know rifles and stuff and attachments that you know i collected over there it was fun it was money spent on it as for the game experience but but you want to be able to port those over to warzone 2.0 and they they're blizzard i mean uh Call of Duty is kind of like, no, nah, we want you to buy the new skins. We want we, we want fresh money to come in and stuff like that. So buy new skins and like, you know, maybe some people will play on the or just sit there like a nostalgic piece. That to me is something I think that we as people building with that NFTs, that's a point for NFTs is to solve that. Like, you know, your market share um, doesn't have to be from uh, 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 having to sell new units in a whole new map and a 2.0. Your, you, your market share is from your royalties on the floor that's connected to the blockchain that's on NFT marketplace. So I think that's something like, you know, whether Call of Duty's Warzone or like Fortnite and stuff like that. Um, you know, Fortnite just, just has like, like one map, but like, like real quick. yeah. So assets are like a very unique case. People don't realize this, right? So when you look at assets, Generally speaking, you're going to start off with a small pool of assets, especially if you're in the, the crypto market. If you can create a way to create a growing market of assets, so something that just incrementally grows, you're more than likely going to create an economy where items garner value based on use. And if people don't see things enough, it's not really going to matter. Like if a guy's holding like this one crazy item, like it's like some sort of legendary thing and he's just DAO wallet or whatever, and he's trying to like, act cool and say hey guys look what i got ha, ha, but he never uses it right you know he never really contributes to the community do you think they're going to give a shit about that item or they're going to forget it because the next one came out the next week and do you think he's eventually going to get pissed because he's collecting all these legendary items no one's paying attention to him well let me he even play the game. Well, uh... so then the, uh, the items lose their value eventually he's going to start collecting them because he can't actually make a sale on them because he's over expecting their value he's paying those absurd amount and he's getting penalized for it it'll just get weeded out the market by the market itself. Right. Yeah. Um, have you heard of Parallel TCG? Uh, TCG, isn't that a trading card game? Yeah, there's a game called Parallel. I'm in, I'm in their beta, so like I'm in their private beta. So I was streaming and stuff, but a lot of their NFT cards, like I found them like a year and a half ago. So I started collecting their cards. I was like, oh, these are cool. Like, yeah, I'll get some of these to expect because I was playing something else called Skyweaver and I had already um, been in on uh, Gods on Chain, like from from number of years ago uh i never i never like you know gung-ho got into gods unchained uh, as a tcg i was more into like pokemon tcg or something like magic the gathering like physical cards but when uh parallel tcg came out they had their avatars so it's like they had their avatars they're building like an ai game called uh, parallel colony that you train your your avatar or whatever um, and it does algorithmic things that from AI model training and then it collects gear and you can sell that gear off uh, or something like that, whatever, over time. They haven't launched the parallel colony yet, but just like you were saying, like there's there's one guy, I'm not going to say his name, you know, good guy and everything, you know, just a lawyer or something like that or whatever. Uh, some finance person just spends his money for fun on, on like made, made a bunch of money off of like Doge or something. I don't know, something like that. Um, but he, but so he... <laughs> The avatars are like you know i was like gonna i was gonna get one at like 0.1 eth right and then uh so i'm like you know working my day job and stuff and then i i'm playing the game and the beta and i've got i've got some cards and i'm building out my deck and cards you can earn cards in game you don't have to have the nft cards um you can play the game passively you got free decks but then you can earn but if you want some rare cards you know you can buy one off open sea and you have more uphand in the game over someone else playing in ranks 
but and then if you have the avatar you earn prime their crypto so each prime is like six dollars a prime so i mean people are making money off this right so i think i have like you know if i win a couple games you know maybe i've gotten like you know uh, uh maybe like 20 or 30 dollars or something especially for winning streaks but if you have the avatar paired to your account you earn 30 percent more prime so this guy he goes, well, you know, everyone's going to want an avatar. So what did he do? He went and swept the, like him and other people like him, went and swept the floor up to 0.8 ETH. And then someone like myself, who's just like, I just want to uh, have, av have the avatar to play the game, you know, earn some prime. Um, but then now it's 0.8 ETH. Now I'm not going to buy one <laughs> um, because these guys have the market share in it. And they know why they have the market share in it because other people who are ETH, uh, you know, our ETH, uh, you know, rich and whatever like that, or some person who does want to save up and buy the avatar, you know, to play it, they're going to go do that and they're going to buy the NFTs from them. But someone like myself and like a million other people who are going to play a TCG aren't going to touch the game anymore um, other than just to play it for free. So I think there is this market share that's always going to be there is my point that these, these MFers, they're always going to buy these things. They're always going to make a bunch of goo uh, guru money off of it in the coming future uh selling their shares down and but that but they're, that's just it it's like they're gonna um i don't know either these nfts are gonna keep going up in value or people are gonna get you know bored with the game and then they're gonna keep tanking these guys are gonna get locked in and they're gonna be selling at a loss which is gonna write off on their taxes because they're millionaires anyway so they want a tax write off on their monies that they're making yeah, so, I'm gonna so. Dick, right? what's uh, up i think i'm gonna try I'm gonna try to figure out how to make a contract right that just has an infinite amount of tokens. Well, that's just uh, it. As I think it sh those those sort of NFTs really to to really retain like a a million user. Yeah, to get like a million users, you're gonna need a contract that's NFT based that has like infinite like you know supply or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's literally just gonna be there for the sake so that people can't dominate the market. Basically, I think I'm gonna release a coin right uh, with my game. I think I'm going to release a coin that you mine by getting kill counts in, in the game. So for, for every kill, you, you mine like a certain amount of coins. And then basically it'll track that. And then it'll relay the information. But basically so that people can't afford the ability to mine, then it'll be an infinite contract. You, you see what I'm saying? So it's just like a gate pass. So that people can't just go upsell to the market and try gatekeep who can get in and who can mine and try sell between their buddies. <laughs> Uh, you, you get what I mean? But yeah. Basically, just make like a competitive environment where the more you competitively play, the, the better you are, the better you mine, the more resources you can gather, the more you can reap from the actual game. Well, that's what's up. Yeah, there's, um, you know, it, and I won't, I'll say like, you know, it was a bit upsetting. Like when I was like, man, back back in, I was going to go scoop one up, you know, like point ETH and now, oh, point eight ETH, like, you know, buy an avatar for fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars to, earn prime it's like how much how much do i have to play just to earn that money back so it's like why so it's like why are so it's it's like it's kind of like lost the grasp of like i feel like the game founders and like the game itself has lost the grasp of it actually succeeding what it needs to succeed is people are gonna er, play to earn and they're gonna need the avatar to to earn the prime so it's almost like you, you might as well just throw it out the window because no one's going to buy the avatar. The guys who bought up the floor are going to have to wind up tanking back down the floor, sell it off as a tax write-off, like I said, if that's their incentive or something, or they speculate and it's going to go up to 5 ETH and they'll, sell, they'll start selling and making their money on the way back up and then before it goes back down. But the game itself has lost the grasp like it's it's like a failure on the game i feel like it's not failing as a game and player base but it's failing to like it doesn't make sense anymore like the model the model makes no sense like it's like you're saying like you might as well have because their supply is fixed at like uh fifteen thousand or, or ten thousand nft avatars so it's like it's like you're saying like you have to have an infinite open source contract and that's why i started building like you know proof of yeet because it, the contract source of the nfts the characters it's an infinite source it's called it's actually called you know what that's called open edition right you've heard of open edition no no i haven't heard of open edition yet. okay so open it so open edition mints are just like passively like not capped like you can just you know mint another one mint another one mint another one 
and um and that's why I built this certain model with a that's on OpenSea. You know, you can you can look up proof of eat Genesis. You know, the first POYG is there, but it's could it could be like infinite amount uh, of uh, you know, and that's a, that's an open source contract, so anyone can go and be like, oh yeah, like you know, we'll scrape Keck's contract over here and um, you know that that um, you know, good luck finding that re repository anywhere else. But if you go scrape the contract off of you know BNB Smart Chain. You can be doing the same thing with your own game, and I think that can that kind of model of contract, like I've put out there, is is how to succeed, like market share of players. You know, finding a million user base player, um, in a in a royale game, but keeping those keeping those units like just passively earned for free, and that's why if you that's why like I made like uh, a two point one quadrillion supply of what's called Yatoshi. Because I'm parroting Bitcoin, because there's 2.1 quadrillion satoshis in Bitcoin, uh, a max satoshis amount in all of 21 million Bitcoin, um, and the lowest denominational amount of each satoshi. So I made Yitoshi and uh, 2.1 quadrillion. So basically, like, when people are mining Yitoshi, when they mine a certain amount, they get the character. Uh, the character is going to be used in the game, and um, and that also I made that because if a lot of if game studios are like game devs they want to build a game but they don't want to have to have their own token to manage like oh the value of my tokens like taken oh like everyone's like shitting on me because of the to because other people bought it just for the value and the value is like you know gone to zero and everyone's like shitting on me and no one and everyone walked out of my community because it um and even though i didn't do anything at all it was just the cash grabbers you know and the and the people and the whales coming in and then making their returns and then selling it back down the floor and a bunch of other people are locked in but they don't but those people who got locked in they don't care about the game because they're not gamers so that to me is like another reason why i was like oh i'll put yutoshi with a 2.1 quadrillion supply which is a massive absurd amount of supply because that's just it it's a large supply that a, a independent gamer or a, a builder um even like yourself like you can build your game you're like, oh, maybe I should have a token. Um, but it's like, you could cross chain your game over from like Chia to like BNB or something like, and you utilize like, you know, something like Yatoshi in your game that has a, that's like the, the token itself. Like any studio can use it. Any independent builder can use these tokens, like scoops them up, build it into their game. And then there's a whole passive ecosystem of like, you know, just like Yutoshi token this is a utilizing a bunch of different games. Just so like each independent studio doesn't have to manage their, token and liquidity pool and, and stuff like that. But um, what's up, buddy? Yeah, go, go. Um, yeah, I can, I'll switch out the HDMI cable in a little. Um, give me a few moments. I'll switch out. After this match, I'll switch out the HDMI cable. My daughter wants to play this unboxing game. She literally just like, it's like a pixel game. She just like takes stuff out of a box, folds it up and puts it on different shelves and like rooms. It's a cute game. It's a cute, fun game. I agree with you, man. Like, I feel like when we when we can give people like just access and it's like an opportunity based thing, I think that really makes it more attractive. Like commercially, just more attractive, more viable. Especially when it's like an effort based way of mining. You know what I mean? Like you're making the token mineable, but like through action. I think that that's a really cool concept. Quinn Anderson, thanks for the follow on Twitch. Yeah, hello, man. How's it going? Yeah, you're right. I think it's a bit harder though because like one thing that we have to verify is like anti-cheat. Anti-cheat needs to be like of utmost priority because uh, if people cheat, they essentially can like farm tokens like very unfairly in some situations. So you have to figure out how to like manage it under a very specific way so people don't exploit it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... One second. Quinn Anderson, hello. Yeah, I appreciate the follow. Thanks for following, mate. Let me know if you play PUBG or, or if you're just chilling. Um, but yeah, jump, jump in the chat. Hope your day is going well over on the Twitch side. Um, yeah, I mean, like, you can look at it. You can go over to uh, yitoshi.com and the, the the mining engine's right there. The contract's right there. It's it's like, I think, like, I don't know. I, I'm basically, like, the one who's mined the most of it just because I mined it out to, to set up the... Uh, the bridge LPs so people can, you know, list their, if they list their uh, blue chip, if they have a standard blue chip, one of the 800 blue chips, and they list it at 0 0.0088 ETH, um, they're earning 888 uh, Yitoshi per day. Um, and if they want to, you know, 
if they want to um, uh, swap their Yutoshi into Yeecoin, and then every time they uh, swap their Yutoshi into Yeecoin, and if they sell their, they can sell their Yeecoin into BNB on the pairing, or they can just hodl it. Um, and you know, for future plans of brand IP and like you know things I have in the in the works that I'm kind of going to start talking about in 2024, really. But um, how, how does bridging work exactly? So I created like a because you were just saying that like people farming a token to manipulate it and abuse it. So I created a so I wanted a like anti whale like that kind of shit like um. So basically, um, I created a bridge contract called Proof of. Oh, sh fucking person's firing at me. Uh, just got to zigzag like a zebra. Um, got that in the field. Um, so basically, like, I created. Where am I getting shot from? Hold on a second. I'm getting shot. I created a contract called. Uh, okay, I just got it. I was getting shot from like several different directions. Um, I created a contract called uh, the Proof of Yeet. So that's like, that's like the bridge contract where um, it's like the bonding bridge where there is when people swap their Yutoshi into uh, Poi, Proof of Yeet, and then they swap their uh, Proof of Yeet into... Oh, here. Yeah, I found that. Um, is there? Um... So I found, um, found uh, that the uh, a lot of tokens being farmed and stuff could be manipulated. So instead of instead of uh, taking um, people the bridge right from Yutoshi into Yeecoin, they swap Yutoshi into Proof of Yeet and when they swap it, some of the proof of yeet burns down in that LP. So there's like one proof of yeet with like, I don't know, like about like a billion or so Yatoshis paired to it because I mined those out myself. And then just to set up the LP. And then um, then they take their boy, which has a, a, a liquidity pairing to um, yeet coin, and they can swap it into the yeet coin. And if they, if they want to... Uh, you know, sell it off into BNB just from the free model. They can sell it off into BNB because some people are earning it for free. Some people are just speculating. They just want to mine Yutoshi. So they're uh, mining Yutoshi and all the BNB that's used to mine Yutoshi because BNB is the energy source to mine it uh, from the contract. It ports over into the Yeet coin to BNB LP. Um, so it all rests on that LP right there. Um, and that's kind of how I built that anti-whale mechanism. So once one poi burns down, because there's, there's a 21 million supply of poi, so one pairs, and once the 21 million supply burns down, like a new poi contract will launch, for example, and then a new LP with Yutoshi paired to a new poi LP will, will uh, you know, um, be unlocked. Maybe this is kind of confusing at that point, but mainly it's just the kind of people who are heavy into tokens into that token model will understand people who are just looking to get a character to play a game they'll they'll either like just go scoop one up off a of marketplace um like OpenSea has bnb chain on there so they can see the proof of e genesis characters on there um or someone will go mine yatoshi to earn one of the characters and then they'll just you know um speculate on the token too if they have a little understanding of tokens and that will grow the collection so the collection will just kind of and i haven't talked about this because it's not 2024 yet so i just like it's all there built it's just I don't, i'm not talking about it yet um but what i'm doing is yeah so i'm just not talking about it because it's not it's just the grasp of um you know retaining people's attention if i were to go onto a space to talk about it it's, it's just like a waste of my time um, so right now, again, like I'm just working on the 20 K collection art characters. I'm working on the 888, uh, characters for the reveal of, of, uh, blue chip club Genesis, uh, pieces here. And I'm just kind of sticking to that 2024. I have like outlined when I'll start talking with people on spaces about proof of yeet Genesis. Um, and largely it's like, what, what did I invest into? All right. I invested into like hundreds of brushes manga anime brushes uh, because that's my that's what i know how to draw but i draw it digitally now um so now i 
invested myself into like things like that like utility tool like to um spend the money there and for my day job and just keep building and building out those characters so that's what i kind of like vested my self into and that's like my work now um but it's like you're saying like have an infinite amount of model um so like yeah like what you're building on chia network i'd say yeah like have is have it because even the game itself needs a base model that's always free and it has nothing to do with nfts has nothing to do with web3 um anyone in the world can play it without having to have the avatar but also people who are savvy and as i believe like over time people will here let me change out the i'm cable people who like we're just so early right now like web3 and nfts even though i've been here for like eight years i helped the tron blockchain start uh the tron trx cryptocurrency i don't know if you've heard of that but at all no no i haven't heard of that one yet um yeah that's I a the sentiment where you're coming from yeah so like i helped a blockchain start back in 2018 and like i remember looking at crypto punks when they were 0 0.04 eth and stuff and i've been here the whole time and i i just went back over into eth recently to be an eth max i helped on this uh project milm um yeah i gotta plug the new hdmi cable in um, I helped that. I I did the dev works on that, and then the artist is still like kind of like writing out the narrative, of the story. But I'll help on the artworks and kind of rolling out the artworks, um, so that that founder, you know, she I think she jumped into here and like realized like just like that, like everybody just wanted to make money off an NFT. If your if your NFT is not going to go to the moon, then you know we're just going to fade your project. So I think she went back to like living her life and doing like the natural flow of life and not, and um stress free of like this whole like what an NFT has to be and like <laughs> like value wise and stuff like that. Um to actually like, you know, just just write write your lore and and then Blue Chip Club will acquire it under its wing and keep rolling it forward and if you got some shit to say you can talk it to to me you can talk it to the community blue chip club um because you're not going to really say much uh so especially to like a woman in web3 who uh um you know any from any like toxic masculinity uh bullshit in space you know I, that's what i'm here for i'm here to like provide safe experiences um so like what you're saying is like right like um i'm not one for like cross chaining too much but I, you know, I do believe like cross chaining can benefit to a certain extent. Um, so what you're building, I'm definitely interested into it. I'm interested to play. I'm interested to share it with community, and I'm interested to help it grow long term. Um, so I'll be, you know, you keep showing up, you keep building upon it. And I'm interested in the Chia. I've had, I've heard of the Chia network like left and right. I just have not jumped in. I've not. Uh, I don't know what they're model is i don't know what their chain's about i don't even is it i don't know if it's like a layer two to eth or if it's a cross compatible like kind of proof of stake model or something or if it's own its own smart contract or programming language you can mine it yeah it's 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 own blockchain everything's good with it they're opening up a gateway pretty soon like most tokens are individual which means their contracts aren't tied to like um your your, uh, your tokens are tied to like single contracts so every nft is like got its own contract everything's very individual you own your tokens they mind but it's it's very good i want to launch on it uh, i don't have time to like really go into it because like i haven't done enough research on it yet holy but i'm pretty sold on it what i've seen what i've like done so far on it so yeah no, i was considering heat but i kind of like stepped back after i heard some of the things I'm not like the expert on it, you know what I mean? What'd you what you hear about ETH? Because I'm primarily like core to building an ETH and core to uh building in BNB smart chain. I heard about and somewhat in Bitcoin uh inscriptions. Actually, well, I was trying... uh, Sorry, go ahead. I think what's unique about this is that it's it's like its own thing right like if you look at chia like they have their own marketplaces they have their own everything it's, it's it's not swamped with a lot of projects which means you have like that that early flare you have a lot of things that are going for you there so like i'm, I'm pretty much going to be launching on there because one it, there's benefits to launching on it there's not much competition in that ecosystem it's a uh, closed community right now. In other words, like there's not many gateways to like liquidate uh, cash. So all they're doing is like circle jerking money around on NFTs and other things, which is kind of good, you know, like in a way it's, it's, there's not many exit pools. It's great for building fresh starts. If you get an early opportunity, you know what I mean? 
Like they're not like taking money out, putting it in, disrupting the market, trying to make hype, trying to like exploit it for the ad. So the the chance to be exploited for that uh, capital reach on early project when it does finally get a gateway is there. So if I hit that train, then good news is the project can actually get some good funding off the bat and kind of get kick started. You know what I mean? So yeah, I get what you're saying. Let me um let me get this name of this other network too that's actually going to be sporting. And they actually have, um, they're actually doling out like funds to uh, startups like you and I. Um, and I just, I will be porting back over to see what can, um, I don't know if we go into this. Um, so I'm trying to get a this game. Blast. Are you talking about blast? I'm trying to get a, nah, hold on, nah. I'm trying to get a game, open up this game for my daughter so she can play. Um, one second. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm trying to go into Discord too. Let me go into the Discord because there's this network that's sporting like something like it's like a dual transaction, like side by side transactions. Um, I don't want to go into the, like a whole like, uh, like, like, PLS, like, PLS and crypto. yeah, it's, it's a proof of stake model. Um, but I don't want to go into the whole like, um, no, I mean, like point of sale, like, like what, what this, payment option. yeah, proof like of stake, but, but I don't, and, like, all right. Do they allow you to make like fiscal payments and crypto payments? No, it's a um no, sorry. It's a they're sporting like a 14,000 transaction per second uh speed. And the reason the, the the way they're doing this was like uh um like side by side like transactions. Um I don't want to I don't want to like confuse anyone talking about it with something that some people wouldn't even understand. But basically my point is that um this network and um Get in the network um, because this this chain I can see will be uh, Monad. Look up Monad M O N A D blockchain. I'll pin something to the top right now. Also, let me go grab something from Monad. And yeah, um, Monad Ethereum virtual machine. Um, you know, bringing parallel execution to the EVM layer, 10,000, okay, so 10,000 TPS transactions per second. You know, obviously ETH is like 15 TPS, you know, Bitcoin's like, I don't know, like two or three or something, you know, Tron sporting what it is, BNB sports, like, I don't know, maybe like this thousand or close to a thousand TPS or something like that. Um, so it's super fast, it's gonna be super fast, super cheap from what's called parallel execution um, to the Ethereum virtual machine. So if you have an Ethereum wallet, you'll be able to just like change your MetaMask wallet you know, over to the Monad network and it'll still have the zero X, you know, compatibility of the same wallet. Um, but the point is, is that if you go in their discord, I'm going to pin this to the top, um, their, their pin suite to the top of space here. So let Monad announcing our $19 million seed round led by Dragonfly XYZ. Um, you know, and uh, it's been a few weeks, but if you go in their discord, and you jump in, I think there's like different things, like kind of like the game you're building. You know, if you kind of like, oh, look, I'm going to build this game. I'm building over in Chia, but I'm going to go ahead and build it over here. I want to bring the assets over here, you know, so I can have like cross chain, you know, players and stuff. They're, they have funding, so you can participate and like they have funding to just dole out to people. Like they're just giving, they're just giving, they're just like incentivizing people to go build on their chain, basically. So if you got something to build, you want to go build on their chain, uh, definitely look into Monad uh, because again, they're not even in. T- like they're literally like rolling out test net. So they're like not actually like they're like not even in test net right now. It's like, they're just, or they might be, they're putting like the test net, like public test net out. So myself, I'm just paying attention because it makes sense for me to go jump in like, you know, all right, I'll port over maybe like, you know, um, I don't know, like maybe I'll port over all of, maybe I'll launch blue chip club as 888 over there or something like that. You know, just cross chain it, and if people want to burn their ETH blue chip club, you know, character, they can go bring it over to Monad. So I'm not really one for like, you know, going to like all the different blockchains or anything. But I'm built. I've built in BNB chain for the sole reason of their TPS, their low transaction, um, the ability to mine the token that has you know participation in this game. Um, you know, over the that it'll be delivered. You know, over these years, um, and because ETH chain, like ETH chain is just so expensive, like burning gas, like to go do a transaction. 
when you want to pair like so there's there's certain things like i want to pair on my chain zoku if you go look up chain zoku project you know 3d pfps and you know, i can put my chain zoku on quest i can earn the stuff but if i want to mint the katana to then pair it to my chain zoku you know some parts of the network day it's like eighteen dollars maybe forty dollars worth of eth gas just to mint to 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 mint what i've earned on quest and to just to because i have to mint it to pair it to my character so if i want to throw that katana over my shoulder on my pfp um then forty dollars of gas is just that's not no one's gonna it, it just de-incentivizes anyone to go to, to participate in eth network like that unless you have a lot of money um unless you're like an eth you know person or you're a rich person it's a rich person's game it's a rich person's thing um but if you look at bnb chain you know it's low transactional feet uh low transactional and no so monad i pinned to the top just there Check out Monad. Um, I'm not sure what the TPS speed of like Chia Network is. I don't know what share, what how much it would cost to like transact something on Chia Network. But this Monad Network, when they roll a test net, um, and if they, you know, what they're what they're building, like it's just so early. People are gonna grasp when they roll out their their core chain cryptocurrency. You know, I don't know what the even what the ticker is gonna be. You know, maybe like MND or something. I don't really know. But the Monad cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be one of those ones that people are just going to be like bullish on um, just because of the there's TPS speed, they're sporting, how it is uh, Ethereum virtual machine based like BNB chain. And a lot of people are be like, oh, it's it's going to be a, an ETH killer. I don't really like to do that kind of talk because like people said that about Solana and Solana had a bunch of issues with it. But Solana is not even... Um, uh, Solano's got its like own programming language. I think it's based off Rust or something. I'm not. Don't quote me on that. But um, I, I think when when even like the founder was like, I'm gonna flip. The founder of Solano was like, I'm gonna take down Ethereum. And like it, they just and then like their chain broke like several weeks later. <laughs> like he couldn't even transact in Solana. So it's like when when a founder when people say that kind of stuff, that to me is like why I don't f with Solana just because like you know the the someone had the ego to go say that just because they wanted to like grasp like you know shit talking market share out of people to go over to solana from ethereum to shit talk ethereum um i I just think you should just stick your keep your nose down and build and just do your own thing with your own chain so monad is not shit talking eth monad is supportive of eth by being an ethereum based on the ethereum virtual machine so and that's why that's why i think you know evm compatible chains i'm really bullish on especially when it comes down to like polygon you know optimism arbitrum you know a lot of these games like pirate nation i minted pirate nation and uh they that studio has built a lot of big games and they did their free mint you know people cash grabbed the floor you know so i like i had multiple pirate nations i sold some for like you know as a free mint i sold some for like point one eth you know point zero eight eth and stuff like that but then they saw the struggle of like you know bridging your the the bridge the gas cost of bridging your pirate to play in the game um to the because they built the all the smart contracts on polygon network um so then they saw the struggle of like someone porting bridging the eth gas fee being like fifty dollars or a hundred dollars just to bridge you know <laughs> your pirate over to poly to polygon to play and if you want to bridge it back to like you know sell it or something like that it's like another for so it's like de-incentivize people to play so they switched over to arbitrum network um and i still have a bunch of their stuff like their i have on open crates and stuff that i just like let's sit there because maybe someone will want to buy them or whatever i just i got them for free just from you know minting participating and sitting with my pirate but something like that, they switch over to Arbitrum because Arbitrum is a great network. It's a layer two scaling of, a, of Ethereum. And so a lot of these gaming studios are uti- utilizing Arbitrum. Um, and I think, again, I'm just saying like Monad, something to look into uh, to build your assets on Monad because um, they just have a lot of funding there. And, and they're, they're doling out that funding to people like you and I to, to, to build there and stuff. Okay, so I'm not that familiar with blockchain. Like I said, I'm more of a game developer than anything. Um, I need I like a bit more experience in like the the asset production pipeline than I do with um with actual contracts and blockchains and things like that. But like, obviously, I know enough to like actually read the contract and be like, okay, fine. But I'm not that experienced when it comes to like blockchains and that. So when it comes to like an EVM uh, layer two virtual machine, like, what is that exactly? Like, yeah, so I get it, like I get it's like layer two, like it's on top of the chain, and I get that. But I'm more like 
what do you mean like with uh, ETH bridging exactly? Right. So to to bring an ETH asset over to Polygon. So Polygon is like is a transaction with Polygon Matic. So Matic is so Polygon is a layer two of Ethereum, and Polygon's done a lot of great works um, over the years of of sticking true to their word of being a layer two um, to Ethereum that solves as a side chain to Ethereum. You know the gas fees. So the gas fees to play gods on chain or like a game or something like that. You know just to just to like sometimes even like mint an NFT, you know, being like a thousand dollars to mint an NFT, like we were talking about on Yuga Labs, you know, to mint the land and stuff like that, or whatever they're building game wise, um, was like a huge like just mess um, of people who like lost money. And I just want to say uh, uh, real quick up to what's up to Mist, uh, Mr. Magic NFTs. What's up, Mr. Magic NFTs? Hey, what's up? How you doing? Good. We're just chilling, vibing, talking about blockchains, and um, I'll share my take on you know, layer twos and, and uh, bridging. But yeah, loving it. Learning, learning some new stuff. Um, I, I just recently started this this whole wonderful pursuit, and um, definitely uh, figuring out the whole different tokens and platforms and everything has uh, has been relatively easier thanks to you guys. Yeah. If you got any questions, uh, we're just chilling, vibing, um, building games, building artwork, and stuff like that, and you know yeah you know, i'm actually drawing right now it, hey do you think it'd be okay if i could pin one of the drawings yeah pin yeah pin your stuff to the top i i leave it open to pin people uh p for people to pin <laughs> pin people oh, um, but she's I, she I, I she's she's playing uh the unpacking game so i was just telling my wife was like what's sam doing she's playing uh, it's just my wife's upstairs laying. my wife had a surgery and so she's uh on antibiotics and like steroids and um so she's just resting and Son of my daughter hanging out here, playing playing some Saturday game. Yeah, they sound very well behaved. Yeah, and so they're fighting with each other, but even then they're well behaved. They're like they fight like an old like couple or something. It's funny to watch, <laughs> arguing over like something. Um, but uh, since I'm um, since I'm up here, could I uh, show a collection? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no doubt. Down. Yeah, and so, vanilla. Yeah, pin something to the top. Yeah, please do. Show. Yeah, I'm just looking for it. <laughs> Oh, I'll, I'll post it right, right here. I'm not like one of those spaces where like, yeah, but you got to join my Discord and buy my NFT and, and, and uh, repost it and share it to all your groups and tag three friends to pin something. Yeah, and jump through my flaming hoop of fucking requirements. Nah, go for it, bro. Okay, so... And I don't have like, you know, you have to be like two, 20 seconds or two minutes or anything like that. Those spaces are good for like elevator pitch, for like training, getting to your point, but like I'm not like that either. We're just here talking. So, um... I, I'm a high school teacher from California. Um, my name is Mr. B, is my, my artist uh, name. Uh, the collection that I'm going to be trying to show off to you guys is called um, basically uh, Mr. B's Magic NFTs. Um, and the concept behind, uh, oh no, uh, sorry, I'm doing a different one. These are my freestyle rap videos, actually. Um, they're a mixture of uh, like 100% extemp core freestyle raps, um, one take. Um, only and only one take. If I if I have to start over, I just I cut it and I don't use it. Um, mixed with a lot of um, uh, uh, time lapse um, videos of me driving and through the Bay Area of uh, California um, on the West Coast of, of the United States, and I add those together and try to like interweave them into to a nice little package uh, for your guys' enjoyment. Um, I have six of them them up right now. Um, and there, there's things that I'm really proud of because uh, I uh, have, I pride myself on being one, the only person who does one take freestyles um, that are completely extempore, like no thematic assistance or, or any assistance whatsoever. Um, and um, being able to just always go with the first take. Um, so it's kind of like a game a little bit, you know, you listen to it. Oh, also because I'm a teacher, I cannot um, have any kind of negative or, or sexual or um, uh, drug related or any kind of content. Um, on my freestyles as well. So I, that's in the back of my head as well while I'm doing the freestyles and you can totally hear it in some of them. So it creates a really kind of cool uh, situation. Um, and if you've ever been to the Bay Area in, in California and the United States, you know that there's a lot of beautiful roads, um, crazy drivers, either too slow or too fast. Um, and, um, you know, beautiful um, like scenery, um, whether it be man-made or, or God-made or, or otherwise. Um, and my, my, my rap name is a uh, Lankness, like Lankness Monster. 
um, the Monster of the Lake uh, that my brother said to me the, after a lacrosse game when I was in high school and called me the Hank Ness Monster. It's one of the only nice things he's ever said to me, to be honest. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's me. And this is like uh, one of my, my favorite collections I've made. It's called um, Mr. B's Freestyles. And um, it's uh, good driving, you know, good rapping, clean content all off the top. Bay Area Freestyles. Yay! Nice. Um, I uh, that's cool, man. Let me um, let me ask this. Do you have the ability to play one here on Space? I know, like, if I go over to like, I went over to Rarible. If I play, what I've experienced like being uh, co-hosting Space and hosting Space is if I play people's NFTs or videos, it rugs my audio or it rugs my whole space. Do you have a? So I asked these times. Do you have an ability to play one of your tracks, or if you'd like to, if you'd like, to, if you'd like to uh, here on Space like that at all? I would love to. Um, it, it might take me about three minutes to set everything up. If if you want to, I mean, that's just yeah. this is like a low cap yeah, space. I like, I don't have, I don't have like the hundred like thousand people in my space. I used to like three years ago host space every day just for uh, independent artists and people sharing, you know, art and pinning things to the top. And I'd have like I'm on my personal account Keck next to me. Um, the only reason I'm not talking there is because I'm getting some weird feedback thing, um, like echo thing. So I'm talking on this, but yeah, I used to have like a hundred people on space and like now, uh, I don't know, times are different. I don't get to, I don't get as much time to host space, but when I do, you know, I appreciate people like yourself, like coming up here and yeah. So if you'd like to share that, um, yeah, sure. I'll do it. Just, it'll take me about 15 seconds to set it up, but I'll, I'll get, I'll get going on that real quick. Cheers, mate. Also vanilla biscuit. Yeah. If you want to talk about what you got going on here too, for what you pinned to the top. Yeah, so uh, I can't really see it right now. But, like, basically, the game I'm making is going to be a PvP game about slugs. Not like keeping them or raising them. No, you're going to shoot them. You're going to shoot them out of potato guns. Basically, you're going to land on a planet. The planet is, like, desolate, right? And the idea is, like, you have to, like, build. Picture, like, Rust, right? PvP kind of Rust style play. Nice. But, like, your ammunition is, like, little slugs. And whatever you feed them, they kind of, like, anomaly anonymous what, what's it anomalously incorporate into their, their their life form so they're pretty interesting they're basically like the bastard children of cthulhu like they, they never really like impress cthulhu and he is like just very sad with them you know like the, the, the disappointments and the funny thing about these these little slugs right is that um, they've actually got like a lot of like latent uh, energy in them, so they're actually quite explosive. So depending on what they eat, it can cause various effects. Like uh, if you feed it a taser, it'll like develop prongs and the ability to shock uh, shock something. But most of the time, they're pretty harmless because all they do is eat gravel, dirt, and like random things around. So they never really get that advanced unless they eat something that's really sus. Which is why the collection is so cool because they they eat things and they have like multiple abilities, which gives you a pretty unique ammunition type in the game when the game is going to start development though of course nice what do you what do you core uh your core working on the characters and the nft part for the mint prospect they're called uzi goozies uzi goozies so when the uzi goozies you said i thought i thought you said a 20k right yeah it's a 20k collection and it's gonna be via chia yeah nice nice yeah it's gonna be a whitelist or anyone can just show up in mint or is it going to be well i think she works a bit differently like you just list them on the store i don't think like it works the same okay yeah i'm gonna have to do a lot of research like that you just if it, yeah the marketplace pretty much nice yeah if anyone else like wants to come up here zodicus you see 1807 what's up um it's time i know you're here it's time cool man it's been cool also listen to your inputs too intricate um up intricate yeah, I think hey, Mr. how are you guys doing? Sorry for uh, being rude. I was listening after the week. I had some guests show up at my house, but it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. For yeah. If you want, if you want to share anything, or you're just chilling, vibing. Yeah, appreciate your presence here. Um, I'm pretty much chilling and vibing and learning. Um, I run around with it's time. We. He's the founder, and I'm the co-founder of Meme Coin Monopoly. So. That's a dope name, Meme Coin Monopoly. Nice. Yes, it's, it's a game of accumulation where there's not just one winner. We're trying to make everybody a winner. Um, we encourage people to build themselves, and we teach them, we try to teach them the right way to do things. So, time can elaborate a lot better than I can, but that's the gist of it. 
That's cool. Yeah, if you'd like to pin anything to the top, um, yeah, feel free to do so. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I'm going to give this a try. Okay. Yeah, intricate. I hope you're having a great safe day. And yeah, feel free to pin anything to the top about me and Coin Monopoly. I'm interested. Freestyle Saturday night. Loser crying to their own plight. Man, I don't spit fight. I spit hard malachite. Green stone, not on a low. I'm sitting on my throne. Never prone. Check it. One, two. I ran through those two, two. In a two, two. With blue, blue, blue. And I'm about to go through everything. Play it back. Okay, there you go. That's what's up. That was fun to listen to. Yeah, That's you cool. Alex, like, me trying to catch up with myself a little bit, or like you kind of have a direction, but maybe like inappropriate. So I have to kind of like push it into a more appropriate direction. Yeah, I mean that's what's up. Hey, man, if you're having fun doing that, I think I think it was cool to listen to. Um, do you do you make the music also, or how does that go? Um, those are you working are, the music? Um, uh, Pre-use uh, popular freestyles. No doubt. Cool. Or, or beats like that one's from Prof. Uh, he's a rapper uh, out of Minnesota, and it's one of the the beats that they make open for use to to all other uh, musicians. Nice. That's cool, man. That's cool. You're doing that. Yeah, Rarible's uh, Rarible's a good place to mint. Yeah, especially you got open edition, kind of one after the other. Yeah, I have um stuff on um object object uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, Nice. A series uh, that I did it in honor of my my deceased uh, fiance. Um, yeah. Guys, can take a look. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Object Tezos. A lot of artists in Object Tezos. Trying to get people to to. to to inscribe on Bitcoin um, network, like through uh, inscriptions and because um, it's definitely like good to put the artwork on the Bitcoin chain. Um, oh, also, uh, uh, the reason I'm called the magic NFTs uh, is because the first NFTs I did uh, are combinations of different like um, things that I would consider powerful, like symbols um, and uh, like uh, kaleidoscope things I did with Adobe, um, with an Adobe app where I could turn like a picture in, into a kaleidoscope of different sorts. Um, and because I've been studying chaos magic for about like six, seven years. Um, and I thought about maybe, you know, doing an NFT that would help derive, you know, power uh, for, for an individual, you know, well-minded uh, magician of sorts. To, to be able to use and, and share with, with the like-minded people. Is it kind of like meme-based or just you want to share more about it? Um, it's it's basically just uh, the idea behind chaos magic, if you could kind of break it into, you put it into a nutshell, which is really hard to do, uh, is basically um, the power of faith is extremely obvious and, and it's almost hard to deny. Um, and it basically gives you the ability to like quiet your mind and be able to develop and derive um, a strength and power from those faith-based situations without 
falling into the pitfalls of, um, you know, being involved in a religion, let's say, and having to, you know, always follow that religion's tenets and, and philosophies, even when you may know that they're not true or not valid in a certain circumstance. Um, so it kind of teaches you to to use, um, develop that faith based power and be able to put it in whatever situation that you need to to mm. serve you and, and your loved ones. I'm gonna research more into that. I like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool stuff. Yeah, faith based power, huh? I like that. I study scriptures and stuff, so that's I haven't heard of that before until now. So I'm gonna research. Cool man. Is that where you're is that where you're out of is is that where you're out of is California? Yes, I'm California. Yeah, Bay Area. Uh currently uh I'm currently in um Vallejo. Hey, what's up, Vanilla? Oh shit, sorry, I was just being quiet, I was just being drawing. I'm trying to get those line right, it keeps fucking missing. <laughs> what uh you know how it goes. What pro, what pro uh what programs are you using to work with? I'm working with uh, Photoshop CC, not oh, okay, CCCS. Cool. Comfortable with the older software, you know. What the... Oh, that's pretty cool though. Faith-based power, Buddhist philosophy. I just died. Like sort of like this one. Hmm. Buddhism is, is something that I haven't really gotten into until just recently. I think maybe I was not quite mature enough yet because um, I've always just been a very competitive person. So it was just kind of confusing uh, to me for a long period of time. But there's a lot of really, really good stuff in there. Read the uh, good understanding is on the word of Buddha, the five noble truths. That's a good one to read. It's really short. Um, but yeah, if you read the word of Buddha, the five noble truths, that talks about this... Uh, cessation of birth and um you know things like suffering and stuff like that that's kind of like an introduction to like buddhism and then there's the tibetan book of the dead I want to learn understand more about buddhism what is this tibetan really? book of the dead yeah um i forgot what it was called it, it, i watched this or listened to this podcast called uh, everyday espionage um, and uh, this dude's wife's family is Buddhist, and uh, there's this one Buddhist story that he really, really likes that he read on the podcast um, that I found super interesting. Um, have you guys ever heard of this podcast? It's called Everyday Espionage with a guy named Andrew Bustamante. He's a retired um, CIA agent who met his wife in the CIA. As an active agent. Heard of that. Uh. Yeah, it's amazing. The guy's real, real smart. Um, and he's basically, his goal was to just use everything that he was taught in the CIA and, and teach everybody all those tools to, to use in their everyday lives. And you'd be, you'd be really you know, caught off guard with the kind of stuff that that they know and that they, they teach it in such an organization that's so so questionable in many ways. What's the podcast called again? Uh, I guess. It's a Everyday Spy or Everyday Espionage. Okay. They just changed it to Everyday Spy. You know, the one thing I, I actually find funny is it's, it's actually shocking um, how afraid people are of, like, the truth, right? Like, these, these kind of places have got to get their hands dirty. <laughs> like, no one's mm -hmm. coming clean from that kind of lifestyle. Oh, like, it's probably like... It's all hush-hush. Yeah, they can't talk about it. Yeah, not for a while. Um, I think the CIA really likes him because he humanizes spies. So I think it, the FBI, or not the FBI, but the CIA sees him in that that fashion. So they've been good to him in, in their relationship with him after he left. But he was being looked at for high level stuff. They were not happy at the beginning because he decided to retire. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Like, if you're a leak, you're a leak. 
Yeah, it would be quite concerning, you know. Mm -hmm. And with people like that, even the smartest person, like they're just so easy to slip up. Yeah, no, that, that must be such a life story. Their relationship, which you get to learn a lot about because they interact on the show a, a bunch, is just really, really cool. Seeing what like a functioning relationship looks like amongst two professionals like that is pretty amazing. Yeah, but like, you got to wonder, right? Like, how, like, how do you know that? Like, if you have to like ever get into a relationship with a spy. How paranoid are you going to be of like, your partner? <laughs> like the Mr. and Mrs. Smith movie? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the thing is, is like in the CIA's mind, there are two types of people only, right? There are the people who are trained and there are people who are untrained. Yeah, I don't know anything about uh, They're probably listening to our call or something. I don't know. The number one thing that they use above everything else is the Myers Briggs. That's their number one tool. What's that? All right, Briggs. It sounds a familiar. Four, a four letter um, uh, category that everybody's personality is in. So they determine if, like, someone's a psychopath or a passive aggressive uh, sheep not, or something? Not that specific, but just oh. like for in general. So, like, it's, it's a binary system of one or the other. So it's like you have introvert, expo, extrovert is one of them. And then you have um, like perceiving versus feeling. And then you have um, two more. Um, I forgot, I'm just off the top of my head, but it's a, it's a binary on, on four different uh, groupings. Uh, so if you ever hear that, like a weird four letter acronym, like I'm a WHWB or something like that, you know that they're talking about Myers Briggs. I'm an INTF or something like that. Ah, uh, so look out for those CIA slip up people. You're slipping up with their muscle memory and their XYZ and ABCs. Yeah. Uh, so like, you think Myers Briggs, you think like that one HR nerdy HR person that you have to deal with, like you know, once a year. I, th I think if they ever have to like study me, I'd probably be a W E E B. A weeb? What's a weeb? <laughs> Is that kind of like the American version of dweeb? I know in America they say dweeb or something like that. Like, uh, weeaboo or something like that. Some people fucking like anime. I like anime. Oh, I love anime. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, do you like Akira and Cowboy Bebop? Oh, fuck, bro. Like, my favorite's like, what is it? Uh, you know, like the one that's like Dracula in it, but, but they rehearse the names, so it's Elecon. So the whole thing unlimited. Like, I love that. Oh, that's someone else's phone. No, nah, my, my daughter was like, someone's calling you. I was like, nah, it's, it's so much fun in space. I have a monitor playback, so like, got the space running. I'm streaming PUBG on Twitch and here on X and talking with y'all on my headset on the computer version of what's the spaces. Where am I going? Well, I think I need to do the round, so I'm going to have to head out, but. I'm also yeah, gonna be uh, great. yeah. I'm also great. I was also gonna be saying like I'm also probably about fifteen minutes probably. Or I might be we might be able to cut it now. Um, might be about that time. Um, I'm also gonna go to my day job for the day, and I'm gonna be back for so this is Keck Light Night, and I'll be back tonight for Keck Night Light. <laughs> I'll just be like switching the title back around, but yeah, I want to learn. I, I think the other person I took to say, off. Like, don't forget to stop by like the the sixty days thing, dude. I'm gonna be there if you wanna pop around. What's that sixty day thing? Yeah, there's like a sixty days of fun thing going on. Like that, a space. Spaces? What do you like, do there? Yeah, pop in. The... Yeah, like uh, there's uh like don't you see it up there? Sixty days is fun. 
Forever. Uh, yeah, I used to sit in spaces with those people and their projects. Yeah, no, like, I'm gonna be there later, so... The, uh... Might be able to see the crypto homies? I think that was one that was in space. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think they're minted out yet. Either. I think they're still minted. I don't know, a lot of these projects are, like, I don't even know. They're, um... Yeah, I'll stop. What, do you just, like, jump up there, or do you have to, like, be, like, uh, scheduled on their space or something? I don't know, just put your hand up, I'm sure you can pop up. Yeah. Depends on what they're doing. If they're like doing a short row, you can come up a little bit. I don't know if they send you off, but like if you're holding good conversation, they keep you up for the entertainment value. I Pretty see. Nice I, I can say this. I see some of those projects in there. Just ripped off some of my ideas right off the bat. Some of those projects up there. I'm not going to say which ones, but they, uh, anyways. Yeah. Um,. It's kind of why, like, I sit in my own spaces, because, like, I think, I think, or I, I've kind of, like, learned, I guess at this point, like, I don't care about the projects adjacently sitting next to me, who, like, clearly ripped off some of my ideas, but I've learned how to talk on spaces to not give out the information that rip off, um, and, and the thing is, like, they're sitting up there right now, and they're struggling right now, because they don't know, they don't know, like, they, they don't know what they're doing, they don't know what to build, because they're not innovative like you and I. And that's why they're ripping off other people. Again, I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to say who it is, but they're there. Right, yeah. I mean, it's still worth it for us to show up. I'm more than definitely happy to... Sh I mean, I'm not saying the hosts themselves. The hosts, looks, I, they look cool. That's cool that they're doing the due diligence and hosting spaces like that. Nifty is pretty good, dude. Like, nice. Uh, Nifty, uh, he's pretty good. He's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I've heard... Uh, okay, I've heard Nifty. Yeah, that's what's up. Um... Yeah, I'm also going to be like, I think I'm going to cut my space now. I, uh, so here's the thing. Um, I definitely would love to learn more and for us to keep like an open line of communication about the game you're building. So I, how I can get uh, my community and the Discord people involved. Um, how, uh, you know, how I can um, scoop up one of your NFTs and learn more about Chia and play your game and stream, and stream your game. That's the other thing. I'm a Twitch affiliate. So, so if I can uh, stream your game and just chatting, um, then yeah. More, more power to uh, you know, thing. passive marketing, if right? The NFT, if you own the NFT, you'll get access to the beta before anyone else, because the the collection will have first right beta access. So snapshots, builds, anything, features, you guys get it first. Yes. That's part of the commitment to the the club. So when it is out, I'll I'll let you know for sure. But I'll definitely keep an open line. All right, man. Yeah. yeah, I got some people stopping up here. What's up, Zodicus? What's up, Flack40? Uh, Vanilla, I appreciate you. It's been really awesome, uh, kind communications with you today, and just being able to talk and vibe together. And I'll be again. I'll be back uh, tonight, hosting like kind of like overnight spaces, back during the daily uh, things as well. But um, yeah. Uh, what's up, Flack40, Zodicus? I'm gonna cut my space in a little bit, but yeah, let's y'all like to jump in and share anything, pin anything to the top. Um, please, yeah, let's, if you got something you want to play media-wise, I'm down. Yo, 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 what's up, Kek? It's yep. been a long time, man. How you doing, bro? Good, it's good to hear from you, man. Yeah, how you been? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. Happy Thanksgiving Day, you know. Happy Thanksgiving. I see it's your Thanksgiving period now. So, and I saw you hosting this space, and I'm like, man, it's been a while. I don't see you around, man. I've been wondering where you've been, man. So I'm just happy to see you hosting this space again. Hey, man, I appreciate your kind words like that. Yeah, I've been building, busy working, working a day job, um, taking care of family, living life, keeping my mental health in check as best as possible. Balance that's the good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's good, man. You know, that's what life is all about. You don't need to just get caught up in online social media and other you need to also pay attention to your family and you know the reality itself so i'm just glad you are okay man and i'm just happy to see you here again i just want to come and give you my shout out you know yeah man it's good to hear from you too i appreciate you we we're both still surviving and staying safe So what have you been working on, you know, lately? 
work on art, working on um, getting streams to get back going, working on um, just refining uh, product structure, certain directions, and you know, just doing uh, blockchain tech and finance YouTube videos to talk about the news or what's going on here and there and post it. How about yourself, man? You got anything to pin to the top? Yeah, go for it. Too. Yeah, you know, you know, it's just the music. I see the music going on. I'm still creating, you know, trying to come up with new stuff, new style, new melodies. So it's just me, man. Other than I've got some latest means, you know, on objects and sounds, but, you know, I'm just trying to work and collaborate with artists. I've, like, shared so, some beats with some rappers, you know, internationally. So I'm just waiting for their feedback when they are done recording the songs and, you know, I'll be able to share them on the nice. web tree. Nice, man. So you're going to make new recordings or you're kind of in the process of that? Yeah, I'm the, um, on the process of making new recordings, like in new songs. I, I made some already, like two to three, but I've not like put them on the blockchain yet. But, you know, I've got some instrumentals, just instrumentals on the blockchain. So I'm working on putting like a real original songs on the blockchain. But I think maybe before next year, you know, I might pull like one or two songs over there. But for now, it's just my instrumentals, my beat. Nice. Nice, nice. Uh, Dodicus, also, what's going on? How you doing? Grand Rising. I hope you're having a good uh, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever it is, wherever you're from. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I saw Vanilla come up here. Uh, I've been following him. I'm really excited about the stuff that he, he's doing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I saw he popped in here, and uh, I, I was feeling like a, a low, like a low chill, chill vibe space, and there's not much people here, and Y'all, y'all are really chill. So I've been chilling, playing mobile games on my phone for a little bit, and I thought I'd pop up, say hi, thank you for hosting the space, and uh, yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I did share something to the top. It's not mine, but it is my friend's uh, artwork. Her name is uh, Red Goat Queen. She is uh, one of my closest friends in Web three, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to share s some of her art with y'all. But does she uh, have that on like the blockchain? Is it like an NFT? Or... Yes. So the one I posted up atop uh, is actually part of her freebie collection, which uh, she puts 20 of the those pieces. Uh, so 20 of the pieces that you see up above that I posted. And uh, she mints them on Ethereum. And what she does is uh, it, it's free to claim. Like you, you don't like you, you just pay gas on ETH. But uh, she has... Uh, a tip jar so uh if, if you want to support her it's it's not uh required but it's appreciated uh she she, she does a lot for for the space and uh i've known her since uh, the beginning of of or, or near beginning sorry of my journey for over a year now uh and uh yeah she she's always showing up here daily so i'm just trying to show her some love and some appreciation trying to get uh her her artwork out there to to new people whether you you mint it or not and you just share it or or like it or, or throw a comment whatever it is uh you just uh viewing it i know she appreciates it so uh yeah thank you for for letting me come up on stage uh i didn't come just to to chill, chill my friend but uh you, you said you wanted to some stuff pinned up and uh I see that you're creating uh, art right now, so that's why I was like, "Well, I bet he wouldn't mind if I sh at least shared uh, my friend." So if 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 if, uh, if not, then I'm I'm sorry I did so, and I do apologize. No, not no. I appreciate. No, I was about to say I was just waiting. Yeah, just to tell you, I appreciate you sharing it to the top. I'm all about independent artistry. Uh, that's kind of like, uh, from like people scooping up uh, blue chip club NFTs off the floor and like secondary royalties that accrue from it. That's what we do is uh, we invest back into independent artists and put it in our metaverse gallery, uh, whether it's uh, on uh, like op uh, object or, or ETH chain and things like that. Um, if we can support, that's what we're about as a community collective in our 888 Genesis NFTs. Yo, and that makes sense. Like yeah. So there's, just, there's just so much bullshit on the, the these spaces. Uh, 
since I've joined uh, for uh, the crypto space over a year now. Uh, damn, almost two years in February. Shit. Uh, man, I, I, anyways, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's great to have spaces like this where uh, people can just talk about what they're working on and what they're, what they're dr drawing. So, uh, and then to hear that uh, Flack, uh, you know, is working on music. I love, uh, I love arts of, of many different mediums. I love poetry. I love uh, I love illustrations like I love spoken word like I just there's there's many art forms that that I love so uh yo flack continue doing what you're doing man uh, uh if you if, if, if you want you're always more welcome to come on my stage uh and in my spaces and, and play some music for us Yo, yo, I appreciate you, Zodi, because, you know, I just gave you a follow, you know, so I will try to, like, put on my notification whenever you are hosting your space, and it will be a pleasure to be in your space also, so, man, thank you for giving me the shout-out, and also, shout-out to you also, and the art you just posted here, the freebies is amazing, you know. And I'm just looking at it and I'm wondering, like, is it like a drawing or a generated piece? So she can draw these on her tablet. She is a very small artist. Uh, she comes from Morocco. Oh, that's amazing. She must be very, very talented to do an art like this. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, I just engaged to it. I just like and retweeted it. So, man. Yeah, that's say that. man. yeah bro. Yeah, I was gonna say also the art's beautiful. Uh, kind of like how the mushrooms are like, it's like almost like the, like the mushrooms, uh, like certain mushrooms that grow on trees, like as the hair. Oh, this is really good. Doing it to the top, and uh, Flak Four is good to hear from you. Um, I again like I will be. I think I've been running a space for like I don't know, or something. Um, typically. I've just been like streaming some PUBG, listening and talking. Uh, I've been talking about like uh, being a founder, project building, you know, creating art and, um, you know, adjacent spaces like that. Like what you're saying, Zodicus, this is why I'm kind of like definitely coming back to like host spaces because, uh, man, there's just so much like trash spaces that are just trash. And I'm sick of like seeing them like with their stupid titles up there. I'm sick of seeing like, you know, you know, just being like, oh, maybe I'll listen. What what does this space have to say? What are these people that say? And then it's like they're just talking shit about anything. They're talking about like absolutely like atrocious crap. And then um, someone like Vanilla, who was here before, you know, he goes out to a space and like shares his shares his uh, you know what something about what he's going. And people just like you know just tear him to pieces just because they think it's fun and entertaining. Um, and I, so that's kind of yeah. And so like that's why you know I've been here for a long time. These people like hate me, um, but you know that's that's like. You know, you gotta love your haters because they just bring more attention for the people who Yo, will no will value. You, so, if no one's hating you, you're not doing something right. Because if you look at all the most successful people out there, there is at least more than one person that hates them. So, if you, if someone is hating on you for doing what you're doing, then that means you're moving in the right direction. Because either somebody's jealous or somebody and and uh is completely just just doesn't have the skills you have and therefore makes them even more jealous so just like don't let anybody discourage you out here be who you are be your authentic self the right people will follow you trust me uh uh i i, I was always that friend in the group uh growing up where people are like you, you know you, you need to kind of warm up to zodicus but you know when you warm up to him yo yo he's a, a loyal friend and, and and there's a lot of people that just hear that like oh i gotta warm up to him like he he must not be worth my time so you know what for the people i was not worth the time you know what i'm glad my energy wasn't spent on them and for the people that do fuck with me that's why like i really don't care about like my my follower to, to following ratio but like i do make sure that the people that are following me are real people and not bots that's the only people that I tend to do uh, the block and report to as as bots because uh, that that's just that's just a fake number. I, w I want the real thing.
Yeah, yeah, man. Like, it's just a number. Like, uh, like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many people you're following, how many people are following you. What matters is that those people are authentic, genuine, and and actually are out here doing the right thing, supporting the right people, believing in the right dream. And uh, I can only imagine how much farther we would be in blockchain technology if most of these people that host these clickbaity drama spaces, if they actually just went out there and tried to build something. If they actually went out there and tried to build something to help us go forward, dude, freaking like if all those people would take that time and energy they do into the drama, dude, freaking crypto could, could be a lot different right now and a lot better right now. So y'all just keep on supporting the people that support the independent artists, the, the musicians, the poets, the the illustrators, everything. Just keep on supporting them. Make sure uh, that's why I'm, I'm happy that there's stages like this for, for, for people to come and share what they're doing because uh, – the, the drama definitely is louder than the people out here that are actually building stuff, and it drowns what they're building out. So y'all just keep on doing what you're doing. You have my love and support. And, uh, of course, if there's any artists out there of any medium, uh, my stage is your stage. If I'm hosting a space and uh, it's an art, an art space you're more welcome to share art with me uh your music your your project that you're working on like really really anything like i just love seeing people be creative it makes me happy and it also inspires me so it, it, it benefits all parts yeah i appreciate kind words like that yeah and i'm just um i'm my my main account is keck right here and that's my personal stuff i'm just talking through blue chip club because um i was getting a lot of feedback on my uh so I think when I host space next, it'll be like, um, yeah, I'll just still be like, kind of like that. I'll kind of like, I was getting like some echo in my ear. So I don't know if anyone else was hearing it, but I was hearing it. So it helps it be easier to talk here. But so I'm just talking through BCC, just a project I'm building on. And um, again, like I appreciate y'all being up here. And yeah, when you're hosting space, man, I'll definitely jump in there. Also, um, uh, intricate. I'm gonna jump over. Um, after I, I gotta cut this space, I gotta get going to my day job here. I'm gonna play another, cut this space, play one more round of PUBG, and I gotta go to work for the day. And I'll be back tonight with Keck Nightlight. And I'm, I'm gonna check out that QR code you pinned to the top for Meme Coin Monopoly Intricate, because uh, that sounds really cool. It's a cool name, too. Um, so yeah, Black 40, also, it's good to hear from you and that you're getting ready to put some new collaborative efforts for the music uh, continuance out. And definitely, um, Keep coming back, man, and I uh, would love to hear that music when it's when it's rolling out, most definitely. And um, yeah, I just appreciate y'all, and I pray you're having a great, safe day. I think um, if anyone else wants to throw some closing words in here, otherwise I'm gonna uh, close this space out for the day until tonight. Later tonight. I just want to say thank you for hosting the space and uh, brace. I hope y'all have a freaking fantastic. Uh, Rest, the rest of your weekend, and I uh, hope y'all are staying happy, staying hydrated, and uh, well, well fed. Cheers, mate. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Stay safe, y'all. Stay safe. All that too. Stay safe. Uh, let's see. I'm going to um, bring up a window.
Alright. I'm gonna stream uh one more round of PUBG. Maybe I'll get in a squad match here. Answer a couple of messages here. All right, Let's see if I can get a squad match here. I'm going to cut my stream for the day. I'm going to kick for this team. I'll just... Yeah. Let's go. Play another match. And then I'll be back streaming. I was gonna try and get to some art, but basically we just kind of stayed talking. And I think I would have been a little distracted trying to draw art and talk so much about the kind of things, topics we were talking about on the space. But um, yeah, I'll be back streaming tonight. Probably PUBG or. Parallel TCG and then drawing. Drawing art before I go to sleep. Or maybe just drawing art and just chatting. Figure it out. I got a microphone. Yeah. Cool. Two, one, you got a mic. Yeah. Go cave. Are you going into the cave or? Mm -hmm. All right. Missed the opening. Oh, 
Oh, crap.
Got a spare AR suppressor if somebody wants it. Who's that too? Uh, yeah, orange. Where are you, man? Where are you, man? I'm coming. Yeah, I'm coming. I need 556 five, at all. I could use the AR extended mag if anyone comes across. Blue, do you want that AR suppressor? Uh, yeah, I'll tack that on. Cool, coming to you. You need any 5.56 five, or anything? Like, not too much. Uh, I'll take a sec. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thank you. Someone's shooting at me. Yeah. Two six five. On me. You got smoke blue? I don't have any smoke. I can get you up. We should just form up. Watch out there on the hill. That one was from the hill. I take these mofos out. They're gonna be headed down that hill. one but yeah the other guy got me yeah I'm safe I rush us in a moment I don't know yellow try to watch out oh yeah I think the med pack at all yeah 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 need one 
base trying to fire at me. Oh. I just split my stack. You know how to I'm split my out the back, trying to split. Anybody know how to split uh, med stacks? Like just dropping one or something? Where? Oh, there we go. Am I getting shot from? I was getting shot from the side. All three of them are over there in the zone. Teammates are there still. Nice. Can you grab tags in this match? I don't know if you can grab tags in this one. Yeah, I'll try. I don't think you can. Yeah, no, you can't get it. Fuck yeah, we got a dead.
Ate him. There you go. How the fuck did that not kill him? He's laying down right here. Jeez. All right, I'm gonna cut my stream. I'll be back a little bit later. Streaming more PUBG, and then I'll be uh definitely then I'll be uh trying to smart before I go to sleep. Cheers. Stay safe. <laughs>